TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series brings real affordable endurance road racing to you on North America's most prestigious road courses. With live flag-to-flag coverage of America's best grassroots motorsports racing, AutoZone presents Champ Car Live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. It's the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series. This weekend's race, it's the TireRack.com Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway. I'm Paul Veltham, along with Tiffany Alexander, bringing you full-length race coverage again this weekend. So let's take a look at Daytona International Speedway, courtesy of Google Earth. As we head out onto the front straightaway, the pits just off to the left as we cross the start finish line. Drivers will pick from a number of driving lines, diving down into turn one at a very high rate of speed into this very tight decreasing radius turn one and whistle through an even tighter turn two as they barrel down into turn three, a wide constant radius corner leading to a very fast and for most a flat out turn four, bringing the cars rushing into turn five, a corner very much like turn three, a good exit at track left. The cars will cross over to the right, lining up for the all important and tight left-hander turn six, where we see a lot of overtaking opportunities. Then it's up finally onto the tri-oval, the cars gathering great speed as they head into the quick bus stop chicane. A fast exit brings them back onto the tri-oval, into high gear now and around that 31 degree banking as they head back to start finish. And that is a lap around Daytona International Speedway. 3.56 miles is the distance. 12 turns and that is what the teams will be facing for the next 14 hours of racing this weekend good morning everyone welcome to champ car live presented by autozone the cars are rolling out onto the uh, racetrack now as we speak for a 14 hour contest here at daytona international speedway it is the tire rack.com daytona 14 Welcome, everyone. My name is Paul Veltham, joined by none other than Tiffany Alexander. Tiffany, good morning. Good morning, Polly. <laughs> and uh, wow, it is absolutely incredible out here, guys. It is so beautiful. The sun is shining. Temps today going to be in the uh, probably in the low 80s. There's no rain in the forecast. It's just going to be, as Doc would say, a great day for a motor race. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's incredible out here. Woke up this morning, it was 59 degrees as I was setting up the track and car cameras. And, oh my gosh, it's just so cool. So exciting to be out here again this weekend. So welcome, everyone. Hope you're enjoying your weekend as uh, we head into our annual trek here. We've reached our destination to Daytona International Raceway. It's always nice to be in Florida this time of the year. Is it going to get kind of warm today? I think it's going to be a, around 80 degrees is all, so it shouldn't be too bad. That's not it bad at be all. Too bad the for race the teams. cars can still deal. Yep. We've got uh, cameras in the Eddie Vedder machine. I put one in with Team Infinity, of course. A previous winner here at Daytona International, as well as... Uh, Marathon coach. So we'll be keeping an eye on him. We did have one of our cameras, two of our cameras uh, failed this morning. So we a little bit down on uh, in-car cameras, but uh, we're going to find some more. There's plenty of people that are broadcasting. I just haven't had a chance to get them all put in. But, oh, my gosh, turn six. Here we go. Oh, that's a good look. Always some action there. Do you have cameras for Section 8? 
Um, no, I I don't think I do yet. I I haven't had a chance. Um, I don't usually have to set up all the cameras, and because I did that, that put me way behind on my setup. So um, there's there's well, there's a I, lot of email. <laughs> and then lot. I sent. Then I was all you know needy and wanted then we, to see the show. There's always technical problems. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, folks, if you're if you're just signing in, welcome to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. It is the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series. And we're at Daytona International Speedway. And today is special. We're going to be doing, there. there is a special charity that's going on this weekend. And it's tied to the Atlanta Speedworks cars. And uh, it has to do with the... Uh, CAC of Smith County's mission to protect and restore the lives of abused children through team investigations, healing services, community outreach, and strategic partnerships with law enforcement in the criminal justice system. And so the way this is going to work is um, you can pledge towards the Atlanta Speedworks LAPS and you can do that at CAC Spring Luncheon Powered by Gibsmart webpage. For every lap that Atlanta Speedworks team completes, we will be raising money to assist in Children's Advocacy Center uh, in the race to end child abuse. So you can check out that website, and I'll be uh, announcing the accumulation of laps uh, at the commercial breaks. For those of you that are listening in and following along with that pledge and that uh, charity drive so cars coming through the bus stop chicane there you can see a few cars came out to the race this weekend <laughs> just a few just a few about this, 120 cars this event has been sold out since our road atlanta race it's crazy good yep we've had a waiting list since road atlanta in february On board with Eddie Vetter. This uh, car has been really shaking up things recently. We've got a lot of momentum coming into this race today. Let's see if uh, they're going to be able to pull off another win. It should be interesting to keep an eye on them. Marathon coach, of course. Uh, David might be at the wheel there. He's got that orange outfit. <laughs> a look at the front straightaway here as cars come down for the uh, first time by. And uh, so the uh, race control here, just to my left, I know it says sinkhole down there. Like I said, I'm a little behind on getting things done here. But uh, yeah, they're going to be... Uh, they're going to be working on checking the transponders as they come across. And I think this will be a race where we won't hear the pinging in the background because I'm in a separated room. Well, that's nice. I kind of kind of miss it. <laughs> it does keep you awake. <laughs> There's TLM going by on the front straight away. That's kind of fun when it just annoys everybody. There'll be somebody on the broadcast. So just, you know, just the noise drives them crazy. <laughs> That's always kind of funny. <laughs> and there's always those, those sounds that just are. Yeah. Like nails on a chalkboard to people. Yep. My brain can kind of tune that one out after a while. Now, somebody likes smacking when they're chewing. Uh-uh. Can't sit beside me while we're eating. <laughs> well, I'll remember that. Okay. <laughs> My stepdad always did stuff. that. Drove me crazy. I find myself like struggling to be polite because I just want to look at them and be like, seriously, seriously, dude. <laughs> Thanks, Fred Wolf. Good morning, Fred Wolf, track manager at Nelson Ledges Road Course, and uh, we're going to be there this year. So always, uh, always a good time to go over, go in there. Uh, you can find timing and scoring at race-monitor.com. Yes, I tried to fix my. Pylon, yes, it's still not working properly, as I can see. It's kind of hard to test it. I need a live race to actually see what's going on.
Yeah, some of these things are kind of hard to test, at, you know, when we're not actually doing a show. Or they work when we're not actually doing a show. And then when we go live, then it all falls apart. Kind of like some of our race cars. All right. I called out on the radio. I don't think anybody's going to, nobody's reacting. <laughs> no. Are they ignoring you, Polly? Well, um, no. my, one of my talent here, uh, Billy Salen, is at the front, is at the door into race control, but can't get in oh. because uh, it's locked. Oh, no. Okay, Bill's going to go get him. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do too much at once, I can sell. All right. Pulling up the cars uh, working their way around. We're going to get this race started here shortly. Race control log. Let's see if I can keep an eye on that today. The track is awesome. We um, It hasn't rained, so it's not a green track. Oh, here's Billy now. This off. Get you turned on here. Billy Salen joining us here. Well, that was a fun morning. Yeah, it's difficult <laughs> getting up. There's a lot of security. <laughs> yes. Hey, Roger. Good morning. Billy, how are you, sir? Uh, not too bad. A little sunburn, but, you know, you'll have that. Uh, around here? Yeah. You get cooked real easy. Cars moving very slowly through turn six there. A lot of green cars. A lot of multi-team multi-car teams here this weekend yeah. one of them is called six. uh salins i think it is I, I, yeah could, salins yeah. how many cars did they bring this weekend uh technically i believe three just in case something god forbid goes wrong just in case two can't get it done yeah and uh you know last year two did not get it done they both had issues so hopefully we don't repeat that this year yeah, I was talking to Will in the paddock yesterday, and I said we were talking about that, and I said, uh, this track's hard on uh, engines, isn't it? He said, it's hard on everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every track's hard on everything. And then I said, so, but it's not that hard on the drivers, is it really? He said, it's hard on all the drivers, too. <laughs> it's hard on everything. <laughs> yes. So, in fact, I think, is that one of your cars? No, this this is the Atlanta Speedworks ca cars coming yeah, through here. they're blue. We're we're black yeah <laughs> it's was... a fast track so the cars and the drivers pull a lot of g-forces even in our older cars you know for quite a long time which puts a little wear on the drivers and the equipment this is kind of a good perspective here from the tlm car you can see that how high that banking is they're actually driving on the apron and to the right it just looks like a wall of asphalt but that's the banking that you're actually racing on later as the cars come down the front straightaway we are green here at Daytona International Speedway for the first time as cars rush down into turn number one. We are underway for 14 hours of endurance road racing here. The TireRack.com, Daytona 14. Yep. I was gonna bring my binoculars, forgot them. I was gonna bring my uh, the sunglasses, forgot them. Because <laughs> I was down here last weekend, flew home, worked, and then came back. So, <laughs> yeah. No rest for the weary. Exactly. What were y'all doing down there last weekend? Uh, we had a family Easter gathering down here, so. Oh, nice. and went to Typhoon Lagoon, and that's where I got turned into a lobster. Yeah, especially where you live, you probably haven't seen a whole lot of the sun. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but we're gonna see the eclipse uh, this Monday. 
You got a good spot to view that? Uh, we're right on the line. That should work out well. Yes. Unless it's cloudy and then it'll just be even more dark. Oh, darker. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys have um, any race updates, team updates, please send them over to Tiffany, and or she'll keep y'all. Or yeah, or Billy here, and they'll keep you. They'll keep keep everybody updated on what's going on with your teams. I've got a lot of them. I'm trying to uh, sort them at the moment. All right. I've got a few. I got another link to Madfast. Let's see if it's working. So this is it's one wicked good. fast uh, Corvette we're in right now. One, uh, I believe Atlanta by uh, 19 laps, correct? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a little sorry. I'm trying to get this other thing done here real quick, but I'm just getting hammered with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. For... My meeting is trying to end, and I can't have that happen right now. Uh, no. But 120 cars starting the race out here this weekend, so... A lot of cars, a lot of drivers. Yeah, good morning to Roger and Timothy and uh, Fred Wolf all hanging out with us. Kelly Widenhauer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, one of the uh, parts uh, farm Mustangs is headed into the pits. It doesn't look like the one that they repaired since uh, NCM, but... We do have the uh, Momo Champ is running this race, but um, it, uh, folks yep. might remember that that car got crashed at NCM, um, kind oh, of yeah. beyond repair. So they are using the Rat Hole Racing Miata. So that's what they're going to be running today. Right. Um, that one was given up in, uh, in sacrifice. So Benson Young is behind the wheel of the uh, Momo Champ car. And we have a car stop in the uh, International Horseshoe. He has uh, re-motivated the vehicle and is returning to the race system surface. Oh, we got a car smoking heavily that's come into the paddock area. It looks like they've left the, uh, the racetrack area or yeah. something. I'm not sure. They're actually coming from outside the gate. So. Uh, yeah, he's coming around behind the building right now. <laughs> not sure what his intentions are, but... Uh, <laughs> Found the Wilson Daily might not be spelled properly, but found the Wilson Wilson Daily uh, B there. Nice picture as they come through six, and I'll get their information updated here as soon as I can. Just getting underway here at Daytona International Speedway, the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series. Our annual return. Yeah, we do this crazy 14-hour race every year, huh? Yep. So well, as long as I've been involved in Champ Car, this is when we first started doing Champ Car, this was our second race we ever did. We're super excited about it, though. It's hard not to be excited at Daytona. Mm -hmm. I still just pinch myself when I drive in here thinking, man, are we really doing this? This is so cool. Yeah, you come through the tunnel for the first time in your life, you whoa. <laughs> I keep waiting for them to kick me out. Say, no, you're not supposed to be here. It's like, you're right. I'm not. What was I thinking? <laughs> or at least they try to kick us they out. They keep letting me back. <laughs> I, We're very trying, though, so. <laughs> it's always a little bit of a surprise. They let us back in. At least me, you know, media guy. We're kind of at the bottom of the, uh, the running order, order there. Yeah. <laughs> the pecking order, yes, that would be the right word. Uh, you, you're the one with chickens. You should go that. Right? <laughs> I keep learning about all these, like, chicken phrases that are, like, actually, like, now I understand what they mean. 
Come well, catch your chickens before you they are, hatch. You are the official Champ Cart chicken tender. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's the diva. I am that. I am but a delicate flower. We have a car coming into the pits. Yeah, it's nice to announce these things, but uh, for 12, I can't see it. You got I believe I have young eyeballs to the left that can see things like that. <laughs> In other words, that's your dog, Billy. Really. Yes, I know. <laughs> 412. I've I got believe. my computer glasses on, which do not make it to pit road. Which I was just thinking about that last night. Or it was actually this morning around 2:15 uh, when I was wide awake and unable to go to sleep. That. Uh, this is one of the few racetracks where the tower is really quality positioned. We can not only see the racetrack, we can also see all of pit road. And that's kind of unusual. Most tracks, you're in the tower and you pit road's directly beneath you. You can't see it at all. Or you look across down, the track. Yeah, you, you can look down and see the front straightaway. Um, this racetrack, you can see it all. You can see the racetrack. You can see pit road. You can see the front straightaway by looking down. So it's like, we, wow, this is great. We have a, race control is on the outside of the track instead of typically it's on the inside. <clears throat> we have right. a under motivated car in pit lane here. That is the 725, I believe. I can't, I can't see it. It's it's a gray BMW. <laughs> he's he's going behind the wall. A little early for that. Yeah, well, we've had smokers, we've had, you know, under-motivated vehicles. Oh, ooh, a little brake lock-up going into the uh, International Horseshoe as two cars almost connected. Said hello, as it were. I've got some updates on drivers. I'll go through this list to start with. Yeah, in the 251 of Madwag, and I found out what Madwag means. It means mad wives and girlfriends. Ah. That's fantastic, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so that's the number 251. That's Brandon Brilliant. Um, they're a fast guy. He's a mechanical engineer. He's uh, the starting driver for that car. And the number 11 of the Silver Bullet Racing, that's Mark Quivelli. I'm going to go with that. Number 241, the Happy Hour Miata, John Bland is behind the wheel of that one. Um, missing Link, uh, that's the 178. That's Steve Shelton Jr. driving that car. Um, Mad Fast, not to be confused with Mad Wag. Mad Fast is primarily an Alabama team. Uh, Mike Manley is starting that car for them. Uh, GW, I mean GMW, that's the 889. Jeff Disco Ball Cohen is behind the wheel of that one. <laughs> and number 831, MDR, uh, Mike Donafrio. Donafrio? Donafrio. Donafrio. I'm going to go with that, Donafrio. And we got another car headed to uh, the paddock from uh, the Horseshoe Emergency Exit. So I can't see any numbers because you know they're 10 miles from us but i can see the car on board with the atlanta speedworks car number 981 looks like two brothers racing leads this race now over marathon motorsports in second mad wag in third headquarter automotive in fourth and then it's sphinx dog racing in fifth we've also got race hero running so thanks, Troy, for getting that done. And uh, if you want to check that out, you can go to racehero.io and then look for the TireRack.com Daytona 14-hour race in the list. And then from there, you can follow along with your favorite teams. Look at the cars really spread out as they come out of the bus stop here and head down the racetrack. So that was the 55 Mustang that I mentioned pulled in earlier. So, and I believe this is the parts uh, farm car that hit the wall coming in right now. They rebuilt that car pretty quickly. Hopefully they got everything nutted and bolted.
So Atlanta Speedworks cars, I'm going to be watching is number 718. They're currently in seventh place. Car number 981. And they are in 11th. Full course. Well, yes. Until purple 35. And there it is. Full course caution being thrown. And so many high quality teams out here this weekend. Mm -hmm. A lot of high quality teams that uh, signed up for Watkins Glen too. So that'll be a fight to the finish. And purple 35. That's going to be extra miserable at Daytona, where you want to be going fast on those high banks. I think at 35, you're probably only on the apron. Yeah, most of them stay down on the apron. I haven't um, driven Daytona since we went to using the purple 35 so uh, frequently. Uh, apparently, the car is right in front of us. Must have had it. I think he's backwards, facing the wrong way of the International Horseshoe. There, so he might have gotten some help. Yeah, it looks like he ended up on the outside there. Of uh, that would be turned three, so the exit of three there. And uh, I think I've got a camera, sort of over that way, but it'd be tough to see anything. You can see it's way off in the distance there. So, Cruiser working that scene. I think he might have gotten over into the guardrail area there. So, they've got a couple trucks over there. Yep. I think he's technically facing the wrong way of the racetrack, if I see it pro correctly. it Again... It's great that the, you can see everything at this track, but it's 10 miles away. <laughs> it's a huge facility. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And those binoculars come in handy, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're sitting in Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Don't remind me. Oh, no. So Purple 35 here at Daytona International. Got a few more driver updates in the 289 of Urge Racing. That's Brad Stoltz <clears throat> behind the wheel of that car. And the 825 of IFW is uh, Cody Renhofer. So I believe it would be the two Joes starting for us. So Joe Nonamaker and Joe Salen. Um, I'd assume that. I don't know if we have a camera in either one of our cars. That would be a question for my colleague right next to me. No, wouldn't it be great if we had? We Unfortunately, we've had some equipment failure, and mm. we're a little short on cameras now. But I see, said the blind man. <laughs> to the deaf little girl as he picked up his hammer and saw? Yeah, pretty much. So uh, since we're under Purple 35, it give me a chance to expound on this, the CAC of Smith County's mission, which is to protect and restore the lives of abused children. And uh, so I can expand on that a little bit. Simply put, the CAC of Smith County works with children who have either been abused or involved in violent crimes and walks them step by step through the judicial, judicial system uh, from pretrial, collection of evidence, forensic in investigation, to advocating for these victims during trial and then providing post-trial counseling and rehabilitation services as well as medical services. So every year, one of every 56 children in Smith County walks through the CAC's door as a reported victim of child abuse. And with the help of its partners, the CAC not only brings hope, healing, and justice to child abuse victims, but they also equip our community to recognize, report, and prevent abuse. So Velocity Service is the service arm of Velocity Mazda, and it provides clients with a full range of services on all makes and models, from exotics to the simple yet all-important uh, farm truck. Velocity Service also provides um, 
I think I know what that word is. Take a look at that, Billy. Is it? Concierge. Concierge, yeah. Concierge service to multiple office complexes, offering complimentary pickup and delivery services. So again, um, if you want to pledge, a portion is going to is how it's going to work. You know, people can pledge a dollar amount to the CAC Springs Luncheon, uh, luncheon rather, powered by Give Smart webpage. And for every lap that the Atlanta Speedworks team completes, we will be raising money to assist the Children's Advocacy Center in the race to end child abuse. And so that's what I'm going to be calling out uh, at the commercial breaks, the total number of laps turned by those two cars that are here this weekend for Atlanta Speedworks. In the Floridians car, which I think I had as our winners last year. Was that last year? I know they've won here before. Let's see. 23. Yep. The Florida Yates won the race. So um, you never count them out, especially at these Florida races. Um, Jason Hickman is behind the car. And they um, reported that they had a little trouble finding the uh, brake pads that they prefer um, or any that they usually use, I guess. So they're having to try a new compound uh, this weekend. I was talking to them, and they were like, you know, what could go wrong? And I'm like, oh, boy. Fingers crossed. A little prayer. <laughs> so, Hopefully those, what could they possibly don't burn go those wrong? Up. Yeah. We haven't done our picks, or at least I haven't done my picks. So uh, I'll throw it to Tiffany first. Oh, yeah. Well, we know what your pick is there, Wait, Billy. Uh, it, you never know. You never know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll come back in a minute. Let me let me look at Rome for a second. All right. So I'll give you my pick. And it's uh, premium dudes. And I was thinking you might say just, that. Just, just, you never know. Well, Billy, how about you? So this track is kind of us bringing a knife to a gunfight, as it were. So I, I'm torn. The, the official me wants to pick... Uh, one of our cars. The unofficial me, you know, the, the one that uh, isn't uh, attached to anything, would save Mr. Vetter. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. So. So which one sits with next to us today? Is this the unofficial or the official? <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're calling. You're calling two. Are we allowing that? Let me check the uh, <laughs> check the laws here. Are we allowed to call two favorites? I don't know. I think seems a bit. The um, off air should be yeah. Eddie Vedder. The on air should be <laughs> Salins for Billy. Oh, so Lord. good morning. Thanks everybody for signing in. Great to have everybody joining us for this race. It is the TireRack.com. Uh, Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway. Paul Veltum with the uh, irreplaceable Tiffany Alexander and the always fun and valuable and entertaining Billy Salen. And uh, we're planning on having Kyle Lockrow back up here. If, you've, if you're a frequent watcher, listener of the broadcast, you know Kyle. He's been on the show a couple of times. And uh, this afternoon, he's planning on joining us again. So we hope you'll uh, stick around for that. It's always great to hear from Kyle. I was thinking maybe since y'all have some of my other team infinity has been has a history of being strong here. So might just go with them. That's that's a. Uh... That's a solid pick. They're a very fast car. And they, they know how to win here. They, they, you know, this is a Florida race. This is home track for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm good with that. So it looks like um, they've cleared up that incident on the racetrack. The trucks have left the scene. They're collecting other vehicles, it looks like. Gotcha. Because there's a Miata getting towed back, uh past the owner driver a lot that is not being used. Well, this so. is one of the cameras I was able to get it going again. This is one of the cameras I placed. It's Hee Haw Racing in a 2000 Dodge Dakota. And it's such a hoot. I just had to try to get a camera in there. 
And, uh, yeah, these guys, great group of guys. Uh, just met them this morning. So this Dodge Dakota, and they got a really awesome... Uh, <laughs> what's that plastic sheet you lay on the side of the car? It's got all the graphics on it. Uh, vinyl? Uh, yeah, it's got a vinyl, whatever you call it, covering on the... That's really cool. It's really cool. Um, so we have the uh, world's biggest golf sand trap in front of us in the uh, tri-oval, by the way, also. So I would uh, probably advise cars to try to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, on TV you see the beautiful Daytona with the grass, and it's all painted up real nice. It separates pit lane from the racetrack. But um, when we're here, it's not really they don't have the sod down and it's actually just like sand yes <laughs> it's it's a golf sand trap so yeah <laughs> don't go in there it doesn't really look that way when we show up here on board with wilson daly and working my way over to the to the event logs and uh let's see if we get if i can get some updates here on what's what's going on I sent you a couple of cameras too. If you, Sweet. whenever you have, you know, some spare time, you yeah. know. Well, I'm not doing anything. I might as well. Uh, I mean, nothing. Yeah. So yeah, we had several cars stopped off track. Uh, Five fifty-five. If you already mentioned that or not, that's the Florida Florida Samurais in their Subaru Impreza WRX. Um, I think we talked about them a little bit. <laughs> On, on the uh, podcast, uh, car 129, um, that's one of the Rosmar teams, and car 45, which is the Panthera Racing Supra. And then there's another car, and they actually, he didn't get the car number, he just got some question marks there. But so several cars that they're collecting, like you said, Billy, and... Um, Get us sorted out here and get us back to racing. Um, and the car that had impact with the wall is number 45. That's Panthera Racing. Yeah. Okay. So. Hopefully they'll be able to get that fixed and back out there and... Yep. Because... That would be no fun. Otherwise. No. The drag. Not the good kind. The bad kind. <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, was talking to um talking to one of the uh drivers uh yesterday. And I thought it'd be good to mention folks, just so you understand a little bit about what the dynamics are here for the broadcast which is very grassroots. It, it's the most polished turd you've ever seen. And <laughs> it, is, it is run almost completely by cellular technology. And it's just a couple, you know, just myself. I'm basically just an IT guy who's also a race car driver. We got Billy here, which still don't know why he shows up. <laughs> He's probably asking himself the same thing. And then Tiffany, who was just grandfathered in, and she can't seem to get away. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but the the question that came up was, you know, cause occasionally we do get actually some, some feedback that's, you know, less than flattering. And the, the question was about, you know, car accidents and like, Hey, there was a car accident. I was in a car accident. And my family was wondering what happened to me and you guys weren't talking about it. You were just talking about other things. And, and what, and so the protocol is that I've been, I've been around the sport for 50 years. I've been racing competitively since 1984. I have a pretty good idea by looking at an accident if it's possible that there is an injury type situation. If I'm unsure, um, I will not show that and until we have something that comes back that says it's good and we're okay. Um, so the it's sort of a okay. judgment yeah. call there, but if there's any question in my mind uh, that's coming back to me that the driver may be injured possibly, I'm not going to dive into that. And the reason I don't is because we only have a small sliver of information that we have on the screen. We don't have anything else. Um, 
And so we don't want to alarm anybody un unnecessarily. Um, we have responsibilities both to the organization and to the tracks, actually, that uh, are not really comfortable with us showing some types of footage. So that's why we have to be a little, there's a little bit of censorship there going on. And so I hope you can uh, understand and respect that as, as we go forward, that it is, uh, it is important. Please understand that what I get back is just a small amount of information. Uh, the majority of it is handled with the professionals at the scene. Um, occasionally the tower gets some information, but it's usually very um, limited. And that would be in race control. And if race control happens to have a moment to relay that to me, then I will bring that to you. And it's usually in the form of drivers out and okay. Um, so you, it's going through a lot of, you know, paramedics. And then if there's a track worker that happens to be there and overhears something, they may relay that information to the tower if they choose. And then the tower may, the race control may, you know what I mean? It's going through a lot of hands. And because so, they're dealing with the incident. So alerting us to what's going on is probably, the least, I don't know, last right. on their list. Right. Like, like we said, we're, we're at the bottom of the pecking order. Yeah. So just hope you folks understand that, why that's important. And um, it's, it's not that we're tr trying to withhold anything. We want to make sure that if we do broadcast anything, that it's completely accurate. All right, so back to the race at hand. We are back to green Atlanta Speedworks using, getting all our money's worth, using all that racetrack on the way out of this last corner here. Flipping it over here. They was, as they were coming out of six and uh, back up onto the, uh, the high banks here at Daytona. This will take them down through this left-hander here, and then they'll head in towards the bus stop. Where there's always a lot of activity. Yep. Always. Their camera's kind of breaking up there, so. Silver Blue's saying, hey, Car 28 needs an in-car camera, too. I'll get right on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> or, stop or, the race. Or stop what you're doing. The team could invest in a camera and help us out. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Now we got a Corvette heading in. The pits. That is... The 34, it looks like, from this distance. Okay. That would be Kenneth Eldon Racing. Thank you, Tiffany. And Tiffany, if, maybe if you can turn your microphone up a little bit, that would be good, too. I know okay. you're having a little trouble hearing me. How about that? That's better. More? Sure. Got All it. All right. How about now? I'm not sure if I'm hearing your microphone on your headset or if I'm hearing it... If you touch the microphone on your headset. Yeah, I don't hear... I think... I'm not hearing that your finger on the on the uh, microphone. So it might be we're getting you from your laptop uh, oh. microphone. Sounds a little echoey. Let's see if I can do anything about that then. Is there any place to check lap times? There certainly is. As you can... Uh, you can go to race-monitor.com. Okay, so it's race-monitor.com on the web. They have an app in the App Store, too. You can get a paid version. You can also go to race. Excuse me, it's racehero.io, and you're just looking for the event in the list there. It's tyrac.com Daytona 14 hour under the live races. I do prefer... Uh, um race hero over race monitor but sometimes you get what you get and that's what you get thanks bernie appreciate you putting that in there yeah bernie put a link there uh, I, he just actually typed it out so it's not a link but it's just typed out there for so you can see it And then if you're going to race monitor, you just go click on the live races, and then you can scroll through that big list and look for the Champ Car Race. Tyrac.com Champ Car Endurance Series. So, for those Team Salem fans out there, we are currently in 44th with Mustard and... 52nd with ketchup 
So it might take a little while to for them to move up the order cuz you know big track. But hopefully, knock on wood. <laughs> and with that, we've reached the bottom of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and take our very first commercial break here. At Daytona International Speedway, Atlanta Speedworks has completed 18 laps so far this morning. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I probably need new tires. You do. What if they sold tires online? We do. We're TireRack.com. They could offer lots of tires. We have so many tires. And help you find the right tire. It's called the Tire Decision Guide. Oh, and they could ship them to a nearby mechanic. We shipped over 7,000 independent recommended installers. This is an amazing idea. Sorry. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Bring on the frozen tundra, the grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Stress tested to meet or exceed original equipment performance. Exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. 
Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance. With two-layer shims and OE-style slots and chamfers to eliminate noise. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. Welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. It is the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series race at Daytona International Speedway. Uh, TireRack.com is our sponsor for today's race. So, very grateful, thankful to them for helping us out put this race on. Yep, cars are headed down. Towards Fair. turn five, this turn five is like my favorite corner of the racetrack. I just love it. It's so fast. You set the car up right, and you don't even have to lift. You can just just bend into the corner. Isn't that one of the ho the horseshoes? I think it's between them. It's so just between a, them. Okay. It's the fast left hander there that takes you over to five. I like the bus stop. I think the bus stop is like stupid fun. Now this is the bus stop area here. I mean, it could be kind of stupid crazy too if you go in there with like five of your friends, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have friends there, <laughs> so it would be bad because they're probably jerks. <laughs> no, they're they're all frenemies at that point. Gotcha. So, uh, so the standings here, 12 laps completed. Two Brothers Racing leads by four seconds over Marathon Motorsports TLM. We're on board with them right now. You can see all the traffic up there on the high banks here at Daytona. Madweg Motorsports third. Then we skip over the pause racing because that's an EC car. So fourth is actually Atlanta Speedworks in the 718. Fing Dog Racing behind them, followed by Headquarter Automotive, Eddie Vetter who has set the fastest lap time of the day at a 212.955. Then it's KH Motorsports, Map Green Fuel Tech, Atlanta Speedworks, again, the 981 car round out the top 10, according to our third party standings. The officially unofficial standings. Yeah, Tiffany, I don't hear you right now. You don't hear me? There you no. go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Does it sound okay? Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like the same. Room. It okay. Sounds, it still sounds echoey, so I think we can hear you, but it's a little difficult to hear you. It's. It might be. It is what it is. On my end, so technology, you know. <laughs> it's always something, isn't it? It's always. <laughs> Little, little spotchy there, so we'll head over to Eddie Vetter and see how they're doing. Moving up through the field, according to Race Hero, they've passed 97 cars so far for fifth place. So they have been on the move, turning that 215 on that last lap, still outclassing the rest of the field as they are rocketing up the standings in that very fast Corvette. We've got someone heading into the pits right now. It, it looks like a Mustang. I can't tell whether the new or the old variety. It is one of the old variety. Well, we have um, called in that they're the 265 and the 28 are both smoking, and the number 28 car was smoking a lot. That would be KH Motorsports. That's a 1970 Ford something. Yep, he just pulled into out. his stall. Like 
we've got a cable in front of our camera here. It's probably the cable that it's not taped down by the rookie that put the camera in there. So we got a G meter. <laughs> <laughs> we can see the G loads. <laughs> that looked like uh, premium dudes going down the inside. My pick for the win today. Let's I see where the premium dudes are currently. Oh, they're in 12. Hey. With a few EC cars in there. So, uh, All right. There is hope. Yeah. Hope springs eternal. <laughs> well, and, you know, if uh, Billy got two picks, my original pick was going to be the Atlanta Speedworks car, and that's up in fifth, so. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good choice. I, I need to get a Porsche pick, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you own a Porsche, so that's that's fair game. Yeah. <laughs> one, one that's running, even. The other one I blew up, but what? we will talk about that. How do you? What? It's German it's engineering. Oh. And the, the engine got really loud. And I was like, maybe I just, maybe the exhaust just fell off of it. And then I was driving and I was coming down the back straightaway of Barber. And I was like, I don't have much of an exhaust on this car. And I was like, oh, that sound goes with the revolutions of the engine. I was like, this is going to be expensive. Yeah. So currently got the engine out of the 986, but, uh. Hadn't got into it yet. When we dropped the oil pan, it was full of mm, something that looked like gravel and important bits of the engine. Yeah, that's never good. No. All right, so I'm going to paste a link to the live logs. This is the uh, race control logs in the description. Now, if it doesn't take you directly to the Daytona sheet, you will need to page through them at the bottom of the spreadsheet. <laughs> So it's really more of a workbook, and so you have to scroll through to find the Daytona race, and then select that, and that should give you the same view that I have. It shows you the race logs. Yep, and it says the uh, 645 of open throttle is stopped on track. That's one of our F-class cars. Oh, no, bummer. Like we said, this is a huge oh, facility. We've got so. a car smoking and sliding off the racetrack at turn five. And they are actually rounding the corner at five, still in the grass. Oh, they took the escape roads. What they, they took the um, turn five has, has a, a sort of like an escape road that sort of shortcuts part of five. And he took the shortcut. And, and he, now he's, and he's pulling off the track. The, yes. So we made it around to six and pulled off. And he's going. Yeah. Oh, we got another car sliding. Two cars sliding out of control over there around turn, heading into five. Yes. And one of them has come to a rest up against the guardrail. I'm wondering, there Billy, if there might be some be oil some down there. Fluid, yeah. That, that's my thought, too. Uh, We've gone does, to yellow. Doesn't look like that uh, Mini Cooper over there impacted the wall which is good so just be aware if you're watching on the live stream be aware in the kink at the the infield there that there may be a fluid of some sort down on the track and that's not a fun ride no because <laughs> there's not much you can do and then yeah you're definitely along for the ride at that point We're actually on board with Team Infinity here. I had that labeled wrong. So they've brought everything down to a code 35. So all the cars now, uh, it's similar to, if you watch Formula One, it's similar to the uh, virtual safety, safety car. car. So all the cars slow to 35 miles per hour. And hold position. Steve says he hears us loud and clear in Spain. Yeah. Th Hi, Steve. How you doing? Yeah. Love to visit Spain sometime. That's on my list of places to visit. Steve I have is a friend uh, who has family there, and he always talks about it like so, like it's so awesome. Yeah. I want to visit all the places, all the cool places. Yeah. Okay, Timothy's got the logs. Good job. And we'll try to keep you updated about what we see as well from there. Try. We're very trying we are here. very trying. 
That's true. So the equip octane, and that's the mini that you saw, I think. That's 347. It says, now we're in 808, which is infin in infinite, I always want to say infinity, infinite loop racing. Um, they had some car to car contact. Ah. Yeah, I think we saw that. <laughs> they said uh, they may have hit the oil and spun and caused contact. So yeah, there were two cars together got together and and um, and the, so the, it was in the exact same place where the car that's now being uh, looked at with um, support personnel. It's just out of camera view as always over there in turn six. He's pulled off the racetrack almost immediately. It looked like the engine let go, Tiffany and. And he just pulled off into the grass there at five and then made it to that uh it's kind of a it's kind of a cut through access road around turn five and then um cycled back around to six and then pulled off there's a lot of uh they've added some pavement here at Daytona to the infield and uh it's been in a good way they've it's really helped out uh to allow these drivers some place to go if they've got okay. a mechanical problem and I think this is the track where you always just go to the right. Whatever your problem is, you go to the right and you'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, definitely if your engine's let go and it's laying down oil or other fluids, you want to get off the racing surface. Well, if you go to the left here, you're going towards a very, very steep wall. <laughs> it's so, not going to work out very well most of the time. Yes, exactly. So thanks for joining, everybody. It's uh, the TireRack.com, uh, Daytona 14, at Daytona International Speedway, with Tiffany Alexander and Billy Salen, and yours truly calling the race today. Looks like we got the 129 of Rossmar Racing stopped off track somewhere around turn seven as well. Besides that, blew it down, so few situations to uh, take care of under this purple 30 bob. Yep. Forty nine minutes into the uh, unofficially officially in the race so far. OK, I've got marching ants, so I'll drop a link here for that. Get that in here. Bernie's screen must look like ours with like four or five different tabs open. He, he's going to have the marching ants and the logs and all the things. Yeah, well, there's uh, there's other teams doing it too. I don't know if you remember, Tiffany, or if I got you that image, but there was a team he had the marching ants, the control logs, he had our broadcast and his in-car. They had all four screens in his pit box. His, what do they call that trolley where they... Uh, oh, yeah. Pit cart. Yeah, the pit cart. See, see, there's a reason you brought me along, Polly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I, Billy, I need all the help I can get. How long have you been doing this? At least a year. You oh. know. It's been three years. Yeah. You started helping out back at Mid-Ohio, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't that the yeah. first time? Um, that time I put that BMW in the wall? I, I don't <laughs> remember any of that. Well, this is a good time. Up until... <laughs> It wasn't <laughs> right. That part, that part, I didn't like. The abrupt stop. It wasn't that bad. Car was okay. So yeah, that should be the. Um, I just think it'd be a fun thing to say. Um, that should be the link to the uh, marching ants, and then I'll try to get that in my system here too for the broadcast. And if you're 
looking at race hero and you see some of the cars turning salmon that usually means they're not turning laps but because we're under a purple 35 the system doesn't see them making laps because of the the slowed pace so it doesn't actually mean anything it just it's taking them longer to clear the loop than the system is um so it's just recognizing that and it'll clear as soon as they go by It's like, that lap time is too long. You must not be running. And it's like, yeah, we're just going 35. Yeah, Garen, I don't know. Um, the information we get is third, third party. So I'm not sure why that car, you're not seeing any data on it. The, let's see. Looks like it hasn't started the race. Team Oversteer. So it doesn't look like they've turned laps yet. I'm not sure if that's not the case or... Is the case. Yeah, but like we said, we, we get in the vast ocean of information out there from the track. We get the, uh, the thimble, as it were. So Eddie Vedder, that team, it's, uh, they've moved up into fourth place now. Yeah, for all the folks uh, watching, thanks, Bernie. If you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, appreciate that. And there we can see one of the EVs out there at the bus stop. Heading out there. Don't you mean the Le Mans chicken? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I do mean that, yeah. Oh, and uh, the USS Enterprise is out here this weekend, too. So that's that's back. That's cool to see that car again. Yeah. Uh, I think we had our very first race we ever did. And we have someone pushing their car back to the... Uh, Cut in the pit lane. I can't see the number because they have a crew guy right in front of the number. What are they thinking? Yeah, exactly. You know, guys got to help me out here. Right? <laughs> yeah, and if you're looking for a specific car, 363, it's, it's kind of hard for me to find them in that sea of cars out there, but it looks like they're in 79th place. So if you want to keep track of rolling roadblock racing, you might want to try going to race dash monitor.com and then click on live racing and then just look for the um the champ car race there that was the 60 that was being pushed back and they have since motivated the car slightly to get the car back to the paddock and i'll paste the link in here for race hero if you want to watch the same basically the same stats Timing and There's also the marching ants that you posted earlier that that'll show you where they are on track at any moment. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure how accurate it is, but mm -hmm. it's there. I think it's that too is like the backup secondhand information, but it's all right. The backup to the for backup. entertainment purposes only. Isn't that why everything we, we do our here? Disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of twofold. It's to entertain and inform. And well, I'm not sure we really make either one of them, but yeah. we try. Well, keeping yourself Did entertained is half the battle, you know. Probably should throw the uh, disclaimer out there, right, Tiffany? Because you mentioned yeah. it. And <laughs> Paulie's got the soundboard. I'm just. Oh, I can put. I can. I can we can run it. We got. Uh, <laughs> we got time. One thing we have is plenty of time. Yeah, 14 hours. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's in here. I just got to find it. Here we go. Here's our disclaimer that they're, they're talking about. Yeah. Here we go. All right, all right. I apologize. I'm really, really sorry. I apologize unreservedly. I offer a complete and utter retraction. The imputation was totally without basis in fact and was in no way fair comment 
and was motivated purely by malice, and I deeply regret any distress that my comments may have caused you or your family, and I hereby undertake not to repeat any such slander at any time in the future. I'm sorry, and I'm stupid. I prostrate myself before you and beg your forgiveness. Jeez, I'm an idiot! I'm gonna go ask directions to our next huge embarrassing failure. Yes, I'm gonna go ask directions to our next huge embarrassing failure. I Fantastic. Always, I always get giggles out of that as we go back to Green Flag Racing. And Two Brothers Racing leading the way and Marathon Motorsports right on their heels looking to overtake for the lead. Madwag Motorsports in third, but lurking in the background there in fourth place, it is that Chevrolet Corvette of Eddie Vedder. Nanny, nanny. Sorry, that should be Team Infinity's song. That should be. <laughs> In fact, the we, Eddie Vedder car has the pace to just like overwhelm this field. Yeah, and so far he certainly has been doing that, clawing his way up through the field indeed as they head into one of the um, horseshoe sections here. This may be turn three indeed. That's the car track out. And uh, yep, he's going to line up for five. This is. Again, my favorite part of the track here. Flat through here. And then pulls back to the left to line up for, excuse me, this is turn five up here. And this is uh, Dan Tilly behind the wheel. Oh, the okay. Better Corvette. Yeah, great group of guys. And uh, they used to race the Freddie Mercury machine for years with us before they came out with the Eddie Vedder car. I really like their team names. That's very clever. And it, as you can tell, it is an immaculately prepared race car. Uh, looks like the, one of the Atlanta Springbrook cars was dropping. I don't know, I can't tell. Or maybe they were moving up and someone else was dropping. They, they're both inside the top 10 still, mm. and that's, that's where they have been. Okay, so my, I might be off because I got uh, them, the 996 down in 34th. So, like we said, officially unofficial on uh, Race Monitor. And down in 34th, did they bring three cars here this weekend? Yes, they do have one there, so I'll have to keep track of him, too. Yeah, there's three. Yep. Uh, the 996, the 718, catch. and the 981. So, your math is wrong. <laughs> the first one there, yeah. So, the important thing is the end of the race, you know, how many laps uh, yeah. they accumulate between three cars. So. Yes, that they're going to they're gonna have a lot of laps. I would say most likely, yeah. And uh, we are pitted with our friends from uh, from um, Corning. Uh, that would be the Scrappy Doo Racing team. They used to crew for us in the old days, and then when we became what we are right now, they bunch of hot shot show offs. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they became their own team, so we're sharing a stall with them. So it's always good, you know, to have that, you know, because if they break, they can come help us. If we break, then we can go help them. And <laughs> it's always good to have quote unquote friends. That's coming handy. So, Scrappy Doo, oh, is, that, uh, is that a dog? Yes. They, I have a dog named, her nickname is Scrappy-Doo as well. The got a car oh, with a hard hit there, and it is in the, the bus stop. Mm, yeah. Big damage on that car. Looks like they actually, they have Dupree scattered all the way up to the wall. So I'm not sure like if they, they got the punched from behind back. or what exactly mm. happened there. Oh, looks like... So car number car number forty one is the uh, Matt Travis Racing, their A class car. Yeah, that that never. 
not a good spot to hit a wall. Well, I'm not sure he got to the wall. It would be difficult to get up to the wall and then back uh, where he's sitting. Uh, he's actually to the inside. He's driver's right of the exit. So. It looks like there's some debris over here yeah. towards the wall, though. Almost like he might have lost it, smacked it, and bounced back. But that's a long arse bounce. Uh-huh. Well, it looks like, like he took the whole most of the hit in the arse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably means he was out of control when he visited the wall. Says he did get into the wall, though, so... Michael Derby says, is there a good spot to hit the wall? No, mm. really. Darlington? But that's a little different type of hitting the wall. If you mm. just want to be famous. <laughs> Leave your mark. Yes. It's like they're going underneath the hood, maybe to check, uh, make sure power's disconnected. Not sure. Yeah, it looks like they were a little bit concerned about the uh, underhood. Driver's out of the car. Looks good. He's he's just walking back to the EV. It, there is there is a policy with a lot of tracks, and they'll ask you. Um, if you've been in a made contact with a wall, they'll ask you if you would come with them <clears throat> back to the um, to the quack shack to the um, the medical center to get checked out, just to make sure you're okay. Yeah, that's. I think most tracks ask the policy. If you have impact with anything on course, you gotta, you know, get checked out. Yeah, so they may have said to him, like, you need to come back with us. And Which, when you've been in a hard hit, it's, I don't know, but my experience has been, that's fine by me. Yeah. Because <laughs> right. my hand is banged up, and I wouldn't mind getting some ice for it, you know, something. You can see we got just a piece of it. The, the tail end of that car got uh, nailed pretty good. Yep. It's kind of sheared. I'm sure they had some help whether it's spun or yeah it's kind of an odd spot to be um losing it and ending up in the wall over there again uh, like you said there may have been some contact they may have been slow coming out of there and somebody was unable to avoid them because there's so many cars out here like that beautiful yellow and black porsche coming through there who's who's is that i have no idea <laughs> i Drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> Two Brothers leads this race over Marathon Motorsports about 1.7 seconds back that last time through. Madwag Motorsports is in third, and Eddie Vetter in fourth with Atlanta Speedworks currently in fifth place. So that's uh, 19 laps uh, for both of the, the two Speedworks cars that are up front. So the uh, guys over at Ventover Racing in their BMW, they said uh, enough with the the, the purple 35s. Uh, I mean, 35 miles an hour on such a fast track like this, and it's kind of warm out there. You know, their their driver uh, Corey is like uh, getting a little warm in the car. Because, you know, when you're going 35, you're not getting it much breeze coming in at all. The boys don't want to play nice. I know. I'm like, well, you know, tell your competitors to stop breaking things. Yeah, stop <laughs> breaking my cars. Stop stealing my chips. <laughs> all right, guys, we got a break for commercial. We'll be back in a few. Atlanta Speedworks, 56 laps completed so far between the three cars. Stay with us. You're watching Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. We'll be right back. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. 
Tire Rack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done! All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance, exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with OE matched friction formulations and fitment for 97% of cars on the road backed by a noise-free guarantee and professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. All right. Still under caution here, but uh, it looks like the uh, scene of the crime has been cleaned up, so should be going back to green as the USS Enterprise comes through the bus stop there. 
Uh, yep. Uh, I'm looking to the camera through race controls window to our left here, and it looks like there's n the vehicle has gone behind the safe wall, so no more emergency vehicles out there. So we should be going to full course yellow shortly. I'm going back to green. Momentarily. And there's the four full course yellow. Yep, so we should be going back to green here shortly. Got all the cars kind of back up to closer to race pace. Yeah, we'll start picking up the speed here, just like Tiffany said. And there we go, green flag. Down towards turn number one here, and there's so many different lines getting down here it's it's sort of a decreasing situation where it's almost a decreasing radius where you've got this very wide section then you funnel down into this itty bitty little racing space <laughs> you could put a lot of cars on the way in but only a few cars on the way out it, it's it's kind of like uh aladdin in the, uh, the genie's living space <laughs> yeah exactly I believe that was the reference you were going for. Yeah. One of the great classic films. Yes. Through five. Through four, I guess this is. Down to five. In the Hee Haw Racing Dodge Dakota. And... It looks like the uh, older Mustang that went behind the wall earlier. I can't see the number yet because there's no number on the hood. Yeah. At least 28, I believe. I uh -huh. They are back out on the racing surface or the pit lane headed towards the racing surface. Yeah, so we just saw Prefect Racing go by in their Lexus. And uh, there's a very fast... Uh, Camaro coming by. Got several EC cars out here this weekend too, so that's something to keep in mind. We go back on board with Eddie Vetter. Eddie Vetter now up to third place. The gap 36 seconds to Marathon Motorsports, still holding second by just two seconds over Two Brothers. So they've been doing an excellent job with that E36, just holding fast, holding position there. In second place, very close to the leader. You, you can just hear that uh, beautiful inline six cylinder singing away as we go back to caution here. And uh, we'll look across the track and see. You right. see some flashing lights yeah, over that's, there, but is that just preparation? That's just, uh, everybody here, as soon as there's a caution, throws on their lights. I got you. So, so far, um, Billy and I don't see the incident yet. And I'll look at the control logs. It looks like they're still typing everything up. Yeah, I've got nothing on that yet. But, uh, um, Hera Flights in their Honda S2000, uh, they have had an issue with the transmission. So it shows them in the pits, but they are currently not turning laps. Um, I'm trying to get some information about um, if they brought a spare transmission and plan to change it out. I know they didn't mm. come all the way to Daytona just to do one hour of racing. So hopefully they've got a backup for that. Uh, that would be the parts farm Mustang, I believe, that is stopped just past the squiggle pit out area um, heading into the first international horseshoe. Yeah, it looks like a... Got a bar right in the... Got a bar right in the way of the camera there, so... If I pick this up, I think... Even even better you can't see, because it's too yeah. far away. <laughs> but if you look in the middle of the screen, you can see two vehicles, crystal clear. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's emergency support vehicles in the front and the back, and the, uh, the car stranded there. And, uh... Crack reporting there for you folks. That's that's good television right there. By the way, with uh, 
along with you know driver information and whatever also send your shop pets because you know we we get uh team names like fing dog racing and we want to see the fing dog and then we, we know there's a fing dog yeah yeah there's yeah. actually a facebook uh page for uh cars at like at racetracks I mean, not cars, I mean, dogs at racetracks. Dogs at racetracks? Yeah, like they I'm just post surprised. pictures of their dogs in their cars or at racetracks or whatever. Cool. Yeah, Nancy, I, I don't know. I think it's designed to show all of the cars, but if they're, you're saying they're up to 73rd and they haven't been showing on the uh, timing and scoring pylon, I see 70 there. Um see what the next refresh gives us if it shows 73rd yeah so I'm not sure it should be in there somewhere for you <laughs> there's just so many cars it's difficult two brothers leads over Marathon Motorsports followed by Eddie Vedder Madwag Motorsports in fourth then it's Atlanta Speedworks Map Green Fuel Tech in sixth, then it's Fing Dog, Team Infinity. And then we've got uh, a couple of BC cars, Atlanta Speedworks and Headquarter Automotive. Looks like your top 10 right there. Yeah, we had 120 cars for this race, um, and we have at least 114 cars that took that completed at least one lap. So a lot of cars to keep up with. So we've got uh, Premium Dudes is uh, dropped down 16th. And if you think you like what you're seeing, maybe you want to get involved in Champ Car Racing, it is the easiest way to start racing. We're an entry-level series. You can check out the Champ Car website at champcar.org. You can come out, sign up to volunteer with us so you can uh, get to see what it's like and what it's all about. Or just be like me and just kind of show up and <laughs> just pitch in, yeah. help out, or yeah, loiter around the racetrack. Yeah, that's a cool place you know, to be. Whatever works. Hey, it beats being at work any day. Right. I would say a bad day at the racetrack is better than a good day at work, but sometimes a bad day at the racetrack is just a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pretty awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes a bad day at the racetrack, you can blow more money than you can make on a good day at work. Yeah. There's yeah. both your cars. Yeah. Really? They're, yeah, they're slowly moving up the field here. We're up into 28th and 26th. Back to yellow now. Here we go. Should be going green here shortly. The look from Flagtronics. So we had a, a car, car number 605 was stopped on the racetrack. That was the one we saw earlier. Yeah, that is the parts uh, farm sponsored Mustang. I don't know the name offhand, but I saw them rebuilding that car after NCM. So I apologize for not knowing your team name offhand. That is my bad. What's, 605 what's is one of the Section 8 cars. Yeah. So they brought two cars out here this weekend. Did Section 8. Both Mustangs, I believe. Now we're back to green here. Is that the same uh, USS Enterprise that says uh, passing side and uh, suicide on the back bumper? Uh, I don't remember. That might be the one. Because I remember Doc saying that a few times. Oh, yeah. I think that was a Miata, though. Oh. But that, you might be right, though. Yeah, they had on the deck lid there, the, the left side of the deck lid, it says passing side. And on the right side, it says suicide. <laughs> Don't try to pass me on that side, dude. I cannot see you over there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's hilarious. I love it. 
And like I said, keeping yourself amused is half the battle. Especially during a 14-hour race. Yep. Marathon whistling by one of those competitors on their left. Now looking for a, a way by the Z car here. And those things are fast, those Nissan Zs. They, uh, the one at uh, Road America that's an automatic is wicked fast. You know that that was my very first track car. It was a 350Z. Nice setup for the uh, second horseshoe here. As he works through turn five. He'll drift over to the right here if he's got uh, the ability to... No, nope, he's got a car over there. Braking hard. The Camaro up ahead is going to slow things down a little bit for the BMW. Looking for a strong exit here. Needs that to hold off the Z. Yeah, so much for that. <laughs> yeah, he's got the legs, doesn't he? Yeah. Camaro kind of held him up. And the protocol so is if you're one of the slower cars, you just hang to the downside there on the left so the faster cars can go around to the top. Heading up to the bus stop here. Pass the Camaro. So we just passed Brew Crew Racing, who's in 28th. So sorry, Doc. I know you're up there watching. Up onto the tri oval with Marathon Motorsports. This is around the areas. We head down to the front straightaway. Doing around 145 miles an hour. Fifty through the trioval here, front straightaway, looking for turn one. Starts braking. Very single file through here. It's very tight. Down to three. Here we go. Everybody slides to the left, so he lines up there. Nice pass down the inside by David. And work his way through this very fast part of the infield. This is the same course that the Rolex 24 runs. Lots of traffic now, looking for a way around the outside. Jeez. There's so much traffic, and he's just rifling through the field here in second place in that BMW. It's kind of like that scene in the uh, second East Ventura when he's uh, running through the jungle with Shikaka in his hands going. <laughs> Clear oh. path. Ooh, got squeezed there. And he's not happy about it. Now he had a good chance to make the run around the outside and uh, just didn't get the room that he needed. Now that threw off his whole run. He was 1.8 seconds behind the leader on that last lap. And this traffic, of course, makes it difficult to keep those fast, consistent laps one right after another. Looking at the bus stop here. Miata sees him come and leaves him a little bit of room. This is one of the more challenging parts of the racetrack because so many cars and it's so wide going into the bus stop and then it gets kind of narrow. It's just like turn one. It goes down from a huge funnel to... Very much so, yeah. It's kind of a one-lane deal. Yeah, and you really want to be, you know, on the preferred race line. But, it's, you know, you go in there with a couple of other competitors uh, that quickly... Uh, you, you lose that option sometimes. Here comes David down the inside. That's my favorite way to cut that corner. Just kind of look for the grass, clip it, get real close down there, and then he comes through. Turn number one. Looking his way down to three here. He 
Jones and all the racetrack and a little bit of the exit from the uh, where the emergency crews come out. Now on to four. Keep it to the left here and break hard for this right-hander. Right, and yes, Steve A., that is a Dodge Dakota out there. He was asking if it was a pickup truck. And Bernie noticed that uh, TLM actually hit his outside rearview mirror on the wall. You can see how it is pushed in now. Yep. Wow. It was so close to that wall, he gave it a little kiss. Well, it reminds me of that Miata race on YouTube where the one guy reached over and knocked the other guy's mirror in. <laughs> the guy's like, what? <sighs> Go back on board with Eddie Vedder now, 19 seconds behind Marathon Motorsports. They did lose a few seconds on that last lap. Marathon, five seconds now behind the leader. Two brothers racing in their Nissan. So you have to wonder if the Z that we were watching earlier was the leader, and that was the car that uh, he almost overtook there. But uh, the Z got back around him there, so that, that was a fight for the lead that we were watching there. Um, and we have a car sitting on pit lane in the fast lane just kind of sitting there, and the hood has come up, and that's a champ car staff looking under there, so... Yeah, this is just uh, just inside pit in there to the right. As Billy said, we can't see any numbers because, like I said, we are close to the track, but ten miles away from the track. It's a big facility, that's for sure. And two brothers racing is listed as a charcoal green, three fifty. Yep, that would be it. As cars starting to slowly trickle in, some of the uh, shorter tanks, as it were. Mm -hmm. And Marathon uh, Motorsports set their fastest time of the day so far at a 218.4 on that last lap. Well, David's out there getting it done. Yeah, he's really, he's really crushing it. Just had that one lap that kind of threw him off and, and broke his momentum to the leader. And then just came back and attacked it on that next lap with that 218. Eddie Vedder still holding the fastest lap time of the day with that 212.955. They just turned a 217 on that last lap, clipping another second off of Marathon Motorsports' uh, lead for second place. And Root Beer says it's hard to reach over uh, so far over using using the wall to adjust the mirror is pure genius <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's creative you know I'll give you that uh, it's, it's not the way I would have adjusted it definitely using all the track and a bit more uh, we got a couple of people that uh, got uh, passing under uh, penalties We've got, uh, that's a really long number. I can't tell if there's a dash. I'm looking across onto Polly's screens and the. We have number 76 and number 262 uh, and number 202, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, so they will be called in. To the sin bin. To the sin bin to pay for their crimes. We're going to take like a. they're also reporting some debris in turn seven. Uh, yes. So with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. 77 laps completed for the Atlanta Speedworks team. Stay with us, though. Lots of racing on tap. We'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you shift directly to a mechanic. Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have, like, a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. 
Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance, exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can brake on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Discovery Parts is a veteran owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. Seriously? Come on. 
You for real? <laughs> dale, dale. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just a cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Tyrac.com Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway. Keeping an eye on Eddie Vedder here. Now nine seconds the gap to Marathon Motorsports. And uh, wow, he is really reeling in this field as he goes by two more competitors here on the high banks here at Daytona. Uh, looks like they got a local yell on the uh, high banks there. Car stop down at the bottom of the apron. Yep, I see it out there. Yeah, they have it at turn six, but uh, we're going to get a full course caution, in fact, for car 76. That is the uh, from the ground up motorsports Honda Prelude. So I don't really see that in my view here, but... Um, it's over in the tri-oval in four here. Oh, okay. So we probably won't see it. Yeah, it looks like he's pulled off track left, even left of the apron there, yeah. Billy. He's actually in the grass area there. Yep. Probably because he knew everybody was going down to the apron under caution anyway, so... As a, an American Airlines flight takes off here... Yeah, we're right near the airport, so we can see the, the planes lifting off. V1. Rotate. And he made me look smart because he was taking off instead of landing. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Mm-hmm. And we're just a few minutes away from the beach, too, so the wife was definitely tempted to come with me. I think I'm going to bring her next year. Come hang out with us, uh, Daytona. So typically, under caution here, this is what happened. You can see the car stranded there on the left side. He's actually still on the asphalt. That apron's pretty wide. As the cars tend to cycle around on the apron when we're under caution here. Yeah, you have to bring the wife next time. She'll love uh, Daytona. Beautiful. Yeah, we couldn't quite get it worked out so that she doesn't just sit in the hotel. I wanted yeah. to bring her sister, and um, we just couldn't get it worked out. Um, next year, I think we're going we're gonna to try and do that. Is the Hee Haw Racing uh, pickup truck pulls into the pits and is, uh, right behind them I believe is Sharky 2 with their little shark fin on the top there lots of customers coming into the pits for their five minute stops we're about an hour and 40 in so it's a little early if you're trying to hit the two hour mark, but we've had a ton of purple 35. So if, if the purple 35 came out while you were on a kind of an advantageous place on track to get in the pit um, lane, I'd probably take the opportunity as well. Yep. Hi, Roll Kimberly. And... Welcome to the broadcast. Hey, Kimberly's been on with us before. A regular listener, huh? A watcher. We're so sorry. <laughs> right? Our condolences to both you and your family. Yeah. Well, I was a regular viewer, and then <laughs> look at me now. And we now see what happened to Billy. <laughs> yeah. Re, 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 re. The degeneration. <laughs> yeah. Contamination. 
as they have picked up said car that was stopped in for and are towing him back to either the paddock or pit lane. Yeah, Erwin, it's a special place. I mean, uh, we're staying at a hotel across the street from the racetrack, and uh, it's just the coolest thing. It really is. The palm trees, a big bridge that comes over from the track. It says uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. It's just really cool. Uh, Prefect racing is coming in. And I believe the leader's Nissan 350Z has come in also. Yes, he has. So lots of people trying to take advantage of this. Yeah, it's interesting. As Tiffany pointed out, it's it's not really in the pit window as far as trying to hit those those two hour you know, windows. Um, and that's really the goal of most of these teams, isn't it, Tiffany, to try to get two hours out of a load of fuel because of right. the way the champ car rules are structured. As both Salem's cars made a really late dive in. Yeah, and an even hour race like this, it really is advantageous typically to try to get full two hours because the driver stints are two hours. So you kind of want to do that driver change and fuel at the same time um, and not have to risk coming in to just do a driver change if you had fuel, et cetera, or not. Um, but we've had a lot of purple 35s and this is a big racetrack. So with going more the purple 35 format, um, we kind of get it back green a little quicker than we would, quite a bit quicker than we would if we had to go full course with a, um, pace car so if the purple 35 or the yellow comes out and you're say going into turn one two three four on the infield it's probably not going to be that great if you get 35 miles an hour go all the way around the track to be able to come pit in but if you find yourself near the pit in when it comes out then that might be a good time to go ahead and duck in and roll your dice the other way so as many as we've had we'll probably have some more yep um, currently Will Nonamaker and Wayne Nonamaker getting into mustard and ketchup respectively. Will into ketchup and, uh, Wayne into, uh, mustard. So there's your driver change update from us. From the same ones. Yep. Yeah. See if anybody else sends me any driver change updates. So it's 965, the car that stopped off track. That's Treasure Coast Miata. They're usually kind of quick, from what I remember. Oh, yeah. I've heard of them a few times. That's, that's yeah. all I know that. <laughs> Is we're back to yellow now? Yeah, splitting the strategy. One just got sent back out, and the other is getting full. So, interesting. Ooh. Team Infinity here. Infinity's been doing really well. Um, they're up to uh, fourth now. They did not choose to take a pit um, stop during that last uh, Purple 35, so sitting in fourth place, but they'll need to take one by the time we hit the two hour mark. Two hours into the race. But it looks like they're trying to stick to their two-hour windows 
And, and the reason to do that is if you go, if you come in under two hours, the timing ends up happening so that you end up with an extra pit stop um, towards the end of the race than the other teams would have. But if those pit stops happen under purple 35, as opposed to a green flag condition, uh, mm -hmm. that can make all the difference. As Scrappy Doo has pulled into the pits, which if you want to say is team sailing quote unquote junior yes we could go that far still friendly with them so like a sister team ish yes ish <laughs> <laughs> so with that last round of pit stops we've got Eddie Vedder in the lead now and the mustard car is now pulling out of the pits, slowly down the pit lane at 25 miles per hour. Which I the can tell you. Long pit lane. Yes. Which I can tell you in uh, I racing is absolutely painful in the Mustang. Because. I think Doc used to say curvature of the earth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the end of the pit limiter is like just after the little squiggle over there so you, in i racing so if you don't have your pit limiter set it is brutal trying to keep it under 45 trust me i did several black flag stops in a row before <laughs> that so, Kimberly, I see Avenue Garage in 34th spot. Looks like D-Class led by Eddie Vetter now, the overall leader. EC being led by Highmark Racing there in second place overall. A-Class being led by Madwag, their third overall. And then we have uh, the first C-Class car quite a ways down there, Hong North there in eighth place. And then B-Class, the first B-Class car that I see. Looks like Sled Bull Racing in 16th. And then uh, if I look further down for an F-Class car, I see uh, MR, uh, M2R. This throws me off a little bit. <laughs> M2R, their 1990 Mazda Miata. If you had said the other way, I would have made sure to mute you so that, you know, Certain individuals that uh, yeah <laughs> work. Yeah, you're welcome, Kimberly. Yeah, you can follow your favorite team at Race Hero Dio as well. I'll keep an eye on them. You know, we don't talk about yellow cars, and we don't talk about the <laughs> We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> That's what I was going for. There's there's certain names you don't say three times in a row where they will appear. Yes. <laughs> Although he did let me into the uh, locked uh, race operations store, so I cannot. Well, it's because I told him to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Probably didn't know it was you. I just told him to go open the door. <laughs> I got talent coming in. and Maybe he would, maybe he would have shut the door on you if he would have known. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Left it locked. You, did you jam your foot in the doorway as soon as you opened it? To yes. Keep that from happening? <laughs> so you've learned. You've learned you got it. There's certain things you need to do. So Eddie Vetter leading over th after 33 laps, uh, 49 seconds the gap as we go back to Indeed. caution again. You see the yellow just got thrown. Uh, I don't see anything, but that doesn't mean anything. Mm -mm. We've got a couple of cars uh, serving and passing under yellow. Uh, the 348 of uh, Car Nation Racing, that's a Mustang, and the 294 of Balthazar Motorworks, that's a BMW. And looks like another one is the 473 of Ros Rossmar Racing, all going to be serving and passing under yellow, drive three penalty. But it actually may work out really well for them if they've already been called in, because normally you serve those under green flag conditions. However, if they call you in, 
and then it goes into a yellow or a purple 35 that kind of helps you out a little bit if the luck falls your way yeah they won't send you back out and make you come back in to serve the penalty later if they've already called you in so well i believe one of them is in counseling right now i couldn't okay. tell Tiffany, shouldn't you be here for that? Um, for counseling? Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Who's working a black flag today? You know, yep, I can't see. No. Well, I think it's Jackie. Okay. Because she's not up here with us. We're back to green just that fast. That was quick. Yeah. Jimmy works black flag sometimes too. You'd rather have the talk with Jimmy. If you make Jackie mad though, the talk can go a long time. I mean, I've heard. The the uh I believe Eddie Vetter is in the pits. Uh yeah, looks like they've come in. And so unfortunately, pitting at the worst moment, right as we go back to green. Kind of got uh, suckered in from that caution. Probably thought, okay, we're in our window. Let's sneak yeah. in. And then we went right back to green. And that's kind of what happened to moment. Ketchup, because they have stopped also. But too Aim late for that Tango now. Foxtrot. Looks like they've come in to do that, too. So that's going to be very advantageous for them. Of course, the whole rest of the field would prefer a better have to do their stop under green. Yes. That might be the only way they can catch them. Like, from here till eternity. Right. <laughs> Madwag is up to third place in that Miata. An A-class Miata. Wouldn't think this would be a track that would favor a Miata. Well, that's actually second place. Correction, because uh, second is an EC car. So that's second place with your first place car in the pits. Doing their five minute pit stop under green conditions. So in the lead, essentially. If not, it, it shortly. Go Madwag. And the uh, one of the old Mustangs is testing his headlights on the uh, run down to the start finish line. A little early for that. You have to have him on at 6 p.m., but never hurts to uh, test it out and make sure your systems work, I guess, right? Right, right. You don't think he was trying to let somebody know to get out of his way or anything? No, there was no one there. <laughs> okay. Unless he's was... just playing with the buttons, yeah. you know? Sometimes, you know, it's fun to play with the buttons and just see, oh, what's this one do? What's that one do? No? Yeah, fun to play with the <laughs> buttons. This, yeah. uh, when you, you, you know, you're on the Daytona tri-oval part and you're bored out of your mind. <laughs> yeah. Some of us get paid good money to push buttons all day long. <laughs> This is a very good point. I'll take what I can get. I'll just anything to keep my phony baloney job. I like it. <laughs> just wondering. I don't know the team Infinity has actually come in yet. They hadn't earlier. So. Let's see. He's, no, uh, I'm still showing them they have that they haven't. And Hee Ha Racing is currently telling everybody they are turning to the left. So they're going behind the wall? No. They're they got their blinker on? Yes. Oh. <laughs> He's going around the world to the left. Got it. <laughs> and Infinity stays out. So they're planning on taking it to the whole, you know. Absolute limit. The start finish line here. The flagger stands just off to the left there, but difficult to see with the distance. But it's the black uh, protrusion hanging out over the fencing there. With the white uh, corner worker up at the top, you'll see him move slightly occasionally. Yeah, he's kind of like a dot. <laughs> 
Yeah, usually they put our logo up there. It's uh, actually that black portion's all LED. And they'll have our Champ Car logo up there as we move into the evening hours. So we're here for a 14-hour race this evening. Got a car straight way off to the right there. Uh, uh, yeah, he's... He just went back underneath us there, but uh, you can see some other cars really floating through the bus stop there. Carrying great speed. Good job. Uh, why don't you try to find the hole there, sir? Or madam? That way we can continue with the green flag. And we had a car that went not only down to the apron, but all the way down uh, in off the racetrack there, and now they've come back on. Yes, they've remotivated the car. There you go. Or somewhat remotivated the car. Yeah, it looks like he's up to speed. You just need his GPS, you know, directions. Those start working again. So what turn am I supposed to make here? Right, left? Right. Is the next one a left? <laughs> <laughs> a little more left? Three lefts in a row. That can't be right. <laughs> Eddie Vetter emerges from the pits. Let's see what that's going to do for them. Wow, that dropped them all the way to ninth. Let's see if they stay there once they cross start finish, but I mean, they have the pace to make that up. Yes, they do. They are a very, very quick car. As more people have started to drop towards the pit lane, they have a tendency for some reason not to follow the NASCAR line into the pit lane and just go below the white line. But what am I to say? So what are they doing? They're dropping. There's that extra runoff before the yeah. pit lane and they're dropping below the white line to I guess try to cut off a few more inches of slow oh, okay. but they still have to stop at the timing stand to get to the timer anyway right. so either way you're not really gaining much time doing that right. So the 348 of Carnation Racing um, had a spin and continue. Also the uh, 134 of RKR, also it's an EC car, Pontiac Firebird. They had a uh, spin and continue, both in turn five, back you, to back. So I'm not sure if there's some kind of fluid on the yeah. track over there, or they got together, or yeah. influence. You know, some people can be a bad influence. You know, for watching and that one. Great song, by the way. B-52s. Bad Influence. That was my first concert when I was a kid. The B-52s? Yes. In Canada's oh, wow. Wonderland. I'm not telling you mine. Mine's embarrassing. It's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> I was watching the, um, have y'all seen the movie The Dirt? They just came out on Netflix? Nope. It's the story of uh, Motley Crue. Mm. It was rather entertaining. I always heard they were a rowdy bunch, but... Yes. The uh, documentary kind of goes into some of that, yeah. Uh, nice hearing the old songs again. As the Infinity car has finally pulled into the pits to get his timer. You can always um, tell that car because it has a huge shark fin on the top of it. And the funny thing is, he drives that around as a regular car. So you can watch him on Facebook and he will have his car, his race car out there in rainstorms getting soaked in Florida rain. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah. Going through the drive-thru, getting a coffee. Yeah. You know? 
great. I did a I did a video with him. Um, I put together with him and Bill. It just it was fun. It's really fun. Just drives that car around. <laughs> He's very proud of it. As he should be. A multi-winning car. Yep. The uh, 981 of Atlanta Speedworks is um, got a black flag for passing under yellow. Um, also, the 775 of Fing Dog has a passing under yellow penalty to serve. And both of let's see, Fing Dog was, yeah, they are in tenth place. So that's going to hurt. That'll pull him out of the top 10. Also going to see where the 981 is. The um, other, the 718 of Atlanta Speedworks is up in eighth place. And the 981 is in 15th. So that'll hurt that too. Like premium dudes moved up to 11. No, showing in 13th now. They the will sit. Moved around. Two minutes in the box, and they will feel ashamed. Yes. To quote okay. uh, Slapshot, one of the greatest Eddie shown in 16th now. hockey movies ever. <laughs> I watched the um, Smokey and the Bandit last night. I had Another not seen that movie, movie in, I don't know, a century it felt like. <laughs> it's very cute. Unless maybe you're a police officer and you probably didn't, you know, approve of <laughs> some of it, but it was hilarious. Fred meet frog. Frog meet Fred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're back under full course yellow. Oh, that's going to help the cars that are in the pits currently doing their stop. Yep. Always have to nice to have a little luck thrown your way, or the car's currently uh, serving a black flag. That'll help them too, potentially. Looks like Valerian Steel is also doing their pit stop. Let's see, we had. Let's see, I had some updates on car change, driver changes too. Let's see what we got. The IFW uh, car. Um, let me see what the. That's 825. Uh, Jason Beck is going into that car or has gone into that car. So Paulie's doing math. <laughs> 85. That's a Pontiac Firebird. I always have to follow the Firebirds a little bit, you know, because I had one of those in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a terrible car, but <laughs> I loved it. Um. I always remember the Firebirds from the uh, the good old uh, um, pre Grand Am days. From... Oh yeah, was that the like Firehawk series? Fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike Bachman I racing, used to race I believe. Hmm? Mike Bachman racing, I believe. We are going to take another commercial break here, folks, and be back in just a few minutes. One hundred and seventeen laps turned so far for the Atlanta Speedworks team. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you shift directly to a mechanic. Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have like a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. 
Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Discovery Parts is a veteran owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. Seriously? You for real? <laughs> dolly, dolly. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just a cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. Working lap 40 here at Daytona International Speedway. 
Still under caution here. It looks like one of the Atlanta Speedworks cars was flagged in for passing under caution. So, and the 775 as well was flagged in for passing under caution. I do not see what this caution is for. You know, we can go over to the uh, marching ants and see if we can see anything there, but not really. Eh, not sure what right, probably right in front of us, but I don't know. It's back to yellow, so. Back to caution. That's why we don't see anything, because okay. there isn't anything there. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's on the flatbed uh, heading. It's a Miata. No, that's definitely not a Miata. I cannot tell what it is. It's a little black car. Yes. A long, long way away, and we have a very slow car going into the horseshoe. He's going to get gobbled up real shortly. There he goes. Now he's motivating himself to go faster. And we've got some two cars going real What? Hey, hey. Guys, it's under green. Go! <laughs> You're gonna get killed. And there's a pile of cars going into turn three there. And uh, they really need to pick up the pace. You can see the Marathon Motorsports car. Um, really had to check up there to keep from running into some cars. There's so many cars in that area there. Yeah, there's one that's still not motivated to move. He's very underpowered. And he should have just kind of went to the runoff at the International Hershey, but he did not. And he has kind of parked it just after the kink there, which is kind of not a good spot because, we, as we saw earlier, um, someone went sliding across there because of oil. So that is definitely not a good spot, and we're probably going to go back to caution. So what was it you were telling me uh, during the commercial break, Billy, about you were wa you'd watch auto racing and horse or dog racing so back when i was oh god five six seven years old back before they built this huge grandstand here at daytona they used to have an upper section of the grandstand and it ended at a certain point not as far as it does now yeah. and there used to be a dog track right below the grandstand so you used to be able to watch the Rolex 24 or whatever, you know, practice or whatever it was, and the dog race at the same time. <laughs> so, you know. It's cool. You got you got two things at once. It was a double admission, but you didn't pay for the one. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there you can see the Flagtronics activating, telling the driver to slow down a little bit. They need to be uh, traveling no faster than 35 miles an hour. And they will go get that. And he's motivated himself to move a little bit, apparently. But I, have, where he went, I don't know. I'm hopefully behind the wall. <sighs> but... You never know with some of these racing drivers. They're, 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 we're a different breed, I should say. Oh, that's a nice way of saying we're special. <laughs> yes, we're we're definitely a different breed. Mm -hmm. Got a few updates on some driver changes. So uh, Benson Young is now out of the Momo Champ car, and Andre, Andre, I, I think that's it, Andres, uh, mm, Tostas. Tostas? Let's go with Tostas. Anyway, the funny part is that um, Ben said that they normally pit at the end of pit lane. So when he came in, this time they are not. They're pitting like the third stall in. He went right past his uh, pit, pit area, mm. past it, and had to go, oh, I could go back out on the track and make a few more laps and then come back in. So uh, a little embarrassing on that, but like, you know, Made it work. Don't. I'm glad that didn't just happen to you know, some random people. Or, or. 
Uh, in the Mad Fast car, that's 686. It should be Sam Collier in the car now. That's my good buddy from Montgomery. Fellow redhead daredevil. Um, in the Eddie Vedder car, we should have Dave Pesky in the car by now. Dave Pesky. All right. Yeah. Maybe. And then the Silver, Silver Bullet Racing, if I can get it out of my mouth there. Uh, that's the number 11 car. Uh, Mark Quivelli is out and Stone Quivelli is in. So I'm guessing maybe a father-son duo or brothers or something like that. Definitely well, related. He, uh, he shouldn't be driving any Vetter. He should be driving a pesky Miata. Right? <laughs> he should. And they are pesky. So giving you a rundown here, the, there's been quite a change here up front. Atlanta Speedworks actually leading the race now. In the number 718, over Wilson Daly Racing in four in second. <laughs> There's some EC cars up there throwing me for a loop. So Wilson Daly in second place, and then we've got uh, behind them Fing Dog. Then it's Premium Dudes, Marathon Motorsports, Mad Wag, MBM Performance, Team Infinity, Valerian Steel. Looking like that's um, and Eddie Vetter. Looks like your top ten. Eddie Vetter. Slipped all the way down to 14th with, if you include the C, the uh, EC cars. And uh, Team Infinity overtaking Eddie Vedder now for the lead of D-Class here at Daytona. After that last round of pit stops, the first round. And still have cars trickling into the pits. But obviously they are not in their two-hour, you know. Yeah, we're over the two-hour mark now. So... They These will be not be the first alternative schedule. Yes. In the Mad Wag car, the Mad Wives and Girlfriends, number 251, uh, that should be Cole in the car now. Mad Fast, that's uh, Sam Collier in the car now. So we're under caution here at Daytona International Speedway. Just the waiting for the... the yeah, the opposite of fast, waiting for the track to be cleared so we can head back to racing. There's a fundraising effort being done right now on the broadcast. You'll hear me calling out the laps turned by the Atlanta Speedworks team. And that's for the CAC uh, of Smith County, country, excuse me, CAC of Smith Country Works, with, uh, and they work with children who have either been abused or involved in violent crimes and walks with them step by step through the judicial system from pre-trial to advocating for these victims during trial and then providing post-trial counseling and rehabilitation services as well as medical services. So if you'd like to become involved in uh, helping out with that effort, what we're do what you could do is go to this website CAC Spring Luncheon powered by GiveSmart that web page and um, and you can become uh, you can be you can pledge to sponsor the Atlanta Speedworks team by the number of laps they turn here today and before that last commercial break they were at 117 laps turned and so each half hour I'll go through and add them up and let you know how many laps they've turned so far and then we'll see what they uh, come up with here at the end of the day As the shark car surprisingly stayed out on the high bank there instead of going down on the apron, but, you know. Whatever works. Yeah, exactly. 220, 221. Whatever works. So in the um, Brick City Racing um, Miata, that's number 241, Doc Martin is behind the wheel now. And in the MDR, that's number 831, um, Ed Lubber is now behind the wheel. Some of these sound like stage names to me. I know, right? <laughs> as the green flag comes back out, as the cars slowly roar back up to life. We got some debris down by uh, 
the tri oval here by the start finish stand. So it's down on the yellow lines, but you know. So don't try to cut down on the bottom if you're out there. And we recommend uh, faster traffic staying up high and a little slower traffic staying a little lower. And it just makes traffic flow a lot better. Mm-hmm. Like I said, this is not uh, a boxster track, even though other t boxster teams are making us look. Well, Atlanta Speedworks is really on the roll. They just, you know, they've been winning and they've got the momentum in their direction. So, and they're, you know, racing for charity today. So, yeah. Yeah, racing gods are tipping their hat to them, I believe. For now. For now. Bing Dog is all also up there. Yep. Up to fourth now. I think we're probably trying to make sure that uh, our equipment makes it to the end, so. That's always important. To finish first, first you must finish. Correct. Yeah, that piece of debris is down right about the uh, breaking marker for uh, turn one, just after the Geico sign. So there's one breaking marker, then the second one, and that's right where that debris is. So Atlanta Speedworks uh, holding the lead of this race about 30 seconds over Wilson Daily Racing. Fing Dog in third. We got some EC cars in there. Premium Dudes in fourth. Marathon Motorsports in fifth. Go Premium Dudes! <laughs> Ooh, that was my pick. Your pick is doing well. Yeah. I like it's... that they call their car Ferrari Red. Yeah. It, it's still <laughs> early though. It's still early. He's got a, I noticed today, he's got cables that um, attach to his hood pins, and the cables are bolted to the fenders, so they you can't lose those hood pins. Excellent. <laughs> you can pull them out, but you're not losing them, man. They're, they're bolted in. Like you go, man. Wilson Daly having a good race of it there. In second place, trying to catch up with Atlanta Speedworks. So now suddenly three E-class, C-class cars, rather, and uh, four or five. Wow. The top five cars are suddenly all C-class cars. The it's complexion of the race it? has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. With Team Infinity leading the race. And uh, Eddie Vedder turning a 226 on that last lap. I'm going to expand that category, but it looks like they've, uh, they've just had a, this is just their second lap out. But that lap time is quite a bit lower than what they've been running earlier. Quite a bit higher. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What you yeah. said. <laughs> it's okay, Paul. I, I'm here to, I'm here to say ooh. every, ooh. It's like a little bit of a bump there on the Lexus. We saw some shutter. I don't know if that was from the fender striking the quarter or the bumper or if it was just from rolling over those rumble strips there on the inside what do you think i don't know uh, maybe just camera shaking in general let's see if we uh caught it on the on the replay it's right here i'm just not sure the lexus saw Yo, know, there was definitely contact there. I'm not sure the Lexus saw him coming down the inside in the BMW. Yeah, it looks like Wilson a little Daly touch and go. Trying to work his way around now on the outside here. Again, this 
It's our second place car right now, the Wilson Daily BMW. This is a camera that they've provided, so don't have any audio on this, but uh, it's a nice, uh, nice picture there. The gap. And he said, uh, uh, speaking of documentaries, make sure to watch the line heart mm. about Dan Wilden. I remember watching them race back in the day. I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen that. I actually hadn't heard of it. Yep. Is uh, the mustard car passes somebody through the bus stop? Working their way up through the field as best they can. Prefect in 24th right now. Atlanta Speedworks number 981 now in 18th place after serving that uh, penalty. That set them back a little bit. Madwag there in 11th. Marathon Motorsports now down to 9th place. So quite a change up at the front of the field. Team Infinity with that 221. And Eddie Vetter now down to 15th. Uh, they just turned a 225 on that last lap. So not at the pace where they were with the uh, previous driver. Right. And that might be just, to, you know, getting used to the track. Uh, Hong North just sits there. So it just uh, comes into the pit, rather, there in 29th. But uh, all of the teams ahead of 85th with Sharky are on the racetrack right now. And that's that's the first car that's not turning laps. Open throttle in 86th down to 93rd. Uh, CLS Motorsports, they're all out there. So still roughly 100 cars turning laps out here at Daytona International. It is a very, very busy place. Uh, in the number 985, that's uh, Bent Over Racing. <clears throat> in their C-Class BMW, that's Matt behind the wheel now after their last driver change. got your typical traffic jam and turn uh, NASCAR 3 where they're trying to go three wide <laughs> so you know trying to do the same thing as the NASCAR boys is it working out for them yeah okay <laughs> always good until it doesn't work out yeah they're, until it's not <laughs> yeah they're they're playing somewhat nicely out there okay I'll give them somewhat, because you know you never know when somebody's gonna do something <laughs> that you don't expect. Right. Uh, the ketchup car is up to twenty eighth, and mustard. I have no idea where they went. Oh, they're up to fourteenth. So they're one right in front of the. Uh, Eddie Vetter car. Oh yeah, they're working their way up. <laughs> they they started at the, uh, mustard started at the back of the pack. They're up ninety five spots to fourteenth. Uh it's crazy good. Ketchup yeah. is up eighty two spots in twenty eighth. So. Oh, we got a car stopped, looks like, over at the bus stop. Driver's right, way off to the right. And it looks like he's going again. But uh, as we were following on board with the TLM car, just went by them like they were stopped out there. There's a second place, Wilson Daly, 28 seconds behind the Atlanta Speedworks. Porsche Boxster leading this race. So we're going to take another commercial break. Be back in a few. 127 laps turned so far by the Atlanta Works, Works uh, Atlanta Speedworks team. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome to TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979. With our unmatched selection of branded products, finding what fits your vehicle and is right for you and how and where you drive has never been easier. Through helpful online shopping tools that include our professional hands-on reviews done at the introduction of a tire and consumer reviews that give real-world feedback over the life of the tire, you can make the right tire choice and find exactly what you need. And if you prefer to talk to someone, our tire testers, our sales team, are available on the phone. And that's how we get you the right tire for you and your vehicle for where and how you drive. At AutoZone, you get what you need when you need it. Got a today job? Pick it up free same day at your local AutoZone. More of a tomorrow project? Order as late as 10 p.m. with free next day delivery. Getting the job done just got easier. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. 
and it's been a fantastic season and man that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors for more information go to frozenrotors.com sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming local recording three cameras with picture in picture flag status and much much more stop playing with multiple solutions sentinel handles it all including timing and scoring vehicle data graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Bring on the frozen tundra. The grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Welcome back to the TireRack.com Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway. Paul Veltzen with Tiffany Alexander and Billy Salem calling the race for you this weekend. And uh, Billy, you just noticed that Z car yep. that was killing it this morning is back in the pits. Back in the pits. Oh, no. Yep, that's never that's never a good sign. Very hard to be competitive while your car sits in the pits. And I'm seeing the Flagtronics unit system I have here showing full course caution. Yep. Again. We went back to green while we were on commercial break. Yeah, the car and then back now. Looks like to... they're up against the wall, Billy? Yes. Or close that, that, to it there. No, that's an impact. It's the hood is. Uh, it's kind of crumpled. Yes. That's in uh, the bus stop, I believe, because Lake Lloyd is right back behind there. Yeah, they're shown over in turn seven here, according to the race logs. So that would be somewhere. Let's see here. It's probably to our. Well, I. Th so, seven, I believe, is the bus stop. Or is that. That might actually be kind of on the straightaway there. I don't know. Yeah, because there's a when you come out of six, there's a bend to the left, and then you go down to the bus stop. So it's further up track here. It's, I think it's going to be from our view here. It's further out, though. It might be he's up against the wall right where that corner worker is right at the bus stop. So you know how you the first section... But mm. you, we can't see it because the camera doesn't go far enough. See, yeah, there's the uh, workers going into. Yep. So if we go to the bus stop scene, you can see it. They're kind of, like you said, they're sort of at the exit maybe of the bus stop somewhere. Entrance. Up against that wall, yeah. That's a spot where um, the cars frequently would visit that area, Billy, because they would come into the bus stop, make contact with somebody, get twisted up, come in there a little too fast, and they can't make that corner, and then they stick... They, they just uh, it it flips yep. yeah, it, uh, yeah the margin for error gets really small when you go in there quick and they just recently paved that too but there's still not a lot of room there yeah they, so. they used to have grass in there like you said and that just kind of aggravated it because once you got to the grass you're done for there's no way you're not going to hit that wall and um so fortunately, they've asphalted that, and now it's a little bit, uh, you get a little bit more time to get the car slowed down before you get to the wall. Or attempt. They're reporting that's the number 11 of Silver Bullet Racing, it's one of our EC BMWs. Yeah, that's a tricky corner. It, it happens frequently that um, they'll just, uh, the car will come around on them and they end up getting into that wall over there. Looks like they're going to put on the flatbed, which means it might be leaking something now after that hit. So they don't want to get any fluids dropped on the track or anything like that, so they'll put it on a flatbed and 
pick it up that way. So if you're just tuning in, welcome everyone. It's the Tyrac.com Champ Car Endurance Series 14-hour endurance road race at Daytona International. Uh, we are, this is the same track configuration as the Rolex 24 runs. And almost the same track configuration as the NASCAR ran, but they had an extra little jaw tooth down by just after Ford there. NASCAR 4. Does NASCAR run the bus stop? Yes, they did. Okay. They have two kind of places yes. to slow them down. Yes. I think that on the uh, on Wiki, they show that second bus stop between 4 and the trial, the start finish is part of the MotoGP uh, track. That's how they have it labeled. You can see the uh, the different asphalt out there that they uh, put out there for said chicane and the painted line also, but I still haven't picked up that debris by the uh, start finish though. It's down on the apron though, so it mm -hmm. has moved. Can't quite see it there. We have had a lot of code thirty fives. Mm-hmm. Cars just becoming unmotivated or Visiting things that they should not visit. Right. And we started out, it seemed like we were doing pretty well there, but we're, we're definitely in that 1 to 1.5 per half hour type thing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I wonder how, you know, how much this really gets drivers out of their zone and, you know slowing down and speeding back up and then slowing back down um i mean i think some some people are probably better at getting back in the zone um sometimes that's a struggle though i know i'll be in the ozone by the uh, end of this race <laughs> <laughs> like edit the wheel there one of the few people that can say that uh not only one of the few people that can say they've raced at daytona international speedway but very few people have won a race here at daytona and ed is one of those and very few people that can say he won a race at daytona and then drive the car back home <laughs> yeah he's a native to florida here Yeah, the one time I, like I said earlier, he was uh, picking up tires or something from uh, somewhere and was driving in a Florida rain with this car. And I'm like, you're nuts. Because <laughs> Florida rain is definitely not rain like anywhere else. I think the further south you get, you know, the bigger the raindrops get. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> There's the Marathon Motorsport, Motorsports, or Mar Motor Coach. Boy, I can't even speak today. Motor Coach, TLM racing team going by. That, that's why you brought me along. <laughs> yeah, must be that three hours I had. No, I'll sleep last night. No, it can't be that. Yeah, I'm sure uh, that helped. <laughs> I woke up promptly at uh, 128, and I've been doing great ever since. Nice. You're fine. <laughs> Somebody's going to be on the struggle bus by the end of this race. Uh, yeah, sounds like I'm already us. there. Yeah. <laughs> all I believe this is um, the Sentinel team. I believe this is part, let me see. Section 8. Yeah, it looks like Mustang. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that was the team that had that uh, the Burgundy Mustang that got hit um, the last time we did a show there at NCM. Mm, and so yeah. this is one of their other cars here. Back to caution at yeah. Daytona. Car's picking up speed now. See that Flagtronics blinking yellow. And now we're going back to green, as expected. Yay. A little bit of Racing. a delay there, but he rolls up onto the high banks there and drops the hammer as we go back to green. Wilson Daly, the team again, uh, doing really well today. Up at the front of the pack uh, in third place now. Fing Dog has moved into second past Wilson Daly. So it's Atlanta Speedworks, Fing Dog, Wilson Daly, Premium Dudes, Team Infinity, Marathon Motorsports, MBM, Madwag, Team Salem Mustard and Valerian Steel. Looks like the top 10 there. Eddie Vedder just behind them by about a minute and four seconds. So they've really dropped back quite a bit. They could stay back there. <laughs> Not going to bother you too much? No. Okay. If they would like to drop behind catch, uh, Ketchup also, that'd be wunderbar. <laughs> Quote the German. Yeah, yeah catch up is sitting back in 25th. Uh, minus a few EC cards, but of course they're up 85 spots to 25th. But well, you know, like I said, you know, this Mustang in front of us it looks like is turning to the right. At least they're polite and signaling which way they're going to go. And there's one of the Salins cars there. As one of the other BMWs gets really wide at the exit there. Just a gaggle of cars coming into the bus stop. Mm -hmm. Rush hour traffic worth. <laughs> yep. And open throttle racing, the number 63 continuing to fall through the field, shown in the pits, as well as two brothers racing who actually led the race earlier, still uh, tumbling through the field shown uh, in the pits. I don't actually see them anymore, Billy. I think they may have taken that machine behind the wall as Kobe race, Racing now passes the Z car for 40th place. Yeah. Well, like, I, like we said, this track is not forgiving on any vehicle. It happens to the best of us. Look, look, look at last year. Uh, both our cars had issues. Good, bad, the ugly didn't make it. So. I think the fellows bumped the uh, camera in the hee haw Dodge Dakota, so we lost that feed. We'll try to refresh that, but I don't think we're going to get it. Dakota is shown not turning laps right now. Oh. So it wouldn't matter much. There wasn't a lot of room in there, you know. It's not the extended cab. It's just a regular cab. Actually getting it onto the roll bar was difficult because it was pretty close to the back glass. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of room for the team to get in there and, you know, work on cool boxes and things like that. I said, just try not to bump it if you can, but... <laughs> They set it far far in on the bar to try and keep it away from the window, but, you know, I saw them bump into it. Oops. Not much room in there. Yeah. Now look at turn six here. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like Section 8 back out onto the racetrack in that Mustang. A quick check of the audio here. No audio on this feed. And go check in on Marathon Motorsports. They were really doing well, hanging in second place there. And then uh, we saw they had a, a little bit of contact with the wall and pushed that mirror in. It having some trouble getting by, and then looks like they've uh, straightened it out. Yep. Is it missing a second? It looks like it's uh, missing the glass or it's taped up or something. That's possible. It, it The glass is still there. So the 806 of Continental Motorsports um, and their C-Class BMW, um, they're getting a black flag for parts falling off the car. So probably a meatball um, flag. Oh. And so I don't know which parts they are, but... For those that don't know what the meatball flag is, that is a black flag with a big red orange dot in the middle telling you, you your car is... We don't like your car, the track is saying. Yeah, that they have some kind of issue with your car. Oof. Oh, there's so much traffic here, and you slow down so quickly to go into one, and then you have the, uh, the Lexus of Prefect racing to the right there as Marathon whistles through. Uh, there's, there's the, the Enterprise. Enterprise. I and thought it was the Dakota, but it was not. And there's uh, the Shark Car of Team Infinity ahead. As the BMW is hunting down all of these cars up in front. We're rushing through four here. Trying to get the pass done. Looks like he gets it done as he heads into this U-turn. Towards turn six. He'll be back on the oval again. Kind of mid-track and it heads down to the inside. Trying to get by the Z car and... Follow the Mustang through. Back up onto the oval here. The transition onto the oval there is not smooth. It's kind of like a large gap in the track. It drops down a little bit before you transition up onto the banking. Prefect Racing must have got the better of the run coming off of six as they go by the BMW of Marathon Motorsports TLM Racing now breaking for the bus stop. Trying to get on the throttle soon. Get a good run and the Pontiac's just a little bit in the way if that's the Pontiac. Eh. You'll have that. Steps to the right. Gets around the Pontiac. Coming through the trioval here to the start-finish line to start another lap here at Daytona International Speedway. The leader working lap 53. Still several teams turning their fastest whoa, whoa, lap whoa, times whoa. of the day. Oh, whoa, he's whoa, wide, whoa. but he gathers it up. Yeah. Fortunately, there's some runoff room over there at the ex at the uh, entry and exit of one. And he looks like he, like I said, he's getting his money's worth today, using all the racetrack and then some. Yeah, that that that's not a fun ride. Well, Salen slips down the inside when they pull off to the left there to set up for that uh, clipping point to the inside and opened up the door for the Porsche to come through. And that was just an invitation for the Salem's Porsche to come down the inside and make the pass. You can hear the tires squealing in protest. Yeah, rolling the throttle in here, heading towards six. He's lucky there's not the grass that used to be out there because he would have gone for a ride and that would not have been a fun ending. And we're going to yellow. Oh. It's that time of the race again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Maybe okay, it's more like 20 minutes. minutes. <laughs> Folks,
Full course caution uh, for the racetrack here. So Moa Champ is uh, out there driving in their backup car, a uh, when they borrowed from Rat Hole Racing, and last lap they set their fastest time of the day so far with their second driver in, Andre, I believe is his name. IFW uh, Motorsports just set their fastest time of the day so far with a 2.23, and then Infinite Loop Racing set their fastest time of the day. So uh, these second uh, stint drivers are uh, getting up to pace and then uh, setting new paces for their team. And I'm looking at the standings, and I did not see Vetter in the, uh, the top part there. Uh, Eddie Vetter has dropped to 14th place. Hmm. Interesting. The, uh, the, the pace of the car is just not what it was earlier this morning right now, so... Well... Daytona will get you out of that. Um, I don't really see where the incident is. It's not in the bus stop. The Lemon Chicane. Oh, it's right in front of us. It's uh, right where that uh, poncho is, I believe. Right across. Oh, yeah. If they coming out of three, there's a car parked driver's left. Just pulled yeah, over into the, the grass there. Oh, yeah. The, uh, RKR Pontiac Firebird. Yeah, it looks like they've marked it as 134 as the car that's uh, stranded out there. It might be the same car we just saw uh, Marathon trying to get by. And, yeah. I don't know. Doesn't look like a contact thing. Looks like they just pulled off the side of the racetrack. And they might have been in the grass, actually. But they are flat towing him, um, so it must not be a, a leaking situation with a flatbed uh, truck just behind them. So, decide to hook him up on the rope and bring him back. And Tiffany, what's the number one rule when being towed by a tow strap? Keep the tow strap taut. Keep it taut. Taut. Not too taut, but not too not loose. Not too taut, <laughs> right? Which is harder than it sounds. <laughs> and and Doc would uh, probably have a fit if he uh, you know was here. If you let your toe strap get not taut, oh yeah, it drove him crazy. Well, then you see him run over the toe strap and break the toe strap, and that really makes the tow drivers super excited to deal with you. All right, so, dude um, set their fastest time of the day so far in the on the last lap, the two fourteen. Excellent. All right, we're going to take another commercial break here. So as the track gets cleared, and be back in a little while. Then at Speedworks, the total so far one hundred and fifty six laps turned. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I probably need new tires. You do. What if they sold tires online? We do. We're TireRack.com. They could offer lots of tires. We have so many tires. And help you find the right tire. It's called the Tire Decision Guide. Oh, and they could ship them to a nearby mechanic. We shipped over 7,000 independent recommended installers. This is an amazing idea. Sorry. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. frozen tundra, the grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone.
Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Stress tested to meet or exceed original equipment performance. Exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture in picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with two-layer shims and OE-style slots and chamfers to eliminate noise. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. And welcome back to the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series race at Daytona International Speedway. Under caution here. Car stopped off track. Uh, they had to... Looks like they picked that one up. Yep, they had to switch it from oh, the yeah. flat tow to the tow truck. Plot twist. Yeah, exactly. So it must have uh, been having... Uh, um, it, it must have been like that scene in Something About Mary with uh, the beginning. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> we, we've we got a bleeder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a broken wheel or something like that that won't turn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on the camera choices. I, if I had more cameras, I would have put a lot more cameras out, get some really good shots. More track coverage would be excellent. But, unfortunately, it is what it is. 
So I was checking in with uh, the Eddie Vedder team, and um, we kind of noticed the pace was a little different from their first driver to the second driver. And um, so I just checked in with them and asked them, is the car okay? Or is that driver, you know, struggling with anything? And um, come to find out, it is that driver uh, Pesky's first time ever here at Daytona. Mm. So he's just filling out the track and uh, trying to get acclimated to yeah. this racetrack with this quick car and figuring out how to get around here and get around here quick. Um, yeah, it can be pretty intimidating, I'm sure. Speaking yeah. of getting around here quick, the green flag has come back out. Excellent segue. I Nicely know. done, I know. William. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all night. <laughs> Try the hot dogs. <laughs> We're just talking about there's a little cafeteria. That's a little... I don't know, a little nook Cantina. over here next to us here in the booth. And um, there's a picture of uh, Jim France, or no, not Jim France. Uh, Bill. Yeah, Bill France with a hot dog in his mouth. And it says, you know, blah, blah, blah on the plaque about you know, hot dogs. But they don't have any hot dogs out. I'm like, this is the second year I had to stare at that. What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> I, I mean... I think I know a guy. Whoa. Like Why? Work there. out that hot dog yeah, thing. That, had the tail hung out there. He's only. Uh, Section oh, 8 backs off the gas there. I'm not sure if they're having an issue or what. Yeah, he's only doing about 55 mile an hour through here. He just looks like he's just crawling through here. Mm -hmm. Didn't even use the whole racetrack. Does he know it's um, green? He's rolling really slow, Tiffany, heading towards six. Yeah. I mean, even, I, I don't even know if he's doing 50 miles an hour now. We're but watching him, Billy and I, as he yeah. heads towards six, he's hugging the inside. Which is not where he wants to be. He wants to be on the outside so he can get to the escaper out there, but. It looks like yeah. his speed is just continuing to drop. Mm -hmm. like, he, like he's without power. I don't, don't know. We, Billy and I have lost sight of him because of the um, pillars and posts and where we're located here in the tower, the way it wraps around the track. Um, following him online is probably the best way to go. It looks like he's pulling towards the apron, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, he's down about under 20 miles an hour. Yeah, 18. So more trouble for the Section 8 team. Yep. They, they had rebuilt that car, so... You know, gremlins will pop hey, up. Gremlins. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd said earlier about like, you know, us going purple 35 back to green and back and forth and back and forth. And just, um, is that, you know, does that mess with the drivers? I know it messes with me sometimes about kind of getting in a rhythm. And um, I was talking to one of the teams and they were saying, yeah, we need to string some green laps together and really get in a rhythm. Um Especially with, uh, you know, with Eddie Vedder's new, n not new driver, but new to this track driver, you know, to try to figure out where's the pace at this track, where's, where they could be faster, where they, you know, where they have the advantage, that sort of thing. You yes. really need those green flag laps to, you know, get your momentum up and feel it out. Yep. As uh, another plane takes off here at the lovely Daytona International. Holly, do you have a um, the the in car for Bing Dog? Mm, there's a couple that you have sent me, but I'm actually kind of maxed right now. But you okay. can send it again. Uh, send that um, as you have the others. So as okay. these drop away, I can put them in. Okay. I don't think I've sent this one yet, so that's why I wanted to ask. Yeah, that'd be cool. And um, Bing Dog, who's currently our lead car leading this race. Um, that's Chris Pashley uh, behind the wheel of that car. Yeah, go ahead that. and send that and I'll see if yeah. I can get it up there and run. Because we do have one that is infinite looping. Caution to go collect that Section 8 car. No rhythm to be had. 
and you can't put two laps together like that, you know? flags like in the beginning of a race is like every other five minutes <laughs> yeah he got to just about the bus stop before it uh said no mas he was trying to drive it in you should it, it, there's a cut right there yeah if he could have just got over there i could have maybe snagged him up without uh Having to go to caution. And th this, this is information for everybody. If you are a slow vehicle and you know where the cuts are, go to the cuts. Make your way to the cuts. <laughs> the, the breaks Help. in the wall. Yes. It, they it can grab you quickly. It, it, makes, it makes your day ha better because if you can get your car fixed and back out there, you're quickly picked up and out the uh, yeah, back out there, or you know it makes everybody else happy because then you don't have to, uh, you know, restart the race every time. Yeah, yeah, every five seconds. Yeah, because we used to do like local cautions and um, if, if the car was not in a, a dangerous spot and then retrieve the car. But, you know, a lot of the tracks have gone to not doing hot poles, which is that when they pull a car off track um, while the conditions of the track are still green, just a local yellow. Uh, most of the track, is on, you know, maybe an insurance thing or whatever. And, you know, safety workers, you know, wanting to keep them safe, of course. Um, you no, know, most of the tracks have gone to this, you know, slowing the cars down uh, anytime that the safety workers have to get out there. Which, and to Makes be sense. yeah, to be fair, I, I agree with more than hot poles because, you know, somebody could hit the same oil that's, or something, you know, there could be something on the track that you don't see and then all of a sudden you've got another car impacting the uh, uh -oh. safety workers. Did that right. pop off? Yep. Yep. And it looks like they're going to put him on the... Uh, And also with the, as we can, we've, we've seen some of the penalties, you know, the, if, if you just have a local yellow, that's just at that place in the track, you're wanting, you need to slow down a little bit, not be passing, et cetera. But sometimes our drivers are not paying as close attention as we would prefer, um, as we've seen some of those passing under yellow. So that just doesn't, you know, feel like a safe situation to put safety workers in. So we just do this instead, which can be annoying when you're trying to get in a rhythm, but it's also safer. So mm. you're on the side of safety. Safe is better than sorry. Yep. And this is, you know, amateur racing as well. So nobody needs to be hurt. I mean, nope. don't risk that. There you go, Tiffany. We got your thing dog racing uh, up and working. Cool. Yeah, it's good. Second place. First place. First place. First if you take out the EC car. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is the way we kind of do it. Yep. And this is a Boxster. Yeah. Oh, the Fing Dog car, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I, I think we're trying to lay back a little bit and protect our equipment 
Sandbagging? No, I wouldn't say sandbagging. I'd say <laughs> protecting the equipment until we need it. Up to six with mustard. But that's not too conservative right there. Yeah, it's like a long race. Six places. Yeah. It's, that's it, you know, it, within that's, striking distance. That's the one iron bandit, though, so. Ah. <laughs> as you guys call him. Or Wayne Nanamaker, as the world knows him. And back to yellow as the flatbed is currently towing the uh, Mustang back to its paddock. And back to green. Let's see if we can string together a couple of green laps, guys. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, because you know, cautions are kind of tedious on us. <laughs> we have to think of things to say. <laughs> it's boring, yeah. Of course, when you scream, you kind of like watch the racing times. <laughs> Actually, the mustard car, it shows six, but you have two EC, no, three EC cars. Is that an EC, EC, low country? Yeah. yeah. Three EC cars ahead, so they're actually sitting in third place. Okay. So, yeah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no complaints here. A spin and continue, as they say, for Continental Motorsports. And their E92 BMW. Showing premium dudes and Atlanta Speedworks in the pits. Both are picks, Polly. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, God, um... <laughs> Darn the luck. <laughs> Let's see if my other pick is in there. The other Atlanta Speedworks car is showing 19th, minus all the EC cars. Here's the. Team Infinity is an eighth, though, minus EC, so that'd be like fifth. So they're within striking distance. Valerian Steel, another Miata up in ninth. Let's see, minus one, two, three, so. And that's one fast Miata, too. It is a very quick car, yeah. So cars that are in the field that uh, have been running consistently that are not currently showing that they're turning laps. Premium Dudes, Atlanta Speedworks in the 718. And we have MBM Performance in the number 668. And then their sister car, the 669 car, also shown not turning laps. As well as Dead Broke Motorsports. Uh, open throttle racing, an EC car. Two Brothers Racing, the car that led the race this morning now, has tumbled to 87th place. Top Garage Racing, also not turning laps, as well as the USS Enterprise. Uh, Silver Bullet Racing, PMF Racing, and Hee Haw Racing. And Hong North, also uh, a big runner in the series, shown not turning laps. Dropped down to 95th now. And Sharky 2, also not turning laps. Avenue Garage and their Mini, down in 100th position, shown not turning laps. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Bit of a wheel hop squeal thing yeah, going I on. I don't yeah. think the tire's like that. No. They were very unhappy with him. Her. The uh, 363 of Rolling Roadblock Racing, um, one of our viewers were asking about earlier, they're currently being watched for brake light issues. Yeah. I guess the corner workers are saying they don't see their brake lights. 
Oh, they're saying that the brake lights are staying on all the time. It's almost as bad as staying off all the time. Madfest is mad about something. He's slapping his leg and stuff. He's a ginger, it happens. <laughs> He's a ginger, it happens. I thought they always call just behind the wheel. I just thought they went after people's souls, but you know. I've heard that too. I, <laughs> no, I, th I think that's hooey. <laughs> one of one of my favorite movies is uh, Army of Darkness. So the whole "I'm gonna steal your soul" scene. I don't know if I've even seen that movie. Oh, it's Bruce Campbell. I know who that is. Let's see. His hand is a chainsaw. Okay, yeah, that that's it. Looks a little cheesy to me, but uh, it it is very cheesy, but it's great. It's akin to Evil Dead. Yes. Okay. A horror comedy combo. Yes. And it. It works really well. As Scrappy Doo Racing is in the pits. They originally had a Subaru that was decked out like the uh, Mystery Machine in 2005, and then for some reason went from a Subaru to a uh, Miata two years later. Hmm. Switch it up, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Guess there's a reason why there's not too many uh Supers? Yes. Which is unfortunate because they are great cars. Until they're not. Hmm. I figure that some of those might do well in a rain race or whatever being all we'll drive we got but, some uh, someone coming into the bus stop really slow just staying out of people's way going to the edge of the apron and Salem's car puts a pass on the uh, green BMW there. Uh, yes, Tony, this is my boomstick. Such a great movie. Good, bad. I'm the guy. I want to know gun. if you've seen Idiocracy yet. No, I have not. It's on your your reading list for the summer. Yeah. A watch list. Kind of like you had uh, Princess Bride on there for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have watched that, thank you. Good, so... good, good. Very proud of you. <laughs> ooh, ooh, got a little crossed up there under braking. Heading into one is Section 8. And this is the sister car now. I wonder if this is the same car that got hit at NCM, because it's the same color. Uh, no, because... They had a white hood and white uh, bumper for that one. So the one that has been giving them issues is the one that... Uh, oh, that was hit. Yeah. This is a different one. Yes. And this one sounds pretty healthy. Listen in. We get a clean audio here. Oh, 
missed the shift. Yeah. Didn't quite get it sunk in there. Went back to power before she was in all the way. Zing the motor a little bit. Got it put in. Into the bus stop. Eating all those curbs. A little wide at the exit there, but yeah. needs to stay out of the dirt. Yeah, they they fixed that pothole that was there. Now we're gonna make a new one. Yeah. <laughs> that Here sounds like a challenge. Welcome to Costco. <laughs> Any Hold challenging here? <laughs> Hold my beard. that the Don't Look Up is like Idiocracy Part 2. I think I've seen that, not obviously not as many times as uh, Idiocracy, because I've probably memorized that movie, but uh, I have seen Don't Look Up. It's pretty funny. I need to see that again. That needs to be on my rewatch list. I'm like, always like that. You like money? I like money, too. <laughs> electrolytes. What are electrolytes? What plans crave? Okay, so looking at the standings, leader working lap 63. That looks like it's Fing Dog leading the race over Wilson Daily Racing, followed by Team Salem Mustard, who just set their fastest lap time of the day. I've been saying that Hung North had an axle pop yep. out of the trans. That's what I was just showing Polly. But they're back turning laps again. That'd be why they fell. It's never a fun day. Mm-hmm. Gonna make the car a little undrivable. And four paws racing shown in the pits now, crossing the pit loop. And we do have a few cars in the pit lane, but not too many. I'm only counting three. Everybody else is out there or behind the wall right now. Another victim, maybe, nope, they're just pushing back so that he can get around probably. 433 of HMD had a four off and continue. I wonder if that's my buddy Jay St. Clair in the car. I think he's driving with that team this weekend. Has it sent me a driving order then? Shame on you, Jay. But he might be in the car, so we're going to, since, since he didn't send me the driving order, we're going to blame that on him. <laughs> Looks like we're getting another person coming to the pit lane. I saw their lolly pop out. So now looks like the vehicle is deciding to uh visit their crew. Oh, looks like the 942 of ketchup has gotten a drive-through penalty. Yes. For passing under double yellow. Under mm. the double yellow line on the drive -well. Hmm. Who's in the ketchup car right now? That would be Will. Mm -hmm. You should know better than that. Seven oh eight of Alpine or Alpine, whichever the way they say it. Auto racing program. It's an EC car. They had a spin and continue. And one. <laughs> I bet that was uh, eye opening. Yeah, that that's not a place. That'll get to your have, attention. Yeah, <laughs> not a place to have uh, issue. No. And the uh, two forty one. Oh, their door was opening. Looks like they've got it closed now, but the 241, we're having their door coming open on the track. That's Brick City Racing, or Miata. It's not got the door shut good when they put their next driver in. When one door uh, opens and another door <laughs> shuts, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that what uh, Boeing says? Isn't that like their <laughs> <laughs> feel good? I think don't their don't new tell model. me that. I'm on Southwest all the time. <laughs> it's probably an Airbus. If it's not the max, you should be fine. Oh no, it's usually the max now. 
I shouldn't say that. I'm going to get letters. I'm gonna, their lawyers are going to come after me. And they have more money than I do. <laughs> so they're probably going to win. So, Billy, will you bail me out of jail? Yeah, sure. Awesome. And here comes the uh, the ketchup car to serve its penalty, unfortunately. And we've hit the uh, 10 hours and 30 minutes mark. Woohoo! Slowly but surely. And don't call me Shirley. We're knocking them down. Yep. Uh, but the two uh, Atlanta Speedworks cars that we've been kind of following here have uh, the 718 and the 981 have both fallen down into the 20s now. Mm -hmm. But those two cars are on the same lap. And then they had a uh, had another car that was down in the 30s. And I'm kind of searching for him now, see if I can find him. So on board with Team Infinity. They're working their way around the track here. They're doing really well. They're um, shown in ninth um, with uh, three EC cars ahead of them, so that'd be sixth place. Oh, here we go. Okay, so... Atlanta Speedworks. So they're, they have 24th spot, 22nd spot, and 20th spot. And uh, looks like the team sailing ketchup car has come into the pits. Yep, they did their drive through already, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> so as we head off to commercial break, if you're tracking your laps for Atlanta Speedworks, you've got uh, 62. All three of them are on lap 62. So it's 126, 246, yeah, 126 laps so far today for Atlanta Speedworks. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Stay with us. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. TireRack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done. All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. 
Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with OE matched friction formulations and fitment for 97% of cars on the road backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. And welcome back to the Tyrac.com Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway. Team Salem Mustard now leads this race. What a surprise. Wilson Daly Racing in second. Valerian Steel in third. So Team Salem leading C-Class. Valerian Steel leading A-Class. D-Class led by Team Infinity. And boy, the B-Class, uh, where's the B-Class drivers? I mean, they're way down there in the standings. So let's see, they are the lead B-Class cars, 35th, and that's Equip Octane in their Mini Cooper. F-Class being led by Kobe Racing, but they are not turning laps right now. Showing R RPM Model Works in the pits. Showing Thing Dog tumbling through the standings, not turning laps, as well as Mad Fast. What is happening there? Yeah. Thing Dog in the pits. Getting a new driver, it looks like, because the door is open. Porsche yeah, Boxster that probably Tom. led the race earlier. Now they're they are falling fast. And getting the uh, new uh, ice box in there. Don't pop our camera. Don't pop our camera. <laughs> yeah, this is their camera, so uh. they probably won't bump it. Yeah, but don't bump your camera. Don't bump your camera. <laughs> they, but Tiffany, they were in the pits uh, on lap 30. 48, and then they oh. were back in at 54. They were back in at 57, and it looks like they're back in there again. So, Or at least, I guess those are cautions. Yes. 
So I take that back. Those are just the cautions I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, just lap 30. I am new at this, you know. It's it's <laughs> only been eight years, and I'm still learning, finding my way. So I'm guessing they, they did a little earlier pit stop than the two hours, so it was probably time to do another. So you're like Rush, you're finding your way? Good one. Thank you. Thank you. I only got to see them once, which is disappointing. Mm -hmm. So I was chatting with the guys from Silver Bullet, the car we saw um, have that impact over there at the uh, bus stop. Mm. And he said the rear end just locked up and it like wouldn't steer. Yeah, that, that, mm. you'll have that. So did that put him in the wall and he bounced off of it? I guess so. He was quite a ways away from the wall. Well, I'm he glad said the car's done. I'm glad, I'm glad he didn't uh, have any help. Yeah. And I'm also glad from communications that the driver's all right, I guess. Yeah. So those are the two things you Most can... Most important. Yes. Bernie says, looks like Mustard tossed out the sandbag because now they're running fast and they're leading the race. Yeah, more like uh, Wayne's in the car and Wayne is Wayne. <laughs> I thought we were going to hold it back a little bit. So it looks like we're going back to caution according to Flagtronics that yep. I have. Yep. I noticed the uh, flashing, happy flashing lights and... Uh, all the areas where the uh, vehicles with happy flashing lights are. They're, they're not happy. It looks like we're going to go to code 35. So there we have code 35. And I do not see. Usually it's right in front of my face, but I do not see where the uh, incident is. Maybe that'll help some of the teams a little bit that were already in the pits having to take that mm. stop under green. This should be a little a little bit helpful. I wonder if this is a lunch thing. They possible. don't do that at this track, do they? Surely not. Oh, okay. I don't know. Don't call me I don't, sure. I mean, I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> don't call me I sure. don't remember seeing them do nah. that, but... Well, they, they issued a Code 35 on the... On the uh, log, now I see an emergency vehicle moving with lights on, like Billy said, so that wouldn't be, you wouldn't turn on your li emergency lights for lunch. Maybe you should, if you're really hungry, you might. Yeah. <laughs> and then driving in as fast as you can to get out of the track. Yeah, there's a, a flatbed moving out. Um, Right now, I can see him heading out uh, around the turn six area. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 he's on the inside of the wall there. So he might be going over to take over for the guy over here who is probably out somewhere picking somebody up. So in an effort to keep efficiency up, they move position until every position is covered, as it were. As many people, many people are coming to take the uh, opportunity to pit, including us. Yeah, folks, so I told you 126 laps, it'd be 186 laps turned for Atlanta Speedworks on that, uh, at that last break. So continuing to accumulate those laps. laps for a good cause. Yep. And plus, we get to watch Polly do math, so... Which, which, <laughs> what could possibly go wrong there? <laughs> My astute mathematic skills flexed again before all of America. 
No, 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 no. All of the world. Get it Get it right, Polly. This is... Oh, that's this, right. We got people all over the world listening to this. Yeah, what this, am I... Why am I limiting myself, <laughs> Billy? <laughs> this is this is the World Wide Web, Tiffany, Paul. I need another session. I'm going to have to <laughs> sit me down and open my eyes to the reality that is around me. <laughs> yeah, if you're just tuning in, uh, welcome to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. It is the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series race at the Daytona International Speedway, the most perhaps renowned, one of the most celebrated and beloved and historic mm -hmm. racetracks in all the world. We're here racing on the circuit with the, the same uh, road circuit that uh, the Rolex series races on you can see here it is about 3.56 miles what we call 12 corners with a 31 degree oval banking pretty incredible you get to come out here and race as they are blowing Z marbles up against the wall And Bill Strong is making faces at me for no reason. Because Bill Strong. RPM Auto Works heads out of camera view. Marathon pulling into the pits. Scrappy Doo is in the 80th spot. <laughs> Yeah, lots of yellows today. Well, when you got that many race cars on the track and people break down and and crash, you're going to have a lot of yellows. What happens typically in these races, even though we have so many cars, is as the race wears on, we have fewer and fewer yellows. And then especially those last few hours of the race are just constant droning green flag, just one after lap after another after another. So... This might be just a, a call to remove debris that's been accumulating and, yeah, blowing the marbles, like you said. Mm -hmm. Billy, just clean up the track a little bit. It might be a lunch break. I don't know. They, they, so Matt they, Fast did their stop, and uh, Sam Collier got out of the car, and Matt mm, Turnery, I'm going to go with that. Parent turn, some of them, no. Matt got in the car. Rolls oh, here the... we go. We've got our uh, incident right here on the uh, apron. Going into uh, NASCAR, the back straight on NASCAR. Yeah, looks like they got somebody in tow there, Billy. Yeah, I uh, couldn't tell who that was. But the yellow flag has come out, so... As soon as they get in behind that wall, they can turn them loose. Them and somebody just pulling into the pits at the wrong time because we're about to go green. And Yeah, it's just a shame they're not watching our show. Then they would, they would, they would know. know. Oh, okay, hold on. So, wait a minute. Did they know this guy is still blowing the track off? Apparently not. Well, they sent him to yellow. Yeah. They haven't greened him yet. But these guys are flying into the bus stop. Eh, let me get out of here. I don't want to be here. <laughs> right. I'm going to die. <laughs> Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. We don't need another Juan Pablo. I think the, the track is clean enough. Get out of the way, Tom. You're going to get run over. So the Atlanta Speedworks teams have all done their driver changes. Um, in the 981, James McLean went in for that car. The 996 um, came in and pitted at the same time. And Mike, try you... 
something like that. Mike got in that car. <laughs> and then in the 718, uh, Caleb got in that car. So, mm -hmm. uh, it would be the two big Joes in the cars for us right now. <laughs> so that would be Joe Nonamaker and Joe Salen. As they have finished their pit stops. And back to green. Yeah, I'm saying there's probably around 100 cars running right now. I don't have uh, I don't have the information like like they have in race control. I'm just looking at uh, TLM as they're pulling out of the pits. I just look at Race Hero and just kind of scroll down and look at any of the cars that aren't turning laps. And Make an educated do guess. Do some quick quick math, yeah. Yeah, TLM was having a little bit of a struggle getting that car started because I heard them crank it over a couple of times. So uh, Valerian Steel has taken over the lead and uh, Team Infinity second and Mustard is in third. Speaking of uh, Salins. of all of our picks in the top 10. Hey, when, you, when you're right, you're right. <laughs> right. Uh, looking <laughs> good, yeah. This Mustang goes into ludicrous speed. bus stop here. Things should get interesting here. <laughs> Would you really want to try and be the meat in that sandwich? And split those two. As long as it's Salem's. <laughs> Salem's meat. <laughs> you threw it out there. I just, just I, I had to hit that. <laughs> Porsche holding that inside line. So, well, if you've got the legs. Well, looks like he didn't get quite the exit he was hoping for as a Miata passes him on the inside. <laughs> That's kind of like when a semi passes you on the highway and you're in a Mustang or something. Slightly yeah. embarrassing. But the Miata doesn't have the top end that the V8 does in the Mustang. Looks like he's leaving room around the inside here. Oh, the Porsche gets wide. And that might be the line that preferred line though for the for the Porsche. Because he can't trail brake. At least not very easily, right Tiffany? Depends on the driver style, but yeah. Huh? That depends on the driver style, but I don't know, I do. A trail brake, a Porsche? Yeah. Boxster? Okay. Yeah. I mean, some people say you can't get the cars to rotate, but you know. You, you, there's, there's you can get that, them to over rotate really easily. There's, so that, there's that little handle right next to you that you can grab and you know, pull real quick and then put it back down, and that'll get the car to rotate. <laughs> I love the way he clobbers it. The corning, the curbing there. Going into six, but might come through there with a little too much speed. I don't think he wanted to be that wide. Eh. He's got plenty of torques to make up for. Well, there's a big difference in that final gear ratio. Uh, from fourth gear to fifth gear. He really reeled in the Porsche on that run to the bus stop this time. Let's see if he gets a better exit out of the bus stop this time so he doesn't get passed up by the slower cars. Yeah, he's had a good run this time. Porsche 
Porsche fades to the upside and allows the Mustang to come down the inside. I can tell you, when you're going this fast, trying to hold it down to the inside, it's a little difficult. It's hard to do that through here. You're going faster and faster and faster, and the track's flattening out. Nice line going in. Really gets her shut down good going into one. And then he, he really put those last uh, key corners together coming out of six and out of the bus stop to get that pass back on the Salem's Porsche. Let's see how he looks coming through here. He's lifting, he's got cars ahead. He's gonna try and come around the outside here. That's the thing to do. Looked like the Betty White car. Yep. <laughs> and try and get this car turned around here in the U-turn. Back to six. See if he gets held up here by the Miata. It looks pretty clean through there. Yeah, this time he's able to keep it a little bit tighter coming out of there. As people continue just to percolate through the pit lane. The lift going into the bus stop here to allow people to jockey for position. And check in with that uh, Eddie Vetter machine. They're currently Shannon Knight, which is actually sixth place. You pull those AC cars out. <laughs> or maybe there's only two now. Oh my, I'm falling out already. I'm going to be seven. They just recently did a pit stop a couple of laps ago, so they should have their third driver in now, which would be Mike Novak. On board with Wilson Daily Racing. Remember, they were in second place there for a little while. Currently in fourth in their BMW. And the car going much slower there on the right as he lines up for the bus stop chicane. Kyle Rockbro getting ready to join us in the broadcast booth here in a moment. Oh, car goes off into the grass there at the exit of the bus stop. And looks like he managed to get out of there all right. the MDR uh, Boxster number 831 they're 
getting ready for a driver change. And uh, Todd Big Tickle Lewis is going in next. <laughs> They're getting very creative on these nicknames. Yes, they are. All right, so with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and be back in a few. So stay with us. You're watching Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. 211 laps turned so far today by the Atlanta Motors, uh, Motorsports team. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I probably need new tires. You do. What if they sold tires online? We do. We're TireRack.com. They could offer lots of tires. We have so many tires. And help you find the right tire. It's called the Tire Decision Guide. Oh, and they could ship them to a nearby mechanic. We shipped over 7,000 independent recommended installers. This is an amazing idea. Sorry. TireRack.com. The way tire buying should be. frozen tundra, the grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Stress tested to meet or exceed original equipment performance. Exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. 
Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with two-layer shims and OE-style slots and chamfers to eliminate noise. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. We are under caution right now, back at Daytona International Speedway. Looks like they got a car pulled off. I think it's uh, on one of the access roads there that uh, they're working on going to uh, collect that car just now. But as I said, as we were heading to commercial, Kyle Lock Road joining us again on the broadcast and with us here at Daytona. Kyle, welcome. Polly, everybody, Champ Car Nation, glad to be back. So uh, it's always a pleasure to come to Daytona as well. This is a uh, hallowed ground. Of many big names have been here, so it's a blessing we to come here every year. Yeah, it's simply, simply incredible. Now you're, you're not just here joining us on the broadcast, but you're also racing this weekend, right? I am. I am in the 718 Porsche Boxster for Todd Lamb's Atlanta Speedworks team. I uh, got an opportunity to do a multi-race deal with him this year, starting here at Daytona. And then we're looking to do Mid-Ohio and Sebring at the end of the year. And we might sprinkle in another one. Uh, just depends on what the funding situation looks like and uh, my NASCAR schedule. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, the Atlanta Speedworks cars, we've been talking about them quite a bit, uh, of course, uh, for the, um, the CSC charity that's going on right now, that, that fun drive. And uh, so we're counting the laps as those three cars go through and right now it looks like they're pretty much all in the same lap there together but the uh, lead car the 718 there uh scored looks like they're in sixth uh place overall they technically uh, let's see they're shown in ninth but there's two ec cars so that puts them up to seventh now at this time uh, looks like we got some cars coming into the pits though valerian steels come into the pits um so yeah, so uh, how do you like uh, driving the Boxsters? It's definitely a little bit a little bit different. Um, I know we're trying some stuff this weekend with taking some of the arrow off of it to help us on the banking. So it's just getting acclimated to knowing what that threshold is of not over braking, locking the tires up, not sliding the back end of the car, really just preservation, taking care of it. We've seen a lot of code 35. So uh, name of the game is just protect yourself and just stay in the game. But the car's great, running good. I had a little bit of contact out of turn one when I was out there. Um, guess it was just a Mitch judgment on either the other driver or my part but uh, no harm no foul and we'll just keep digging yeah yeah of course that's tricky going down there coming out of one especially through two it gets pretty narrow down there and we're just trying to funnel so many cars lap after lap um so uh a lot of variety of cars out here this weekend too we got porsches we got newer cars we got very old cars like the, the uss enterprise that 1972 ford ltd we had a Dodge Dakota out there racing for a while. Then we had a camera in their car. Of course, the regular complement of BMWs and, and Miatas and Mini Coopers. So a huge variety of cars that shown up. Now, you've, you've probably raced here before as we go back to caution. Have you been in this track before? I have. This is my fourth time here with Champ Car, and I've done some ARCA testing here, and I've actually been a spotter here for a couple of the stock car races. So it's nice to get back to the 24-hour layout here at daytona as we go back green and well, a little bit of three wide here coming through the trioval so a lot of action and it gets tight like you're talking about Paul. Like, when you funnel down into that turn one and you come off that 18 degree trioval then you have to get to that flat and the track really a lot of the folks on the broadcast won't realize the track kind of goes away from you a little bit and when it gets hot and slick and debris and rubber you got to really take care of yourself down there and you got to be mindful of who's around you so 
And we've been watching Team Salem do a great job of working their way up through the field to uh, actually find themselves uh, leading a short time ago. Right now it's uh, still some cars, quite a few cars have ducked into the pits, kind of taking advantage of that caution, that purple 35 that we just had, and uh, getting that those pit stops done and out of the way. And that's the name of the game here. Honestly, you want to spend, the le in road racing, you want to spend the least amount of time on pit road as possible. And with that minimum five minutes, or max, you know, you have to stay on pit road for that amount of time. So it gives you, you have to play the strategy. You want to try to catch it to the best of your ability and see what happens. And you just, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's really just a, a gamble. It's the racing gods, whether they shine or tell you it's not your day. From the ground oh, up motorsports, lucky. yeah, lucky. <laughs> From the ground up motorsports, uh, looks like they're going to get black flagged for a blend line violation. Um, so the blend line is Tiffany that painted line as you come out of the pits. Yep, off to the and right. And you're not supposed to cross over that into the the racing, uh, you know, asphalt where cars are coming in at. Um, you'll see that coming. Like out of turn two here, that's where the uh, you're exiting um, the pit out and onto the track. Um, and so cars are setting up uh, coming in uh, to three. They're setting up on the outside of the track, which is also where the cars are coming into the onto the track. So mm -hmm. it's really important for people to stay left until there's like kind of a clear area to in, um, enter the hot track. It's a safety thing. I mean, you really just the way that blend line into Tiffany's point, the way the blend line works here at Daytona, uh, as you come into the infield, you're uh, as we're on board right here, I'll give you a perfect example. We're on board with uh, Mad Fast Autosport car 686. Nice outbreaking maneuver. Or I'm sorry, that's coming on to NASCAR. There we go. Right, with Wilson car 15 Daly, yeah. right yeah. here. As you come through this first set of uh, S's, your blend line is to your left right there and you have to stay left and it's recommended. Honestly, just ride it into the corner, ride the second lane and blend in off of the international horseshoe. It's safer, but a lot of guys don't know that or don't realize that it it's a lot of guys are carrying speed in there and especially you tend to see a lot of two, three wide racing and guys try to charge in there because it's a big passing spot. Yeah, you don't want to be coming out of the pits so at a reduced pace and try to like jump in there and go for the apex in the middle of you know, competitors that are racing against each other. Yeah. It's highly unrecommended, and especially if you're on cold tires when you have no grip, and especially when you got to get a little heat back in the brakes. Yeah, we try to not recommend that. I know Chelsea and everybody in the tower love when our competitors do that. Yeah, that's their thing. Ooh, good catch right there. That's a slick part coming there. I think that's turn six coming back on the NASCAR one. You really have to modulate your throttle and be very, very smart about how you do it. And it there's a bump right there as you transition. So just got to take care of it. I see he's in the draft a little bit there, trying to sniff a little bit, uh, slipstream of the guys ahead of him, get a little bit of a pull. And a lot of guys don't realize, uh, just like with the NASCAR guys, you can save a little bit of fuel in the draft here. I mean, obviously, we don't want to go too much with the drafting as we they talked about and stressed in the driver's meeting but if you can see a car in front of you you can oh please don't hit our car thank you sir um <laughs> you can get in behind them if you lift and crack the throttle a little bit you can save a little bit of fuel and that car is poking a big hole in front of you um as you can see right here he pulls up and then just pulls out and gets a sniff of the draft there as a pretty much textbook exactly how you want to do it get a pull pull out and then just go right on by him it's been an eventful you can leave yourself with a little bit of throttle to use to get on past him right mm -hmm. and if need be you can yeah once you pull out there you want to pretty much put it to the floor but when you're in behind him if you're playing that strategy of trying to save a little bit of fuel and get the full two hours out of your stint and it could come down to fuel mileage or if you don't have to add as much fuel maybe on that last stop to where you can be a little lighter and have a little more speed, it depends on how your team wants to play it, really. Lots of different ways to play a long race like this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ooh. Ooh, a little tire lock up there, and it's hard for Tiffany to hear, but uh, right at the spot where he kind of wanted to start coming off the brakes, he had to get some tire lock up, just couldn't, couldn't get her slowed down as much as he wanted to. Might have been a little late to the brakes. I think he was trying to stay off that uh, Mustang, or I think Low Country Motorsports, I believe, was in front of him. I think he they were trying to outbreak him in oh, there. And there's yeah. more little tire smoke up ahead. 
Yeah, they're they're digging hard getting into those corners. Um, AJ Frank and his guys have always put a good piece together, and um, they're fast. It's just I think they were trying to anticipate what those guys were going to do, but uh, no harm, no foul. We keep digging. I, I really like the way he sets up six there and uh, worked his way through the corner that time. So sorry, the camera's uh, not always. It's got a little too much buffering going on there. So uh, yeah. Some great Holly, stuff did you out see? there. Premium dudes is in uh, showing in first now. Oh, they're showing the lead. They're my pick, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> we have a lot of really good cars here this weekend. I mean, the quality of equipment that's coming through here, and we've got some folks I've seen for some different series that are coming to play with us here this weekend, which is good. I mean, it's a really healthy car count, so it's it's good mm -hmm. to see a lot of these guys coming to participate. Yeah, it's been a healthy car count since February as we started the wait list in February Ooh. as the race was sold out. Close call there for uh, Ed's guys in the Infinity. Tried to make a move there getting into International. And I don't think the car in front of them saw they were there. So Kyle Aaron, uh, Irwin's asking, uh, Daytona had a big repave some years ago because of the bumps in the track. The banking in particular, drivers thought it gave the track character. Do they feel the bumps are reappearing oh the character that was daytona prior to the 2011 2010 repave is is starting to really show itself when you come off of the in the trioval you can feel the bumps um on the transitions and it really upsets the car you can feel the bumps through the nascar sections of the racetrack and it's i think she's definitely due and i think the reason they're probably going to do it is they don't want to have what happened back in 2010 when the piece of chunk came up during the 500 so i commend isc and nascar for going ahead and paving the place and i think they want to make sure they don't have any issues when the 400 comes back in august but that's a great question or when um obviously weathering makes a big difference in the racetrack when you go to a place like mid-ohio or Watkins glen where they get snow and and other unexpected weather or expected weather it, it takes a beating on the pavement and really adds those bumps and characters and then you have to the patching and the driver has to be careful because that affects where your, uh, your brake points are and whether how much grip you're going to have with the tires. And Mid-Ohio just went through a repaving um, last fall. So that one should be good now. It was. They did a great job with it. When we raced there back in September, I tell you what, it was very smooth, very fast. It was nice. I think we all got a little spoiled because when you come up over nine with that hill, you could actually stay in the throttle a little more than you used to oh. before the repave. Because <laughs> I was nice. like, oh, I'm not sliding the left rear this time as much. And Mark is telling us that uh, Mike's in the Team Infinity car right now. And then uh, it'll be, oh, excuse me, Lewis is in. And then Mike will be in the next two hours. Good luck to Lewis. He's doing a good job out there, it looks like. And uh, good luck to Mike when he hops in for his stint here shortly. Mark's asking, why is there no grass on the front stretch? I think they just don't have the sod down. Uh, it's they, mostly sand. Well, they pulled it up because they did have the motocross race here. I want to say it was about just about a month ago this weekend. Uh, because of bike week so they probably just haven't redone it i'm sure they're just got the mo it looks like they've just gotten the motocross track down they're probably getting ready to prep it and start getting it ready to go they probably won't worry about it till after the repave and then they'll start getting it ready for the 400 when nascar comes back in August. goes the repave this summer they're saying in may tiffany i think that's why yeah. they canceled the wrl race to okay. get the paved i think they want to get it done and get it tested Prior to that weekend, I'm sure they'll send. They'll mm -hmm. probably do a Goodyear test um, for the NASCAR guys on the pavement. I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if IMSA comes down and gets a jump on that just to get ready for next year's 24 hour. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, um, I had an update on cars. Uh, the 241 of Brick City Racing. They did a driver change. Um, Doc Martin is out, and Dave Gooden is in that car. On board here with Section 8 Racing, uh, we're coming through the infield here, coming through the kink. Uh, this is a good example for some of you folks on the broadcast that were asking about 
with the bumps and stuff. You see the Mustang here, which is a heavier car. It's, I believe, that car that Alan Martin's got. I believe it's one of the V8s. Um, don't quote me on that one. But you can see him having to really roll into it smoothly because of the bumps. It can give you a lot of wheel spin. Depends on how the car is geared. So, like, right through here, coming into six, you'll see him roll in, gently roll in that throttle, going over the bumps, making sure the car doesn't get upset, and then straight line it as you come up into NASCAR 1. So, the, you'll see the character, but the heavier cars, you got to make sure the car gets turned and takes a set before you really um, aim and shoot. In the uh, Bend Over Racing 985, uh, uh -oh. Matt is out of that car and Ken is in a couple of laps ago. So oh, okay, Ken's he must have just driving. lifted out of it. Mm. Ooh. These cars do take a beating over the rumble strips at times, too, guys. It, that camera shows you that big hit there the car took, but it you, you really got to be careful. You want to use the curbs. They're your friends, but they can also do a lot of damage to these cars if you abuse it. Yeah, especially, you know, just getting all over the curbs, lap after lap after lap after lap. You'll see that just wear on the uh, car and, you know, increase the attrition in some of these races. So it looks like we're going back to caution here, Kyle. Um, looks like corner number one, actually. There's an issue over there. A green, um, a green Miata. Is oh, that it's one? parked. Actually, it's turned around there, at, coming out of the exit of one, almost the midpoint of one. Can we get a Oops. ID on the car number by chance? I, I'm not sure. It looked like one yeah. of the open throttle guys, but I wasn't sure. Well, they'll, we'll have to wait and see if we get that from control. But, uh, yeah, we got a car turned around. Driver's left, so he's on the inside of the corner of one. Those cars roll through there. We just want him to stay a little bit more to the to the right. And you have to throw a caution in that situation. Um, you really just have to take care of it because, I mean, right there, your driver, from the camera angle you guys can see, the driver's door is exposed to oncoming traffic. So absolutely the right call. and. Um, get him turned around the right direction, but you you really got to be careful because that's a blind corner. You can't see until you're right about the turn in point, and you don't know if a car's there. So it's that's kind of a sketchy position to be in. in that. Definitely scary for the driver sitting there going, "Don't hit me! Don't hit me!" Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're all saying. And their eyes are closed. You're clenched mm -hmm. up. You're like, "Please don't hit me." <laughs> In the uh, Eddie Vedder car now, that's uh, Mike Novak behind the wheel. Yeah, we got uh, several in-car cameras. Uh, thanks, folks, for letting us know. I know I haven't gotten you all wrangled in here yet, but um, appreciate everybody sending their information over to Tiffany and to myself so we could get you into the broadcast. Yay. Yeah, Sideways just uh, said something. The uh, on YouTube here, they said Section 8 Racing did a really fast turnaround on their Mustang from the NCM accident. So I uh, want to give an attaboy to Alan Martin and his boys uh, there in South Carolina for getting these things ready to roll for Daytona. So good job, guys. Yeah, big time effort there. So another thing we do here under caution for those that are listening, a trick that you can do to help yourself uh, when you're under caution, especially where you have to maintain the code 35 per the rules. If you really want to save some fuel trick you can do is you can pop the car up into like fourth gear and you don't run as many RPMs and it just saves fuel and really can help you in the, in the name of the game. there, just trying to trying to get a little bit of an advantage. Yep. Every little advantage maybe adds up and helps you, you know? Absolutely. If you if it keeps you, if you do little things like that, and then, you know, you end up being able to stay out for one more lap than your competitors, and then you get a, you know, a caution or something for your pit stop, whereas they took more of their pit stop under green. I mean, all these little things start adding up. It does make a huge difference if you can just make sure that you're taking care of your stuff. And, you know, the more fuel you burn, the more times you're going to have to come in. And you, you don't want to come in pit road because, I mean, if you got to take fuel, it's a minimum of that five minutes. And that does add up over time. So. 
we have seen quite a few yellows today. I've noticed that a lot of yellows, a lot of code 35s. Um, definitely have a lot of guys that are just, you can tell the, I, I don't know if I've ever seen the intensity here as much as I've seen in this event so far. And I think it's just, the stakes are high. I think people saw how the tempo was set for the season at road Atlanta with the, what Eddie Vedder did there. And I think we're at another big boy track. And I think it's, this is turning into a 14 hour sprint race. It's definitely amazing a place. I can even get the cars to do that. You don't really take it lightly. I mean, it's such an amazing racetrack. When you get here, you can't help but feel like this is a big thing for me, and and I want to make this race count. And I'm not going to come here and not put my best effort forward. So, uh, yeah, we, we've seen quite a few of these yellows caused by just mechanical failure, but we've also had some cars that got turned around, and got busted up. Oh, guys are just pushing them to the limit and they're getting everything they can and to your point there Polly, they're just trying their best to to get after it i mean this is like we said this is hallowed ground a lot of names earnhardt haywood uh petty fittipaldi they've raced it on this place and now folks in champ car get to experience it so they want to get everything they can out of it and i don't blame them have you been in the car yet kyle I did. I did a stint earlier. Um, we had a pretty good stint. We were leading class, I believe, at that point. And by the time I got out, we were second. I just, that was the first time I'd ever been in one of Todd's cars. So for me, it was getting acclimated. I didn't get a pre-test or a practice or anything prior to. So I really had to learn on the fly. And Todd and the guys put a great piece together. So just had to learn. I think it'll be better when we go back out. Hopefully as the field kind of thins out a little bit, I just couldn't get into a rhythm. There's just so much traffic. We've got such a stout piece. Even when I tried to anticipate the traffic, it was just very unexpected and I didn't want to do anything to jeopardize the stake of the car. And you're in one of the boxsters. I am. I'm in the 718 with uh, Todd and Caleb. We're having a great run so far. looks like we're P6 or what are we, Polly or P5? Yeah, you're with five with the EC P5. car up there. Okay. Yeah. And P5, it looks like we're fourth in class so far. So we're right there. And I mean, we're only oh. four and a half hours in. Good deal. Now, when will we see you back in the car, Tiffany? When's your next event? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Not sure no. yet. Ollie's been working on uh, our car and. Uh, not the uh, trophy wife hasn't done a champ car race this year we can't seem to decide on a race that we can all do um my schedule gets kind of busy sometimes i've got a nephew on the way so we have a baby shower to throw my my husband's 50th birthday is next month so we're having a we're doing a big vacation for that and just you know this year feels like it's already gotten away from me but I don't know. I know we're on schedule to do Sebring on New Year's, but I don't, I don't know if, if we'll... Some of the tracks that we normally like to go to, like CMP, are not on the schedule this year. So um, our, our team is split up everywhere. So like me in Birmingham, and then the team owner is in Virginia, and then one of the other drivers is in... Uh, where is he? Like Minnesota or something? Way up there. Um not as far as you, but, um, so we're all kind of all split up. So we're, you know, it's, it, no matter which track we pick, it's far for somebody. Usually somebody's flying in. Um, so just coordinating schedules and all that. And then I blew up one of the, my track cars too. So down a car. Isn't it funny how it is? It's just, you, you want to get out there and you want to do it. And just, there's so many things going on in life right now. And I mean, births and, birthdays and everything it's just it's it's hard logistics i folks don't realize what it takes to to prep to do one of these things and just to get everything together and make it happen so it's i mean uh, it's a crazy amount of work to get a and, car ready for one of these races and be reliable too so yeah i'm seeing we got a, another car now that's uh stranded on the racetrack over between five and six they pulled off drivers right there and uh emergency crews are already there to 
give them a hand, assess the situation, and help them out. So with that, we'll take another commercial break and be back in just a few minutes. So stay with us. You're watching Champ Car Live presented by AutoZone. We're at Daytona International Speedway, and the Atlanta Speedworks teams, they have turned 239 laps so far today. So how many more can they rack up before that checkered flag flies? We'll find out. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I probably need new tires. You do. What if they sold tires online? We do. We're TireRack.com. They could offer lots of tires. We have so many tires. And help you find the right tire. It's called the Tire Decision Guide. Oh, and they could ship them to a nearby mechanic. We shipped over 7,000 independent recommended installers. This is an amazing idea. Sorry. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Bring on the frozen tundra, the grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Stress tested to meet or exceed original equipment performance. Exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 12 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. 
Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with two-layer shims and OE-style slots and chamfers to eliminate noise. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. Working lap 84 is Premium Dudes, 15 seconds ahead of Wilson Daily Racing now with Team Salem Mustard in third. And uh, joining me in the booth, as I said uh, earlier, is Kyle Lockrow. And uh, Kyle, uh, let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, what you got going on this year? What's on the schedule? What's, what's on your hit list? Well, we're hoping to run about three to four champ car races, as we talked about in the previous segment. I'm hoping to do here the second Sebring race on New Year's, and then I'm looking to go back to mid-Ohio, and I'm possibly looking at doing uh, Nelson and maybe the VIR North race in December with another team that'll be announced later. And then we're hoping in the meantime to continue to do the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series stuff. Uh, we got a new team this year. We can't say who it is yet. They've asked us not to, but we're hoping to run second half of the season. Nice. We're just working on finalizing some uh new partnerships to make it happen so nice save there by uh wilson daly <laughs> he's that was, pushing that thing oh he's the digging they've been digging all day long <laughs> and that's it's, it feels like this is he's done it so many times the bumps are going to upset the car he's ready for it and he's just he's just driving through it you know you and you can tell he he's predicting where that yeah that limit is and he's doing a great job and He's doing a nice job of even when it steps out, he doesn't overreact. He doesn't panic. He just good catch, a little counter steer, and then he's back to it. So, like, right there, nice judgment of traffic. He's probably going to outbreak here. Now, I thought better. Eh, he might like stick the nose. 708, hey. not quite sure. Leaving him a little bit of room there. See, that's always that gray area. Sometimes you got to commit, but I wonder if he didn't, and probably smart move there, didn't know if he was watching the mirror, hence why the guy came over where he did. So, sometimes better back out and come play another day yeah and you know we're driving with all these amateur drivers some of them brand new and even if you see the 708 look real good you know a couple of hours ago it's a totally new driver now and uh, you just don't know you know you don't know what you don't know and you don't know who you can trust or if or if they you know even saw you coming and you also don't know to their experience level they you don't know if this is their first champ car race you don't know if they've never been to daytona because I know we talked about on the champ car. Oh, 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 man. That that EC car, right? Mm, that was that was no bueno right there. That's not okay. Looks like we're so anyway. But they're they're back to it. So um, still rolling. But yeah, you just gotta try to anticipate traffic, and it's so hard. The different experience levels that are out here, and guys that are learning, and when you race on the banking at Daytona too, it makes such a difference because. The cars aren't beside you. They're above you and below you. So that takes a little bit of a different discipline in your eyes to know where you're at. I think we got a car with a, a busted control arm or something. Or uh, This is a Miata that's rolling down the apron, just got through mm -hmm. the bus stop. But that uh, left rear corner is leaning pretty hard. I saw MBM on the hood. It was like an MBM Motorsports or racing. So, that, that yeah, we do have a, an MBM team. So that would explain it. Yep. Driver did the smart thing, though. Knew they had a problem. Didn't attempt to get on the banking. Got down to the flat. So uh, nice job on that driver. Very heads up. Get it back. Get it fixed. And get back in the fight. And we've got two cars from NBM Performance. Two Miatas here. Yes, Mark. You heard NASCAR team, but I cannot say. You'll have to go to my social media if you go to my website at kylelocker.com and 
follow and like us and you'll have to stay in touch and see what happens when it gets announced but other than that i plead the fifth but it will get announced it will eventually sure. it will eventually so, shark right. cart coming around the outside there ed's been around here a time or two his guys know what they're doing and they're good to race with too they're they're very experienced team now there aren't too many guys that can say they won daytona no that's, that's one of those uh, guys that can say that and uh you know, and the thing about that team is that this is an example of a team that they don't win a ton of races, but they always put themselves up at the front. They're just really good at staying out there, and eventually you're gonna, the odds are going to catch up with you. You're going to get it to they're, the good side. They're <laughs> consistent. They've always been a good, consistent champ car team. Ed, when he comes to the track, he always has good pieces. They're strong, and the reliability factor with his cars are just un incredible. It's amazing what his guys do, and... But he gets good guys that are experienced. They know what they're doing. I mean, for example, you, you got a guy that's just real smooth. You don't see him overdriving it, trying to push it super hard. They know they're playing the long game. I mean, that's really what you need to do in an endurance race. And that's hard to get a lot of guys to do because we get so many drivers out of different disciplines that come and play in the Champ Card sandbox. And if they're not used to that endurance where they can go 100% on the short track or at a, at a NASA weekend or an SCCA weekend, here you've got to kind of back it down a little bit, 85%, 90%, and preserve it to where in a 14-hour race, you know, you really don't – you're racing, but you really don't want to start racing until about 8 o'clock tonight. We don't want to overdrive the car and wear it out. Absolutely. A lot of preservation. And plus, the track conditions are going to change. I mean, oh, right now. Oh, geez. yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was sketchy. What is, what is it? Calvin Fish always says a little RG bargy, as he calls yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. A little RG bargy. And I'm just, as slow as that Porsche head was rolling into one, I was really impressed how the Wilson Daily machine was able to. Is able to get it slowed down, not smack him. Oh, oh, and there's no, a hit on the sailing car, and we're oh. going for a turn, just as I was saying that. The commentator's curse strikes again. Oh, no. And that was our second place car that just spun. Oh. Yeah, he's trying to get it, ride it, and get back onto the racetrack, but contact between the sailing's machine, one of the two sailing's machines, and they were, the two sailing's Porsches were pretty much side by side. Now, the mustard car is in third shown in third place, but I don't know if that's the car that they had contact with or if it was the other Salem's car. It was hard to say with the angle. By the time he got there and you could see the contact, we just couldn't see the number plate, so we'll have to... Uh, Let's we'll go back and watch. I've yep. got actually on instant replay, so we were... I was just talking about how hard they went into this corner, and... Oh, uh, mustard. I don't know. Wilson, I think he expected the Porsche to, to step to the left a little further, and uh, he could maybe sneak in there, and uh, that wasn't going to happen. So Yeah. It, it looked like the ketchup car because it's black and red. Yeah, I mean, they did a good job getting through there. Unfortunately, it's just it's a judgment call. Um, I, you could tell that they were trying to stay a little bit to the right, and I think he just thought he had a hole there, and I think the hole closed up by the time he got there. But I think he yeah. went in a little deeper. Yeah, he got in a, a bit deeper than he had the last few times we had watched the uh, the 15 car there. But, I mean, it's it happens. It's racing. We all make contact. Things happen, and hopefully they'll get it back rolling. Yeah, hopefully nobody uh, too big a damage from that. Didn't look like a high-speed hit, but, you know, it could have done some damage to the Porsche. That, that whole rear differential in the rear suspension area there. We got clipped. Hopefully, it was just uh, pushed in the bodywork a little bit. Yeah, the Wilson Daily car seems okay as well, but they're really going to have to keep an eye on that left front because you want to make sure that you didn't push it in where it either uh, compromised the radiator with any cooling. You want to make sure you didn't punch any suspension pieces, or it did, you know, maybe might have knocked the toe out. We'll have to see here. Watch the replay again. He had a, he had a monster runoff of turn one there, and... He was just trying to follow him in, and like I said, I think he thought he had a hole. Yeah, and he was pushing these corners really hard, and I think he was ready to go in deeper, mm -hmm. and that's just that's not what the Porsche, the Porsche was coming across. Yeah. And that's what you got to be aware of. This this place invites you to want to drive in and get a run on guys and get through, but this it, is the happened. same spot right here, Kyle. Yeah. And of course, now he's setting up way to the left, but... 
Car looks okay. I mean, he's really leaning on that left front there, and the car seems okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think no harm, no foul. Probably just got to shake that off. It, it's not fun when you get hit, and it messes with you a little bit. You just you got to shake it off and keep going. So the uh, IFW uh, Motorsports car, that uh, 96 Pontiac Firebirds, they have been, um, they have retired due to transmission issues. All right. Got a car coming to pit road right here, Polly. I don't know. It looks like that, maybe that Team Bruce Innovation BMW from what I can see. Yeah, this is uh, just a review of some uh, contact that happened a little bit earlier. Looks like he's doing all right there, though, Kyle. Yeah, he's still rolling. Uh, looks like he's getting, I think that's the Florida yeah. guys here. He's chasing them down, trying to get by. So I think he's okay. They'll just have to keep an eye on it. I'm sure they've brought a stout piece here, and it's a fast car. So they'll just have to recover and keep going. Ooh, the Florida. If he can get cut underneath here, he's got to run an opening. Here he comes. He's got to be careful. Yeah, he doesn't oh, want to get yeah, into that no. again. Yeah, so... And that, that contact is under review, by the way. If you're just wondering, did they see it? Yeah, they saw it. Corner it just workers. Looked like Wilson Daly thought they were going to leave him room, and uh, Salem's car thought he had the, the corner. Yeah. So he was taking it. And we always talk about that. It's that that overtaking car. It's it's a judgment call. You you really got to. No, but it's also the, the car being overtakes responsibility to be in that mirror paying attention, watching, and, um, you know, those, I mean, the Team Salem's guys, I mean, those guys have been around a while and, and definitely not. Not their so. first radio. Oh, no, this <laughs> is this is not their first time here, and they have loads of experience in that paddock down there, so uh, definitely a teachable moment and um, only going to get better from there. Yeah, it looks like that Porsche is still out there also turning laps, so both of them were able to keep it going. So that's good news for those both those teams. And a good heads up to the guys that were around that, that got their hands up and told guys around them that they, you know, slow down. That could have turned into a bigger incident, and thankfully it didn't. So Because that's a very tight part of the racetrack, and there's not a lot of room to get out of the way. When you say get your hands up, what's the protocol you're talking about there? Well... It really depends. I mean, usually you want to. It just depends on what the wings on the cars and stuff. You want to try to throw your hand up and try to wave to the guy behind you and let him know, hey, something's happening, and just try to give him a heads up if you can. But sometimes, I mean, these are split-second decisions at the speeds that you're carrying here at Daytona. And, I mean, you just you try to be heads up, but sometimes things happen. But if you can, it's always nice to get a hand up if the guy's watching just so somebody doesn't run into the back you because sometimes that five car back rule can come back to bite you too where you can't see but uh everybody did a good job through there back on board here with section eight racing as they come through the tri-oval hear that car down shifting as you're yeah. ready to turn into one there all the way out to that white line here. I'll try to give you guys a little bit of an insight here from a driver's standpoint of the line. Um, he's coming out of turn one. 
coming through the mm -hmm. kink, the S there. You want to get straight lined in with your braking before you turn into the International Horseshoe. Try to take a wide turn in if you can. I think you got in a little hot right there, but track is starting to heat up, and that is a heavy car. I've tested that car at one point, and it's it's hard to get it slowed down. So coming down toward the kink, you might, in this car, I would lift just a little bit to let it sit on that right rear, and then nice straight line braking here into five. Nice job here off that brake pedal. Let it roll the center of the corner. Let it take that set on the left rear, and then start rolling into the power to get off there, and go down to turn six so yeah kyle i don't know i haven't seen anything on car four five two unless somebody out there in listener land knows something so, no, i haven't had contact with the car fab folks i don't think they've been messaging me and see here's what we were talking about earlier in the broadcast folks as you'll see it's navigating that banking because right here he's just smart move just being patient he knows he's the faster car anticipating that traffic he saw open throttle make a hole to the left he decided to stay up on the high side keep that motor wound up plus you have that bmw down by the yellow line smart move back out of it a little bit you know you're the faster car you're going to get a run back yourself up oh, i guess the bmw bailed out so right here a little bit offline but get yourself situated the good thing is he has the power to get out of the bus stop so he should be able to catch those guys by the time they get back to the line so really he just is what's really important to him right now is to make sure he does get that good run out of the mm -hmm. bus stop even though he's all compromised getting in and it threw his line off a little bit paulie honestly you saw him kind of have to take a little bit of a late turn in but was very heads up very smart I here commend the BMW. Yep, right here. Like I said, he was going to catch those guys. He's got the legs to do it on the straightaway. Got a little bit of a pull in the draft here. He'll get in behind one of Mike uh, Corbin's BMWs there and get a pull, and he'll keep digging. Looks like he's going to catch him before one, but as heavy as that Mustang is, he'll probably have to. Yeah, they already backed out of it, starting to get it woed up for turn one. So Nice job. Nice it's wide. really entry. wide, yeah. That's good. That's actually not a bad thing, though. There's a couple ways you can get through there, but it really gives them a straight line out of there because then he's not sliding the right rear. Mm -hmm. just depends on the driver's comfort, what how much time he's had in that car, but probably not a bad move either because then it preserves those tires. You want to make sure you don't do anything to jeopardize them because then if you don't have to change them, it's less time in the pits. You just got to watch your mirrors because as soon as you open up that door, you got 12 guys trying to pile mm -hmm. down the inside on you. And, and that's the frustrating part where you're trying to take that road racers approach, but then you got guys that see that opening and they go no for problem. it. I'll go yep. in there. I'm a Miata. I can well, do that. Exactly. Well, just like we saw <laughs> with the incident with uh, Wilson Daly and Salins, it was, he saw an opening, he wanted to put it there. And that one, unfortunately is what happens on the negative side of it. But uh good heads up. Look, looks like we got a car off here coming out of the bus stop. Yeah. He's working his way through the grass there gingerly, but I think he's I think he's okay. This looks like he got off down there, and now he's trying to ease his way back in. Looks like he's picking up a little bit of speed there. And if you miss that bus stop, he did the right thing. If he did get in there a little hot rather than try to correct it, just go off in the grass a little bit. The nice thing is the grass isn't too bad at Daytona as long as you don't hit one of the drains. Just take it easy, get out of the gas, let it coast through the grass, and then smart move. Ease back onto there, scrub your tires up a little bit, and keep rolling. And if you get that run out of the bus stop, like right there, um, I, we just saw a car. That you got a good run, and you just try to stay with guys, really. There you go. Here's back on board with Section 8 here to get a run on. Looks like one of the Atlanta Speedworks cars and one of the open throttle as they uh, navigate a Miata there on the bottom. He's trying to see. The thing is, you want to decipher who's going to be the faster car that may go through. So he had a big lift there. He just decided to follow him. Rather than go around the outside, he decided to follow him through, and he's just going to wait. Well, smart driver right there, knowing that those guys can probably go deeper into the brake zone, so no sense in putting yourself in a jeopardizing position. 
really just thinking ahead to where he's going. Mm -hmm. If I get ahead of them or I get side by side, we're all going to be screwed. I'm certainly not going to gain an advantage by popping in front of them and then trying to break. Well, because they're they're going to have trouble then because I'm going to be right in the way. And it's losing the least amount of time, and that's something that it takes a lot of time to figure that out. You want to set up passes where you both lose the least amount of time. I mean, if you're a if you know you got a car behind you that's slow, that's faster than you, don't fight him too hard. I mean, if you're fighting for position, by all means, race your heart out. But if it's somebody that's lapping you, I mean, just roll out of it, let him go. Why run side by side and cost yourself time and then have somebody behind you who you have a gap on catch you for no reason? Yeah, run your race. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Heading up to six again. And see, he'll come through six here. Les Polly just said, ooh, a little bit of a slide there, but that's okay. Got a good straight run coming out of here. So with the legs this Mustang's got, I think he'll be able to chase a few of these guys back down by the time they get to the uh, bus stop if he gets up through the gearbox real smoothly. Just when he makes that high gear change, there's a big ratio jump there. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, too, because I, I see him get up to a certain RPM, and then it seems like he rolls out of it. So I, I think, based on what I'm seeing, because I've been in some cars where I've had to do this before by the owner's request, they ask you to back out of it just so you're not banging on the rev limiter chip all day. Because, I mean, we still have about, about nine hours to go. So, I mean, no sense in hammering on this thing. I mean, that thing's got plenty of legs, and if you breathe it a little bit, it just, just takes care of the equipment. See, like right here, he's been working on this BMW, and I think he'll get him. Yeah, he's got plenty of yep. time. All the time in the world. <laughs> Did a nice job there checking his mirrors. You can see, making sure to see if he's clear, trying to stay in the draft of that uh, Corvette in front of him. Probably, yeah, he backed out of it a little early there, just knowing what's going to go on here. A little bit of a wider entry, yep. Might try to sneak with that. Yeah, I have a feeling that Corvette's gonna get, he's probably gonna try to go with that Corvette when they get to the car in front. If he can get him to set him up on the, you know, he didn't take the inside line, he's just gonna try and ride with them. <clears throat> uh, he might try to cross over here. Oh, oh, they both got overtaken. couple guys together. The open throttle car got back underneath of him, just outbraked him, and it was a nice move right there. But you could tell I don't think he saw him coming. It was, And that's where you got to be real careful if you're that overtaking car. you got to make sure those guys see you. Yeah, you can be overtaking and somebody can be overtaking you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And all of a sudden there's no room for all three of you. <laughs> the hole does close up rather quickly at Daytona in some of these sections. Looking good here as far as out of there. Nice smooth run. Nice smooth run there out of turn six there, Tiffany. And he just, just taking his time. And you can see him getting down low, getting a little bit of that draft off that slower car at the bottom and closing back in on that uh, Corvette in front. So just, just working traffic. And that's a lot of what this is, folks. It's, it's navigating the traffic, knowing what you have, what you can do, but also just being smooth. Looks like he might try to outbreak this Corvette here. Well, Kyle, we're uh, reaching the uh, we're reaching the uh, top of the hour here, so just want to say thanks for coming up thanks and spending Paul. some time with us. It's great. It's always great having you with us, and hopefully you get some time a little bit later this afternoon to come up and talk to us again. Yep. So I'll make sure to come back out. So when you're going back in the car, I will do that. I will have the misses. I'll have Tanya reach out and let you guys know when we go back in. I'll be in the 718 car if anybody wants to watch. Um, and just really appreciate the opportunity to be part of it. And thank you for all of our uh, viewership that's been on so far. We really appreciate it. If you guys get a chance, um, share the link out there and get your friends and family to watch. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate that. It's Kyle Lockrow spending some time with us here on the broadcast. Racing this weekend with Atlanta Speedworks. 270 laps total between those three cars so far today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I probably need new tires.
You do. What if they sold tires online? We do. We're TireRack.com. They could offer lots of tires. We have so many tires! And help you find the right tire. It's called the Tire Decision Guide. Oh, and they could ship them to a nearby mechanic. We shipped over 7,000 independent recommended installers. This is an amazing idea. Sorry. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Bring on the frozen tundra. The grinding gravel. The cratered concrete. The rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Stress tested to meet or exceed original equipment performance. Exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 12 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing 
Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance. With two-layer shims and OE-style slots and chamfers to eliminate noise. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. You can find out what's wrong with your car using the AutoZone Troubleshooting Guide. All you need to know is what the problem feels like, looks like, smells like, or sounds like. Go to AutoZone.com and choose the troubleshooting sections on the main web page. Changing out your headlights is easy as well. It's never been easier to learn how to switch out your bulbs. Check out the AutoZone video step-by-step -step instructions at AutoZone.com. So looking at the standings so far, working lap 97, Team Salem Mustard leads the way in their C-Class Porsche over Eddie Vedder. The Chevrolet Corvette has come up from behind there in second place. And then it's Premium Dudes in third, Atlanta Speedworks in fourth in the number 718, followed by Valerian Steel. Then it's Fing Dog Racing, Team Infinity, and then we have... Um, the uh, Marathon Motorsports TLM car, Wilson Daly, and Madfast Autosport rounding out the top 10. Now, if we look at the standings by class, Madweg Motorsports leads A class, according to what I'm seeing here. Uh, B class, I'm going to have to do some digging. Um, looks like it's going to be a sled bull, as best as I can see. Um, is re leading B class, C class, Team Salem, D class, Eddie Vedder, and EC. It's the GMW, the car number 889, uh, BMW, leading that class. <clears throat> and then as we look down to F class, it looks like Kobe Racing still leading that class as well. So you have to remember that these are officially unofficial standings. So. <clears throat> Always take what we say with the grain of salt. And then throw it over your shoulder for good luck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unless I'm behind you because I don't want it in my eyes. Oh, okay. Well, Polly, you got protection for that. I have glasses. And yeah, exactly. Good protection yeah. is. Ideal uh, protection, huh? <laughs> more protection than I got. <laughs> you know, we saw the um, Wilson Daily car it was in second place earlier before that spin, and then now we're showing them in 11th. Uh, there's a couple of EC cars, so they're actually probably 10th, I believe. But it looks like that kind of hurt them a lot. Yeah, uh, I believe there was a one lap penalty issued for the uh, contact with the. Oh. Yes. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't yep. show up in the. Uh... Yep, one lap on 15. Yep. That when I looked at it earlier, the uh, verdict wasn't in. Yeah, it shows on the lo on the race logs. Yep. Now I see it. As they used to say in football, upon further review, yeah. review the wow. uh, the ruling on the field was the overturned. On the field was overturned, and yeah, looks like there was some contact between Prefect and from the ground up Motorsports as well. Um, that one's under review. That happened in turn one. Parts um, falling off of the seven twenty three. That's team nine hundred one. And a spin and continue from 974. That's Matt Green Fuel Tech. And from the number six car, that's Reeves Racing. But those were spin and continue. And, then and the now the 988 yep. bullet of Valerian Steel, one of our usually really strong cars, is stopped off track. They are currently shown in sixth. 
So actually fifth because we got an easy car leading. So well, fifth place car stopped off track. Fink Dog just passed him, so sixth. Yeah, they should be falling through the standings now. Yep, and then they went salmon. Not pink, it's salmon. It's salmon. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get in trouble for that one. Oh well. When I first started doing this, the guys would all say salmon. I was like, really? Like, how did y'all just come up with this idea that that's salmon? You know, but apparently the uh, developer of the app and web version or whatever, that's what they call it. Yeah, that's what he told me. Because they don't want to say pink either. <laughs> I don't know why you said that. <laughs> well, that's just looks... what he told me as we were talking through it that first time I looked at it. It looks like the cook with it, uh, color of cooked salmon, so there you go. I guess they didn't want to say orange, so it's kind of a pinky orange. Yeah, yeah. Which a good salmon does not ever cook is a nice pinky orange. So the Hera Flights uh, <clears throat> car, the S2000, they had a transmission issue, so they swapped the transmission. They brought a parts car, uh, got the trans swapped, got back out there, and then the quote unquote new transmission, the new used one, uh, it uh, died too. Mm. Mm. Frank put it well. Upon further review, that punt resulted in a fumble. Yeah. That's well put. <laughs> so the hit really did hurt them. <laughs> well, it did, yeah. They had to, yeah. they got that penalty. Working lap 100 now of this race. About eight hours and 50 minutes before we see that checkered flag, which would uh, fall around 11 o'clock tonight here at Eastern Standard Time in Daytona. Whoa, ooh, whoa, whoa. Ooh, ooh, whoops. <laughs> That's a little hot. Lots of tire lock up there going into the corner and then ends up going very gradual into, into the, that turn five. Set up for six here. The tires were like, I do not like this. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> His pit lane is starting to pick up again. We got a few guys ducking in there. Mad Bass, the team from um, Alabama, is up to 10th place overall. Well, actually, it's 9th place overall. And lurking right behind them. It's you guys. <laughs> exactly. Let's see who's driving. Matt, go, Matt. Matt, go, go. I'm assuming Matt's still in the car. So, uh, Tiffany or Polly, how is the uh, Civic coming along? So far, not much progress, Billy. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Wait, call me out, Billy. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, create conversation here. Sure you are. <laughs> Completely innocent. Well, no. actually, yes, I am, because I have no clue. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I can't Hold on. Let, let me change the subject real quick. So Project Merker asking, could I get a shout out to my friends, Bill and Dolores Stamper? They're big Champ Car fans and love the live stream. Absolutely. Shout out to you both, uh, Bill and Dolores. Thank you for being big Champ Car fans and enjoying the broadcast. So we appreciate having you listen in and watch today. Absolutely. And it, it, we appreciate you guys uh, protecting our phony baloney jobs. Absolutely. <laughs> it is that. 
Shout out to my friend Sean Yoder, who's uh, joined us on the chat. Hey, Sean. Um, so I will get to be able to test the uh, Mid Ohio repave very shortly, actually. Oh, yeah? In August, a couple of weeks before you guys get there, I will be at uh, school doing laps, so. Nice. Oh. I might even sneak up there before that. I'm trying to um, talk my husband into letting me go up there. Chin's going to do a Memorial Day Monday and Tuesday, and Memorial Day is my birthday. Yeah, so I got a better idea. I'm Memorial Monday. Day, you can come to Watkins Glen and race there. Yeah, but they have walls really close to the track. Mid-Ohio, you can do... It, just in wait, case wait, something wait, wait, turns wait. in from genius to dumb, you can just run through the grass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius. Wait a minute. Not this time, oh, I'm dumb. Yeah. Sometimes it happens that fast. You're like, oh, I got, oh, no, I, I don't have it at all. <laughs> I beg to differ with that statement because coming into the kink before the carousel, that wall is right there. Oh, I've, I've visited very close to that one. I don't really recommend that. Um, <laughs> but lost it like turn one and went over the pit out lane. And in my defense, though, I was on slicks and it started raining. But I didn't woe the car up enough. Well, I was saying uh, going into the carousel, mm -hmm. not coming out. Oh, over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that wall is right there. You know, but you're not looking at the wall there. You're looking at that the complete other way. Oh, I'm looking at that wall and praying not to hit it before I kick kick over the for that kink. The car goes where your eyes go. I, I know. <laughs> but doesn't mean my peripheral vision isn't on that wall going, eh, that wall's kind of close. I got to go that way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach you, Billy. We're going to get your eyes trained. Yep. Because car goes where the eyes go. Yeah, I know. Ryan Till yells at me all the time about that. So we say, go, look at that wall. Now, don't ever look at it again. <laughs> My, uh, uh, I did have uh, the instructor say to me uh, the last time I was there, uh, you've done this before, haven't you? Of course, I've seen him a bunch of times, so yes, I have done it before. It's always nice. Yes. Much better than them saying, you know, is this your first time? And you're like, no, I'm kind of six, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I always love getting in the car with a student, and they're like, oh, I've done the Porsche experience, and I've done this, and I've done that, and blah, blah, blah. And then you get in the car with them, and you go around the track, and you're like, oh, boy. It's going to be a long weekend. Oh, trust me. I've seen that before, too. There's people that struggle with ducks in a row sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that's scary in itself. Yeah, because they're trying to prove to you that they can drive, and it's very clear that that is not what it what you're they're yep. doing. Yep, we got someone on the apron coming out of the bus stop. Yeah, slowly, mm -hmm. and now he's uh, live. We can see him rounding the uh, the oval here very slowly on the apron, which is the best place he can be. Unless he starts dying, then he can be in a cut and get off but racers appreciate when you get the if you know you have a problem going caution here getting out of the way but that BMW is still coming uh, getting relatively close to pit in here has made it onto the front straightaway now going to 35 so this will be, eh, we're eh, eh, a little early for Atlanta Speedworks shown not turning laps down there in 29th. That's the number 981 car. That's it is Wilson Daly. No. It is Wilson Daly. Um, Trying to see where they are. Well, Did they make it in already and I missed them? No, that's not Wilson Daly. Okay. I saw him go down. Because yeah, they're car 15. Maybe they gotcha. just slowed down to the 35 and that's why they were on the 
apron. It's yeah, 606 shown is what they're calling here. Premium dudes have come in the pits, maybe. You'll both, see them. Both of the Salem's cars are coming in. This is the Section 8. Number 721, I think. Sorry, I have no eyes. Yeah, that's Deadbrook Motorsports, a BMW. Yep. Yep, there goes the hood, so. Is ketchup and mustard are slowly rolling in? I'm pretty sure I will get a text message very shortly <laughs> about uh, <clears throat> what happened last stint. There's the Marathon TLM car. So Eddie Vetter has the lead. Yep, he's been leading for a little bit again. And I'm seeing one of the uh, Atlanta Speedworks Porsche Boxsters going behind the wall. Yep. That is the one with the wing, I believe. So that may be... Uh, well, the car 981 for them has been shown in the pits, so... <clears throat> the 718 is shown not during laps, but, I mean, it could just be in the pits or purple 35. Yeah. But the 981 actually crossed the pit loop. Gotcha. So... Paul, he gets so it's to, not the one that Kyle's driving. Paul gets to do less math for a little bit. Right. <laughs> Hopefully just for a little bit. Yeah, Kyle's driving driving the leader. Uh, the, the cart was up front, the 715. 718? Uh, 718, rather. Yeah. Team Infinity there. Holding down fifth place. So the other... Um, Atlanta Speedworks car is in the pits now. There's a black flag being uh, displayed, but it's for 708, but it's just a courtesy black flag, which is... Um, Radio communication where, issue. Yeah, if, you, if your team is having trouble communicating with you to come in for the pit stop, you can go to, you can go to race uh, control and say, hey, would you guys black flag our guy so we can get him in here? Because we don't have any other way of communicating with them and then they'll they'll black flag to get them into the pits and they'll say yeah your your people want you go see your people that's yeah. the alpine auto racing program or your people don't want you <laughs> whatever's being the case and we call so. it a courtesy black flag as you probably suspected, we don't use pit boards in Champ Car. There's none of that going on. Everything is done either by radio or by uh, flagging. Especially not at Daytona. <laughs> There's not a pit wall to safely be behind. Yeah, I don't know how they used to do that. I, I guess they just walk out to the edge of the pit road cement or whatever and just hold up a board yeah have a plane landing in the background there yeah that is it shows how close the airport is to yeah. the track on the glide slope bring her in that is a delta pulling out the details of the race and of another the plane air traffic safely. control yeah <laughs> And <clears throat> two for two for one. <laughs> the Cessna behind it is landing also. You're one of those people who knows all about airplanes and can tell what kind of plane they are. No, I live like a mi two miles from an airport, so ah. I just hear noise a lot. Gotcha. <laughs> Some car people are also plane people too and they're like that's a b7 whatever da, da, da. and i'm like mm -hmm. my husband's one of those 
just my starts father, calling out random letters and numbers together and I wouldn't know if he was totally saying something made up or like if it's a real thing. I know very little about planes. The only thing I know about them is if I'm on it, I would really prefer it stay in the air till it's time to come down. That's, that's it. Um, my father is uh, into planes too, so. Yeah. But, you know. I think there's a lot of crossover in the yeah. plane and the car communities. I have been on a B-29, though. That was cool. The last uh, B-29 that ha is a flight-worthy. Fifi. Okay, the uh, first uh, Atlanta Speedworks, the 981, um, they're doing a driver swap to uh, Chris Stiles. And the 718, they're going to switch, and Todd Lamb is going to go in the car. Ooh, my buddy Chris said he would coach you. <laughs> you got all kinds of people wanting to coach you, Billy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got Will helping me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he probably is free, too. Depends. <laughs> Green flag is out. Atlanta Speedworks timed that pretty well. They're leaving the pit lane as the green flag comes out. So they're, you know. That was ideal for them. Yes. Didn't really I'm, get much better than that. I mean, they're a little bit stuck behind the eight ball because they're not clear of the pit lane, but they're on their way out, so they're not getting <clears throat> trapped, as mm -hmm. it were. All right, we're back on board with Eddie Vetter, and we'll see how they can do. They've probably done another driver change. Maybe someone more familiar with the track, and we might see uh, that performance pick up again. That is part of the beauty, I think, of the sport, especially with champ cars. You get all that variety. Everybody's kind of pushed into that variety of drivers. Yeah, you have to have a team of drivers. No driver can drive more than two hours at a time without at least an hour break. So you have to have a couple of different drivers. Oh, cool. Sometimes everybody's not on the same home build kind of thing or haven't been to that track or whatever. That car stopped over there. No. I didn't see anything, but that was not. Um, the red. I do know that we. There is only one person that has done the Iron Man for uh, the Champ Car I Racing series in one of their four-hour events. Yeah. He was promptly disqualified afterwards, but you know. He did all four hours by himself. That'd be uh -huh. Will Nanomaker. Uh -huh. I was out of town, so he wanted to do the Mid Ohio race. Okay. So he did all four hours by himself. He was counting on you and you you let him down? Yeah, I was I was in Ohio. I couldn't help him. I was doing my roller coaster thing. Oh, uh, you were playing. Yes. <laughs> See, that's the type of airplane I want to get into, but I know that uh, roller coasters are a lot safer because all they do is, you know, bolt you in and you're pretty much there. As long as you stay there, I guess. Because, you know, falling out of the sky, not mm -hmm. not a fun idea. Mm -hmm. That's why I'll never go skydiving. I'm in a perfectly... It's still on my list. I just don't know. I might not be able to jump out of a plane. I was like, I'll have to be in one of those situations where, like, they put you out of the plane if you won't come out on your own. Because that's probably all, the only way I'll come out of the plane. <laughs> I will never... I get never... up there and then be like, oh, on second thought, you can just take me back down there. <laughs> I will never leave a perfectly good airplane. 
Unless I need to. One of those bucket list things I want to do. I think I want to do. I'll think I want to do until I get up there, and then I'll be like, mm, never mind. It, it, it'll be like uh, Indiana Jones, the only way I have to jump out of a plane. Because, mm-hmm. you know, remember in the second one where they had to jump out of the plane on a rubber raft? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> I will not eat eyeball soup either. I know that looked pretty gross. Or monkey brains, for that matter. Mm-mm, I get real picky about stuff like that. <laughs> yep. So the 934 of subpar racing had to spin and continue in their Volkswagen Golf. Around turn one. You spin me right round, baby, right mm-hmm. round. Fitting song. Better when it's not you going round and round and round. There would be somebody else, but yes, unless you're on an office chair like a Polly and I am, and then you can go around and around and around and around. And then you throw up on the broadcast, and <laughs> everybody's like super excited about that. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> hope you're not eating lunch. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a quick commercial break here again and be back shortly. So make sure you stay with us. Plenty of racing on tap with Eddie Vedder leading the way. The Atlanta Speedworks team has turned 300 laps so far today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. TireRack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done. All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com.
located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors, and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that, a lot of that is due to the way our car can brake on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with OE matched friction formulations and fitment for 97% of cars on the road. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. All right. And welcome back to the TireRack.com Daytona 14 here at Daytona International Speedway. Paul Felton with Tiffany Alexander and Billy Salen calling the race for you. We're under caution, Billy. Yeah. You know why? Yes, I do. Why? The uh, RVA car has made an impact with the wall in turn one. Yeah, they, they backed out into the, it's actually around the turn two area where they, similar to what we saw earlier in the race where the, the blue Miata Got mm -hmm. turned around and and speared the wall. They've done something apparently similar to that. So just a little bit outside of our camera range. <laughs> he says, it's not a competition. <laughs> oh, it most definitely is. <laughs> uh, well. I think he's talking about the broadcast thing yeah, with the numbers. Yeah, I know. But it still is. I don't really care, but... I do. <laughs> okay. The more eyeballs on Champ Car, the more money comes in. Sure. That makes sense. And Tiffany's just over there uh, lying on her couch, you know. The, the special couch just rolling your eyes at us. <laughs> yeah, we'll give these guys a chance. The uh, It looks like they're going to put the uh, BMW on the rollback. Which usually means something's dripping. RVA has just had a tough start of the year, haven't they? Yeah. Both their cars broken. Now their EC car broken. So they're working on getting that loaded up. One of the Speedworks cars coming into the pits now. Uh, they were behind the wall and I believe came back out. All right. Well, if they did, they must have come out from a different area because they just passed. Mm, they just, they just drove know. by the exit there. But uh, that car is, looks like it is headed out. 
I don't know. I thought I saw it go behind the wall, so. Yeah, we did see one, but that one's got the yellow emblem. It's got the yellow hood. I'm not sure that the other one did, but we'll see once they get going again. We can kind of see on the yeah. race hero who all circulating, who isn't. Damn it. So, thanks for uh, joining us here on Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. Hope you folks are having a fabulous weekend. It's incredible out here at Daytona this weekend. And if you couldn't make it this weekend, we hope you join us next year at this time. We're out here every year at the uh, towards the beginning of the year here in March. And, uh, man, it's always great. It's always a good time. Or if you can't do that, if you can't do that, come to our many, many other events. My personal favorite is the Champion Dog at the Glen, but I'm a slightly biased. Another great race, though. Good point. Another great event. And sometimes that one does not sell out. So you might have an opportunity to get in there. Go racing at Watkins Glen. I knew that was Glen. one of Doc's favorite events. Oh, man. It's he incredible. Loved, well, he loved both of these these races. About the Watkins Glen and the Daytona race. Um... And another good track that uh, I noticed didn't have very many signups, Nelson Ledges. Yeah. The schedule around here. What's that? Well, the Dad. next broadcast will be for Watkins Glen, so we'll be doing that one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. See Tiffany, there you go. You can you could just move your little event to the blue guardrails. There's only <laughs> one spot that the guardrails are way too close to the track. Otherwise, you're fine. Just don't hit the wall. Don't hit the wall. That's always the goal. Don't bring any blue home. No blue. Let's see. So Watkins Glen is May 25th and 26th, and Nelson Ledges is still a ways out. At July 13th and 14th. Before that, we have a Sebring race at the end of uh, June that's going to be a kind of a different format. It's going to be 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So it's a 12 hour race from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So if you like night racing, this one's for you. Yeah, no thanks. It's way too hot still. <laughs> I think that's why they picked to go at night. I can't see at night. So yeah, but still way too hot i don't do anything below the or yeah below the mason dixon in the summer <laughs> yes because i don't want to die well it's like you know you kind of get your body prepared for it you know? yeah no i work in a no. 38 degree cooler there's no preparing you're never gonna be prepared for that yeah always do the chin july event at barber and it's always warm to say the least like acclimating for summer racing 101. Although I do have to give it to uh, Wayne. He wears his sweatshirt during summertime to simulate the car. I, there's no way in heck you'd get me to do that. So Marathon Motorsports has come in. Is there a slowly loading up the uh, RVA car. It's on the flatbed now, so should be rolling out shortly. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Be sure and like and subscribe if you would like to, you know, stay in touch with us whenever we go live for these broadcasts. And if you have any information that you'd like to pass on to any of us, you can do it through my Facebook. I may not get the message right away because if I'm not a friend of yours, it won't pop up. But you can get it to Tiffany or Polly. We'll, we'll always be glad to share information. On to the rest of the viewers. Best to send it to Tiffany or yourself because, you know, I'm kind of lazy and I don't like working, so 
I don't Whatever. tend to look at Ollie's stuff. Ollie's just busy. He has so much going on. <laughs> I, th there's a reason I let that one go. I, I, I was going to... Need to d I need to divert a little bit of responsibility in, in that Tiffany's really good at it. I know you're really good at it, Billy, so you guys are great resources for passing along and race information. It's surprising how much information is out there that the listeners have that we don't have. Yep. So they really do add to the show. You guys really do add to the whole effort to enrich the uh, the production here, so it's appreciated. I yes. appreciate it. As we are back to yellow and shortly to green. Yeah, it couldn't be more perfect for a marathon as they just are rolling out of the pits to pick up a green flag here in a moment. Wow. Ideal. It's like they planned it. We better check into it, Tiffany. Could be a conspiracy. And the uh, <laughs> uh, Mini Cooper's coming in and the uh, yellow hooded... Uh, uh, the Blaine of Speedworks car is back in the pits. Yeah. Now this time they're stopping at their pit box and uh, they're going out to get serviced. It looks like uh, looking at that right front corner, Billy, and they put something in front of the wheel there. So I'm not sure. Fuel, what... maybe. Oh, that's a, that's the catch can. Yeah. yeah. So this, the, they fuel these Porsches in the left front fender, don't they, Tiffany? Or the yeah. right front fender. Right front, yep. Yeah. So in the uh, Clark Motorsports car, um, Michael Fountain is in that car now. And I was checking in with the Missing Link guys, and uh, they said they uh, they uh, lost a head gasket kind of early on this morning, and they're kind of done. Oh. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, they're cheering on their sister team, um, Clark Motorsports. Clark is uh, currently shown in 14th. Trying to see if there's easy cars ahead of them. Just the one in the top, so that'd be 13th. Bing Dog has worked their way back up there. They're shown in 7th, actually 6th now. Our top four, five, all our top five, one, two, three, four, five, are all cars that we picked. Well, of course. Like, not even anything else. <laughs> I think that means we're good, right? There's Something like that. <laughs> I'll take it. Setting up the pass on the BMW. So, uh, let's see. Cars shown in the pits. Action Raceworks in 19th. Atlanta Speedworks, number 996. We're trying to get that car back out there. Sled Bull Racing. Balthazar Racing. Balthazar Motorsports. Uh, Motorworks there in 40th. Momo Champ. Rosmar Racing. Uh, Alpine Auto Racing, Equip Octane in their Mini in 47th, also not turning laps. So I the other guys ahead are doing it. Momo is doing a driver change. Maybe. Um, so follow-on mission asked, uh, what motor is in the C-Class Camaro? That I don't know. Somebody in YouTube land might know, but that's not something we would have information on. Some kind of V6, probably. Oh, the uh, two brothers racing uh, Nissan is back out there. Whoa, somebody went way wide in one. Yeah. Got a little lost, took the scenic route. Getting all their money's worth. Yeah. Sure that all was that the rocket ham car. It did kind of look at that, didn't it? Mm -hmm. As long as it's not burning its ham, it's fine. Speaking of which, does rocket ham have a stream? 
He probably sent it to me. Yeah, I think he did, and I, I haven't, I haven't captured it yet. Tiffany let that one go. Did you notice? Mm -hmm. Well, typically I have uh, no, so I, many dropouts. Yeah. Um, but today it's been pretty good. Well, it's been relatively cool. It's only supposed to get up to 70 degrees today. So. I thought, I thought it said 80. Um, uh, Hiller is now in the uh, Momo Champ car. Yeah, I saw Hiller at uh, registration yesterday. Shook his hand. We exchanged a few brief, kind words, and he went on his way. Currently 68. Nah, he's not that old, is he? No, no, I'm studying with the temperature. Oh, okay, okay. That's funny. I don't have many Tiffany's, so I gotta, gotta use what I got. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll laugh at your jokes, Polly. Thank you. I don't have Doc around anymore to laugh at my jokes, so... The burden's now upon me. <laughs> 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 I laugh occasionally. Yes, you do. What are friends for? That's right. What are friends for? They can laugh at your jokes. They can laugh at you when you fall over. Mm. As they help you back up. Yes. You laugh at me without offering your hand to help me up. I might punch you. <laughs> If I ever get up off the floor. Uh, 256 spinning continue. That's the Rocketham car. So that probably was what we saw. Mm. And then 241 is the Brick City Racing Miata. And they reported it as going slow. Low and slow. And they may be having some kind of mechanical issue with that car. Motivational issues. Mm-hmm. It's too bad Chris Farley is still not alive. You could get him, hire him as your motivational speaker for your cars. And unfortunately, death is kind of a permanent condition. Yeah. 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 But the odds of it happening, I mean, it's I mean, only going to happen on once. It. Yeah. You know, so... The number of times I thought I was going to die and didn't, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's encouraging me. Yeah. That I'm probably going to be okay. Because there's only one time when I'm going to be right. True. It'll be when you least expect it. And here comes the uh, USS Enterprise back out onto the track. So in the 214 of Covey Racing, uh, Bryce Covey is in the car right now, and they're looking for a driver change coming up fairly soon. Uh, they're going to put Justin Devine, Devine, something like that, in the car next. Yeah, and I think they're leading the F class too, by the way. So they've been holding on to that position for some time. The M2R I think you team are is correct. behind them and uh, down quite a bit. I'm a little surprised we don't have more F-Class participation at this event. We got a lot of EC, which is pretty common. Mm -hmm. I'm getting reports from Atlanta Speedworks that the 981 is having shifter issues. Very difficulty shifting, and they've taken it back to the garage. Mm. Okay, that's why they keep okay appearing and disappearing. So there you have it, folks. If you're following the Atlanta Speedworks teams for that fundraiser, one of the cars now behind the wall with shifter issues, which makes Polly's life a little bit easier. Yeah, no, not really. I mean. I, I gotta add it either way. It's fine. I I would love to see him out there. I mean, yeah. It's uh, 
Yeah, I it's mean, for a good cause, and it's exactly and it's good to have all the cars out there. More fun that way. Yeah. Until it isn't, but. Well, beat them when they're at their best. That's that's when it really counts. Eddie Vetter back up at the uh, front of the field here. Eddie Vetter leads the uh, leads the race by 29 seconds over Team Salen Mustard, who's about a minute and 22 seconds up on the Atlanta Speedworks car in third. In fourth, it's Premium Dudes back just four seconds from the Speedworks Porsche. And then it's Team Infinity with their Infinity J30. 10 seconds behind Premium Dudes. And then we have Fing Dog Racing, Marathon Motorsports TLM, Wilson Daly, Team Salem Ketchup, and Madwag Motorsports rounding out the top 10. And Madwag is leading A-Class. That's your first A-Class car. And B-Class looks like uh, currently being led by, I believe it's uh, pronounced Bloy Racing. It's B L. OX. I guess that that's how it's pronounced. So the 241 that was reported moving slowly at Brick City Racing is now reported stopped, and uh, somebody is telling me that they uh, may have run out of fuel. Yeah, that that's a good way to get your car unmotivated. Yeah, they they kind of really like having a little gas. In. Yeah, it was reported over and turned. Two it says two S. That is, but um, I don't see a car over here in turn two from my vantage point. So I'm not sure if it's already uh, moved, or maybe it's or in, typed or something, or maybe it's in uh, NASCAR two. Depending uh, on. There was oh, was here it is. It's track. actually over here coming out of uh, four. So it's uh, yes, just trying to get to uh, pit in. I'm not sure it's going to make it, though. It looks like it's come to a complete stop out there. Yes, it has. It's down on the apron, a complete stop at uh, right about where the apron widens out just before the chicane that they had for the NASCAR race there. So that's in NASCAR 4. So that'll be a caution. I suspect you are correct. And here comes somebody down on the apron. This is not Ooh. ideal. Yeah, he's all right. There's a lot of room on that apron, but yeah, he came up on kind of quick there. And now he's uh, there's another car that uh, came up behind the stopped car, passed him on the apron, and now has uh, headed down towards the pits. I think he was... Sort of aiming for the pits as we go to caution. And was down on the apron very early, actually, in the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was already on the apron. So, anyway, back to caution we go. It, pronounced uh, blocks. Yes. Well, until we find out for sure, we're both just guessing, right? Mm -hmm. Your guess is as good as ours. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all night. Try the hot dogs. <laughs> mm, I got 74 spinning continue, but I don't have a 74. Mm. 76. Might have got typed in wrong. Right. I just blame the guy that types it in. Mm-hmm. He who shall not be named. Mm -hmm. Looks like... Is that for... No, that, I don't think that's for it. It's under the hood there. I can't tell. You know, it would be nice if I had brought in my binoculars, but I was a dumb dumb head. Eh, is what it is. It does show the poor it's not turning laps. Yep. And Prefect racing in the pits. Yeah, I see Prefect. I don't see Prefect. Fendover racing, you show me in the pits. 
So, yeah, that is the four idiots uh, working four? away. I can't really tell because it's. Hmm. But it's their color scheme. Silver and orange? Yes. Yes, that is the four idiots because I can tell from now that they got the hood down. A few customers coming into the pits now. One more hour and we'll be at the uh, the uh, normal race length. The halfway point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be seven hours in. Okay, and I'm going to go take a nap. And <laughs> see you and, guys. And, and... <laughs> yeah. And I'll be gaga goo goo at about uh, nine o'clock. Right. Yeah, we haven't gotten much racing since the last. Local. Yeah. Um. So, it's Blocks, a California company that sells high-performance parts for Honda mainly. Oh, okay. So, there you go. Learn something new every day. There you have it, folks. You heard it here. And then somebody posts, Blocks is a Canadian team running a Cobalt. <laughs> Figures. All right. So with that, we'll take another commercial break. Atlanta Speedworks now turning has turned 315 laps across all three cars. Lots of racing yet to come. So stay with us. You're watching Champ Car Live presented by AutoZone. Eddie Vetter is your leader. We'll be right back. Welcome to TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979. With our unmatched selection of branded products, finding what fits your vehicle and is right for you and how and where you drive has never been easier. Through helpful online shopping tools that include our professional hands-on reviews done at the introduction of a tire and consumer reviews that give real-world feedback over the life of the tire, you can make the right tire choice and find exactly what you need. And if you prefer to talk to someone, our tire testers, our sales team, are available on the phone. And that's how we get you the right tire for you and your vehicle for where and how you drive. At AutoZone, you get what you need when you need it. Got a today job? Pick it up free same day at your local AutoZone. More of a tomorrow project? Order as late as 10 p.m. with free next day delivery. Getting the job done just got easier. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com.
RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Bring on the frozen tundra. The grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Reliable parts. In unreliable conditions. That kind of reminds me of our broadcast. <laughs> well, I, Polly, I was about reliable. I was about to say you've watched <laughs> these commercials way too many times. Uh, that one got me tickled. I I know. I mean, I put these commercial runs together myself, but <laughs> thinking about, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably yeah. just. It could be the three hours of sleep that I had. And maybe it's, uh, I don't know, getting a little punch drunk here. I am drinking some Powerade they have in the little cafeteria next to us. And uh, they're taking good care of us here at Daytona. Welcome, everybody, to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. The TireRack.com Daytona 14, of course, at Daytona International Speedway. With Tiffany Alexander and Billy Salem. And yours truly calling the race for you today. Gorgeous day. Or at attempt, Daytona Beach. attempting to uh, call the race. Well, see, essentially what what we do, what sports broadcasters do, is simply point out the obvious. 
That's really all we're doing is just or pointing out what we see, which is what everybody else sees. That's essentially, certainly, that's what's on a football game. We have a little more information. Or we just make it up. <laughs> that that does happen, yeah. Like Beloy, for instance. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be blocks. What's up? So we Pit have lane warning. Uh, black flag for somebody. Yeah. Uh, probably, I'm, gonna, I'm assuming this is... Uh, it's kind of strange. Cause it, it says, in vegetation. <laughs> 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 Must have gone off into the grass, and so it says black flag other, but then it says pit lane warning. So I'm not sure those two kind of conflict. Are they coming in or not? But anyway, over in corner five, we'll land the plane here and tell you it's car five uh, thirty-eight, which is the K2 Autosport Camaro, 2000 Chevrolet Camaro we brought in and congratulated on their driving skills that was great we really enjoyed watching you <laughs> traversing through the grass there we appreciate your the landscapers appreciate your lawn mowing efforts it's really not necessary <laughs> we got this <laughs> well, landscapers I mean, look, don't appreciate your uh landscaping look at the, the uh the trioval it's it's lovely <laughs> is we're pushing the uh, the uh, Section 8 Mustang behind the wall again. Apparently they felt a transplant was in order. Pick it up on the splitter, deposit it in the trial. <laughs> Seed transplant like a like the bees, you know, mm -hmm. carry the pollen. Uh, I believe Rockingham is going behind the wall too. Oh, no. I didn't even get a chance to put their video up. That's too bad. They're in-car camera footage. It's under motivation. It's just, I don't know if it's unmotivated or what's going on, but they are pulling behind the wall. Boxster, um, they're putting in the owner now, Mike Donovan. Okay, um, full course you. yellow. We've got oh, uh, uh, car to con car contact from. I, I can't tell the car numbers. Uh, eight, eight seventeen is uh, part of it Matt at Travis. this point. Yeah. So. Matt Travis racing and some other cars. So. Maybe. Heading back to caution, obviously, this uh, video a bit delayed because he's still passing cars. Meanwhile, we got cars that are just creeping along. And, uh, yeah, Tiffany, I, I just I don't know if there's something you can do about your settings for your microphone because... Having trouble hearing me? Yeah, because if you just... Because it's not really on your mic, like it's on the camera microphone on the laptop, then it's... Sometimes it's just hard to hear you're coming in. I don't, there should be one setting for the bridge and then one setting for the laptop, what it picks as a microphone. I would, I'm guessing maybe one of those two isn't right, but I don't, I'm not sure why it wouldn't be using the right one. Especially mm -hmm. the um, the bridge, that should definitely be pointed at the microphone, but I don't know. How it looks on your confuser there. <laughs> and they are confusers, by the way. Have you guys ever seen the uh, Windows Waltz? Hmm. So, uh, someone took all the Windows noises. And oh, okay. <laughs> That's the Windows Waltz, okay. Yes, and uh, had a orchestra play them. I can't think of anything more exciting. 
<laughs> it's actually pretty funny because they had the the whomp noise. Yeah. And then they say a certain word that I cannot pronounce on the air. Oh, it's they have lyrics with it. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's only one lyric. Oh. <laughs> and okay. it's a it's a word that I cannot and shall not say. All right. But it's hilarious hearing it from the orchestra. <laughs> You'll have to look it up. Is they're doing the uh, cool suit stuff and other stuff in the front of the uh, Infinity Shark car. Back to yellow. Yeah, I'm not sure what the caution was for exactly. There were that didn't talk about a penalty being levied against anyone, and they were just sort of scanning the track over there at race control, and then. They're sending us on our way, so that's the important thing, is we're back to green racing. So, yes, Rocket Ham and Kobe Racing in their Acura Integra shown in the pits, as well as Prefect crossing the pit loop. And Team Infinity shows that they ducked into the pits, too. Yep, they're coming right out right now. Or now. Or now. Yep. <laughs> yep, we're on board with them as they're working their way out of the pits. And, uh, yeah, you know, the USS Enterprise, I'm, they're, they're still out there, still slugging away at it. And uh, Marathon Coach also out there slugging away. The, you're starting to notice some gaps in the field, though, so... Less and less cars out there. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. I would have to change my driver's suit after that one. Now, this is going to be a little tricky coming up through here. It's so fast, left-hander, and you want to be on the inside. You want to clip this on the inside. Mm, just, it just rides it on the outside. Yeah. Handle it pretty good. Job for six here. Yeah, my friend Johnny Robinson was clocked here. Car slow on the inside heading up to the bus stop. Was clocked at 155 miles an hour. In oh, the wow. Robin Bank uh, Saab 9-3. Said he uh, picked up a tow from the Enterprise. And someone caught him on the speed gun. At a buck 55. It's pretty good. I can't drive. 155. <laughs> this one seems to be the only microphone setting that's working. So. Okay. Not sure. Is it echoey still? Uh, e e yeah. But yeah. If, if you touch the microphone, do, can you tell which microphone it is using? Like if you rub your finger across it, does it? I just, I did. Oh, um, I uh, hear it in my headset. Huh. You hear, you hear the rubbing effect? Yeah. Huh. Okay. So maybe that is the right one. I'm not hearing it on our end. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Not the normal setting. It's the microphone array, Intel Smart Sound Technology for Digital Microphones. Not the codec, USB audio codec. That's that, that would probably be the codec would probably be the one you want. Right. But when I put it on that one, you can't hear anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, I don't know. 
All right, well, we just got by the Betty White machine again. Marathon Motorsports in sixth place. And they are fifth in C class. Mostly C class dominating the front of the field now. Eddie Vetter now stretched out their lead. It's uh it's only about two seconds as Team Salem Mustard is not giving up without a fight. It's turning similar lap times. They lost a couple seconds on that last lap. We saw a number of cars, saw a couple of cars on that last lap that were moving slowly, but they must have been able to get themselves all the way back around. I believe we have a car, yep, we have a car stopped over by the uh, bus stop. Right straight in front of me, kind of. So, yep, yeah, right out there. He's way out there. Way to the inside, so they'll probably have to throw a caution to get him anyway, but he attempted at least. Yeah. And racers do appreciate that. So Alex is saying, go, Mikey, go, number 43. So 43 is Action Raceworks. And they're a 1999 Chevrolet Camaro. Well, that one I, we can't answer. Someone asked uh, when the C5 Corvette will be uh, included in the list of approved cars. I am no longer on that committee. Yeah, that would be a question for the the tech. I don't know if they they still have the tech uh, tech desk. Tech desk. Yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be a question for them. Speaking of Corvettes. This one seems to be doing pretty well. well I think he remotivated the car, so he's slowly creeping forward. He has moved behind the palm tree instead of in, uh, before it. Yeah, I see he's um, starting to move now. And this came to a stop again. <laughs> now he's in a bad spot. So, it's a 721 of Dead Broke. And appropriately named Dead Broke Motorsports. Oh, okay. There we have the report. Yeah. Well, we don't know if he's dead. He might be out of gas. We've seen that happen, too. So, Tiffany, did you add anything else to the uh, homestead as far as chicks or any I other? I got a total of five baby chicks. Nice. Yeah, we had two that uh, were a little behind the schedule, and uh, so we ended up having to put them in the incubator, but they came out fine. Good. I was really surprised. So, so far, so good. They're really cute. I think I sent you a picture of yep. some of them. Yeah, you did. Yeah. We've never incubated them before, but the 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 hen that was sitting on them after the other the first chicks, uh, you know, got out of the shell and everything and were ready to run around. Then she abandoned the other two eggs, thinking that they were not going to hatch. I guess, but they were actually not quite as far along as the ones that she was sitting on. So 
We had to put them in the incubator, but they both made it. So, yay. Big crowd of cars coming through. I noticed the the flagger on the stand here on the front straightaway, giving them the old razzle dazzle passing flag, <laughs> aka the passing flag. AKA you're in a race, but it's not with just you in watch it. Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> there was a whole lot of cars, so you might as well just say, yeah, there's somebody probably trying to pass you right now, just so you know. <laughs> there's a lot of cars on the racetrack. Yep. Kind of like that flagger over at uh, the turn six there. He's just constantly waving. Oh, yeah. With this many cars on course, like, I bet we keep them real busy. My arm can't do it anymore. <laughs> I bet his arm hurts after this race. Yeah, Eddie Vedder has passed the EC car that was in the lead. Yeah. He's now a gapped Team Salem Mustard by four seconds for that lead position. As the uh, safety crews are working on picking up that stranded mobile. I don't know why we're still green, but okay. I think they're just tired of throwing yellows, maybe. So that is, as we said, uh, car number 62. As the USS Enterprise pulls into pit lane. Oh, no, that, that was a pit lane speeding violation against the open throttle 62 car. The car that stopped is 721. The Dead Broke Motorsports team. And they are pulling him behind the uh, cut right now by Lake Lloyd. Da -da -da. They were able to do that one without having to go for 35. Good job, guys. So Pro Probably because he was so far Close out of the, the way. Cut in. Or cut out, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So far out of the way that he was savable, as it were. So now um, the mustard car has passed the EC car to confirm their second place spot. Half an hour till the uh, the halfway point of this race. Mm -hmm. Slowly, but the block is creeping away. And don't call me Shirley. That's another great movie. It is. The red area is for dropping people off. Picking <laughs> people up. No, it's not. <laughs> There's no parking in the white zone. There's always been parking in the white zone. The red zone's always been for loading and unloading. <laughs> I gotta add that to my rewatch list. What's your vector, Victor? Is the Section 8 Mustang returns to the pit lane? After from being behind the wall for repairs. So maybe it's repaired now? Fingers crossed? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe the gremlins have gone away. Mm -hmm. 
or I've been exercised or fed, whichever. I'll say and throw water on them. Well, you throw water on it to make it run faster. Now, if you put water like on a little there. Mowgli thing, ooh. Ooh, ooh. then it makes more gremlins, right? Something like that. Can't feed them after midnight. Put water on them. I don't remember. I just remember seeing that movie long, long ago. The land far, good. far away. But, yes, uh, Tiffany, you have to add... Uh, uh, Army of Darkness to your uh, list. And I'm not going to be mad at you afterwards? No, it's funny. <laughs> it's Bruce Campbell. It's a B, uh, a B horror movie. He's a B-list celebrity. B-list celebrity, okay. Which is why I was so shocked to see him in the... Uh, Marvel movies. Was he in the Marvel movies? Yeah, he was in one of them. Mm -hmm. The the newest Doctor Strange. He was the hot dog guy that was getting beat over the head with. Of course, you would know who the hot dog guy is. <laughs> that was funny. Yes, it was. Okay. All right, guys, so we're going to take another commercial break and be back in just a few. And we are watching Eddie Vedder leading this race and begin to separate themselves from the rest of the field. Atlanta Speedworks now accumulates 336 laps so far today. Let's see how many they can get. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you ship directly to a mechanic. Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have like a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. 
Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. Seriously? Oh, come on. No, no, no. You for real? <laughs> dale, dale. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just a cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. Welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. Back under caution here at Daytona International Speedway. Code 35 is the call. And we're looking across here to see if we can see what the major malfunction is. We do have a car coming into the pit slowly off the apron, maybe. Or maybe they're just riding the apron as uh, many of the other cars are. I think they're riding the apron. So, yeah, race control. Looks like we got a uh, safety vehicle moving over there in front of the bus stop area. Voila. And they are leaving the track surface. It doesn't appear they have a car. Maybe they picked up a part that was laying out there on the track. Not sure. Uh, some kind of retrieval completed, I guess, huh? Yep. So, uh, Tony Kart driver, or Tony Kart racer said, who doesn't know the legendary Bruce Campbell? Shame on you. <laughs> yes, he oh, is legendary. Sorry. And Polly is playing with the camera and trying to put me on the camera. And I said... <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> no, I'm just, we've got one of the cameras here that we thought was a, there was something wrong with it, and I'm not so sure that there is. Just checking it. So, Eddie Vedder leading, uh, not much has changed in that respect. The uh, El uh, Eclo Country Motorsports has come into the pits there out of 10th spot. One of the EC cars here this weekend. Quite a few EC cars. And the rule is with Champ Car, if there's at least uh, five EC cars that start the race, 
And there will be uh, a trophy awarded for the winner of EC. Even though EC, so EC is a kind of a class that, that rides outside of, it's not kind of, it is a class that rides outside of the champ car rule set. So for EC, which is, stands for the exception class, it is a, a class that is not eligible for what's called a podium position. So they would not, they're not really competing with the other classes uh, in champ car, which qualify according to our rules, like the A, B, C, D, and F class cars. So they're sort of a class of their own, and, and we're kind of hoping to groom them into <laughs> a regular classed car so they can compete with us on the same level as everyone else. So sometimes those cars can be uh, quite a bit faster, have larger gas tanks. There's any number of things that would put them outside of the rule set for a champ car, and therefore they don't really qualify for any of those classes. And uh, But the idea is we hope that they'll start EC, but then they'll move into a regular classed car. As we are back to green flag racing. Yep. Yep, they're back to it again. And kind of like what Tiffany said, similar to what Kyle was talking about too. They are sort of off camera uh, talking um, about the difficulty of this stop and go stuff. S getting into a rhythm and, and uh, getting comfortable with the car and, and really learning the car well, especially if you're not, in, in his case, not really familiar with that car trying to get you know a handle on it and as soon as you just kind of get up to speed with the tires hot you start to get the feel of it and you go back to caution it can be pretty difficult for a driver too so Eddie Vedder though doesn't seem to be having any trouble they did bring a driver this weekend that was new to the car was trying to figure it out and figure out the track and uh, so they had uh, some some teething issues there to figure out but it looked like it hurt them too much. They're back in the lead of the race. Team Salem Mustard, only three seconds behind them, though. They're not losing a lot of ground as uh, they go back to ca from caution to green. See how things go here. The Porsche, pretty good pace. Mm -hmm. um, the Porsche with the fa fastest lap time of 214.8 to the Vets to 12.5. And uh, I would imagine the Porsche, Billy, has pretty good pretty well figured out the fuel issues of you know, when do we need to stop and yeah. when do we know can you know conservation but uh the vet has probably got some question marks you know behind it because it is a relatively new bill and mm -hmm. they, they probably haven't raced here before with it at least not to my knowledge and uh so there probably is some some question marks about you know what are we gonna how much fuel we're we gonna use per driver and that kind of thing and plus each driver uses different amounts of fuel because, you exactly. know, depending on how much you're coasting or on the accelerator or whatever. Yeah, different driving styles are going to demand different amounts of fuel. So uh, that's going to factor into things, as things too. So. Coasting. What's Who's that? Coasting. You say coasting? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I roller coasting. <laughs> My wife rolls her eyes. Does that count? Mm. I got the best wife in the world. Sorry. Sorry, guys. She's taken. Mad Fast Auto Sport. 2001 325 CI. down the inside into the bus stop. So in the 241 for Brick City Racing, um, good. Uh, Dave Gooden is out of the car and David Martin is in the car. The shark car up ahead of Marathon Motorsports. Traveling together through the infield here. Coming up to turn four. Closing the distance there. Let's see them as they come through six here. In the uh, 980 
1985 for Bent Over Racing. Uh, Corey is back in the car. I'm assuming that's the same Corey that started out this morning in the car. Okay. He was complaining about it being hot and all those 35s, the purple 35s and stuff. So maybe he'll uh, get a lot of green lap driving this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Or some of this attrition is out of the way, maybe. Did I say that? And then just... Wow, that was quick coming down the inside on Marathon. It looked like the Marathon car had a little trouble making the downshift. Probably wasn't quite as clean and fast getting into that corner. And another competitor behind him just whistled by around the outside going into the bus stop. That was wild. Clearly the faster car is the... 718 is in and are rolling down the pit lane. They have gone with the convertible option for that car. And there's Betty White waving at us. As she goes behind. So, just got word that the roof blew off of the 718 of Atlanta Speedworks. Yep. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> What's the matter, Billy? Don't you like the cameras? No. <laughs> This looks like it's the camera's like up on a, a 20 foot platform, but actually it's not. It's actually just on the edge of the racetrack. Um, there, the banking kicks in right here. And so because it's a long lens, it looks like it's way above the racetrack. Actually, it's just up on the top of the banking in that area. And it's looking so far down the track that it look, makes it look appear as though I mean, it is high, but it's because it's at the top of the top of the banking and the cars going by makes it vibrate yeah that's the vibration it's just looking so far down the track this camera is much further away there's TLM going through we'll pick it up with them and the camera's right there that tower So Jason Hickman is back in the Floridians Motorsports car, the number 51, at 944. And because the roof flew off, they had to, um, now they're required, the Atlanta Speedworks guys are required to have arm restraints. They're running without a roof. Um, so. One of their guys had to run back to the motorhome and get the arm restraints, and they're going to have to install those in the oh. car. To be able to continue with that car, yeah. Arm restraints, my favorite. Yay. <laughs> well, debris being reported in turn seven. That's over in the bus stop area. It's better than having your arms chopped off. Absolutely. And did... Did we report the 718 uh, with the meatball? Yep. Okay. That's the roof blowing off. Yes. That's what you just got done talking about. It's the land speed works. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. Okay. So, spin and continue on car 570. Family tradition racing, a Chevy Corvette, 1990. Over in turn three. You spin me right round, baby, right round. Oh, yeah, that would be good. But I would get, they would they'd flag me on yeah. that, so. Can't I know. Can't use any, any cool music like that. I know. Unless you get the, uh, the, uh, band's, uh, <laughs> permission. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure we could get it with enough money. <laughs> but that, that would be a great mm -hmm. for all of the instant replays that just... <laughs> that's the music that kicks in when we go to instant replay. You spin me around. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Somebody knows that band. See if they want to donate that to us. <laughs> Since we're, you know, poor. Such a high budget deal here. Yeah, that. Still at a uh, two hundred ninety-nine viewers, so. Yeah, welcome everybody to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. It is the TireRack.com Champ Car Endurance Series race at Daytona International Speedway, the TireRack.com Daytona 14, our annual trek to Daytona Beach, Florida, for this 14-hour race that we enjoy. And uh, you're with Tiffany Alexander, Billy Salen, and yours truly calling the race for you today. Seven hours and ten minutes unofficially remain in this race. So that's right, the checkered flag flies at 11 o'clock tonight. We're not expecting any rain. In the low 80s right now. And that's expected to be about it. Nice and sunny and beautiful out. It's been a great weekend so far. We've had a number of uh, cautions today due to car <laughs> malfunctions, breakdowns. So it's it only, says it's only 66 degrees out there. I thought it would be warmer, but it's not. No. It it's all the high is only supposed to be 70 degrees today. So what about the humidity? Because that's feels like it's 66. So it's right on point. Feels like and is. If it looks like it and feels like it, it probably is it. Maybe. <laughs> And Paul Honeycutt says, DCRA member Anthony Couch, Team Section 8, go, go, go. Tiffany, have missed you at Road Atlanta with Chin. Oh, sorry. Need to get back over there. Yeah, that, that's one of those tracks that I... Uh, that what? S, that, that S is section scares me. The oh, that is, that's my favorite part of the track. Yeah, the, the car. downhill S's. The downhill S's. I've played yeah, enough Forza part. where I know that you should see it in person. Crap Thanks. can go. Crap can Amazing. go wrong in a hurry. There. I mean, there's a lot of places. I mean, the 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 scariest part of that track is the eleven. I think it. Yeah, the last turn coming mm, on the very yeah. short front straightaway yeah. with the. Concrete walls not that far from the course, and you're. Yeah, we going got a slow quickly. car coming through. Uh, yep, he's been riding the apron uh, since before he got to the bus stop, and he's continuing on. He's going relatively slow. Still out there, we can see him from here. We're talking yeah. at least half the speed, maybe a third of the speed of the rest of the field. Um. Yeah, I took Jenny around, rode Atlanta. Uh, this year when we were when we were there and she couldn't believe it. It's was it this year to... or was it last year? It was last year we did it. I don't know. They all they all kind of blend together. You but, were the, you were there in person this year and last year, I guess. So yeah, yeah, it was it was. I think it was last year. I took her around. I don't know. Can't, seems like it was just yesterday. That all your trouble seen so far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think it was Nothing last like year. Coming down that thing. Yeah. And I was only doing like 50 mile an hour too. And it's like, wow. <laughs> it was cool. It's pretty cool. I rode Atlanta. Yeah. I know. It's intense. I would, I would love to do it someday. Yeah. I've got unsettled business at Road Atlanta. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, my dad worked really hard to get there for the runoffs when he ran with the SCCA, made it. I went out. He had some engine trouble during practice, barely got like two laps on the track for qualification to get qualified for the race. And that was the only seat time he had on the track. So oh, he barely wow. got any time in. And we went green. And it was on the first or second lap. The car 
just broke loose and he backed into an embankment and the mm. car stalled and it would not refire later to find out that he had backed into the embankment plugged the exhaust pipe with clay there's so plenty of that there it would start and after all that he just had to sit on the wall and watch the race go by I would be pee you know what he was still mad about it like a year before he died he was still mad not long ago back to yellow we go yeah and i feel like you know what there's some redemption here there's mm -hmm. i think there's some family redemption here that needs to be done i mean in fours on fast there i just oh there's the car off um trying to eyeball that billy where they are it looks like they was it turn one yeah pr no. uh possibly we just came through. oh there we go yep. wait a minute is that vetter no, that's uh, it's the Camaro. Yeah, it's a 40, 43 Camaro. All right, so it's the Camaro. Action race works. Thanks, guys. Good job. Um, that's our jobs. <laughs> yeah, they're the race logs are pointing out car twenty eight, which is K H Motorsports, a Ford Mustang, is stopped off track. So that's not this car. No, that's this the is 40, a Camaro, forty-three. Yep. So different machine, and the stopped off. But they've got the twenty-eight. So at turn one. So maybe there's another car there, Billy. Yeah, I don't see anything. It could be the two came together. Maybe I don't know. Mm. We the we only did, thing I saw when they came through that corner was that car. We don't have the fancy cameras and fancy TV networks that... Uh, Manned cameras and all yes. that stuff, yeah. But if yeah, someone wants to stuff. invest in us in that much money, we will gladly take it. <laughs> oh, he's got a little flap above his head that he can open up to get some air. How about that? That's <laughs> nice. Ed, he's got the craziest car. Flaps and stuff that open up. That's awesome. Special ejector seat. <laughs> he's got he's got these pieces of metal like that in different parts. He's got one that goes, I think, into the trunk to cool the trunk. It's just like a scoop. That's just um it's just it's just stuff like that. It's like, what is this? Uh there's Oh, there's something going yeah. on over there. Wherever that is. Yeah. That would be NASCAR 1. That's part? probably NASCAR 1 and 2. Yeah. See, the race yeah. logs have it as 1 and 2, but that's Bill because he doesn't know the corner numbers. So yes. he just calls them NASCAR. So, so it's corner 1 and 2, which is very different. It is down there below the flashing... Uh, uh -huh. Above the, uh, let, let me guess. It's outside of our camera view. Yes. How would I have known that? <laughs> I blame Bill Strong. <laughs> All right. Paul says, or yeah, Paul says she's the only person I've been sideways in a 10A and 10B. What an awesome driver. L-O-T-Z. So they're still talking about you, Tiff. Yeah. Telling stories. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> lies, slander, and delusion, right? Right, right. All lies. Until it isn't. I played the fifth. What about <laughs> never mind? I <laughs> uh. ah, see now they've changed it to uh, S one and two, which is. 
What is that supposed to mean? Probably NASCAR. We can't use in instead of. It's Bill Strong. Yeah, if you try to make sense of something he's doing, then that's just going to wind up in a headache. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's car 10, I believe. 16. Sorry, 16. Yeah, that's the yellow mellow uh, E36 BMW. And then the 43. I don't know if he got motivated yet. No, they're still working on him in turn one there. Well, this is as good as time as any to take a commercial break, and then we'll come back and see what we got with some green flag racing. Atlanta Speedworks has completed 354 laps so far today, and it's Eddie Vedder, your leader. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you ship directly to a mechanic. Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have like a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Discovery Parts is a veteran owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com.
Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. Seriously? Oh, come on. No, no, no. You for real? <laughs> dolly, dolly. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just a cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. All right, welcome to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. Still under caution here at the track. Back to yellow instead of purple 35, though. Yeah, so there is hope. Yeah. <laughs> There's hope springs eternal, as Doc would say. Eddie Vedder still with Bye, you. it's a great day for a motor <laughs> race. <laughs> Back to green. Here we go. Yay. Mm. Team Salem Mustard there in second place. Premium Dudes in third. Marathon Motorsports in fourth. Team Salem Ketchup in fifth. Wilson Daly in sixth. Fing Dog in seventh. Atlanta Speedworks in eighth. Team Infinity in ninth. And Clark Motorsports moves up into 10th place. So, yeah, so during that pit stop, we noticed both the Salem's cars did come in and uh, make a pit stop. So it is now probably, if I've got my track on, my father just went back in the car if I have my track on correctly, so it'll be the two big Joes. All right. If not, then I'm talking out of my butt, and, you know, not that that's any different than normal. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot there in the mix. Just cleared the pit loop. They're in 13th, and they're holding position, meaning they haven't uh, progressed or digressed from... <laughs> From uh, the par place where they started the race, they're in 13th. Uh, Team Salem has moved past 106 cars for Mustard and 104 for Ketchup. That's incredible. Cause they, just, they started at the back of the field. Eddie Vedder moved through 102. Wow. And I think he did that with uh, maybe two or three laps, too. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right? 20 seconds, the gap up uh, from Eddie Vedder to the EC car behind him. And I can't tell from the information we have here what the actual gap is from Eddie to the Team Salem Mustard second place car. Number 943. Wilson Daly trips the pit loop. Got their car here. Looks like they have left the pits. So their camera's relatively caught up. All right, back on board with Team Infinity. Tenth place, ninth place overall for the uh, J30. Previous winner of the Daytona 14. Mm 
And back to caution. Yeah. Figures. Now well, let's see uh, what's going on now. And there's the purple 35. Once again. Yep. And it's really... This must be a record for us or something. It's taken its toll on race control. I was over there a little bit ago um, talking to Chelsea, and uh, I could tell it, it they're <laughs> not happy. <laughs> it's exhausting. Well, it's nobody's happy. Yeah. Who, who wants this? You know, I mean, it's frustrating. It doesn't really benefit anybody, except if comment. you want to, I guess. There's a comment Stop made, like, everybody should have to go take their car to a mechanic before they come out here. <laughs> <laughs> Just go get your car looked at, dude. <laughs> Make sure you put enough gas in it and uh, go get it looked at. Because <laughs> this is... Redonkulous? It's not really racing. <laughs> it's, it's a few laps of racing and then coasting around. Everybody should be getting good fuel mileage then. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, coasting. Uh, 76 is stopped on track. That's the from the ground up motorsports. Did I say that on air? No. no. <laughs> Did I say that while we were muted? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, just uh, the talking. Tr the truth. Yeah. <laughs> talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. People that shall not be named. Gotcha. Buck 38, working lap 134, is the leader. So 24 seconds there. Yeah, not sure on the Salins gap. Um, they're shown a lap back on Eddie Vedder. I don't know if they've actually got that lap because the Salins team just pitted both of their cars at the same time. Eddie Vedder hasn't pitted since lap 107. So they're probably due, I would say, Tiffany, pretty soon here. Um, man, they See, have got they some gigantic. Before that, on sixty-eight, their gaps are gigantic on those pit stops too. Ooh, well, crazy. they got a twenty-something odd gallon tank. Yeah. So, they can do it. Yep. Looks like they could go a little further. Yeah, especially with all these purple thirty-five. I can't imagine. Yeah, anybody. Why are they running out of fuel with all this going on? Well, they just. Don't add fuel when they do a driver change and then... <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, or this little fuel gauge gets stuck. Brew crew Thing. racing coming into the pits. don't think they're going to put your logo in the uh, fair finish stand, though. Because last year it was on the entire race. Which is kind of lame, but whatever. And back to yellow. One of our watchers said 120 cars is 120 possible failures. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And failure is an option. Resistance isn't. And Marathon caught in the pits now as we go back to green. 
with Eddie Vedder on the racetrack. Bunch of guys coming into the pits now, which yeah, I would be kicking myself. I'd be like uh, Jim Carrey in Liar Liar, where he's in the bathroom scene. Yeah. I'm kicking my own. <laughs> yeah. So the 981 uh, that had the, um, was it the 981 or the 718? It was the 718 that had the top fly off, right? Yeah, 718, yes. So then they had to install uh, armor strings. And so they've got those installed and the driver back in the car and they're back out on the course. Oh, yep, they're rolling through the pit lane right now. They're heading out. Someone's saying, let's go, Kyle Lockrow. driving one of the Atlanta Speedworks cars. I don't know he's supposed to tell me when he was getting the car. He may have forgotten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, they did tell me. It just came in late. So, uh, yeah, Kyle Lockrow is in the uh, 718 now. Well, hopefully he gets some track time now and get some uh, green laps under his belt. Well, he'll be nice and cool, though. Yeah, it's nice out. It's perfect. Perfect racing weather. Especially with a convertible. Mm-hmm. Nice breeze. It's, uh, <laughs> it's actually kind of hard on you. <laughs> At 100 and some odd miles an hour, yeah. For, for a long period of time, it is. Uh, Rodney Earwood can speak into that. He went with the convertible option there for a while in his Z. Didn't turn out to be a good idea. Local yellow. Oh my goodness. And back to green. Cars uh, snaking through the bus stop there. There's just gaggles of cars, so it'll be nothing, nothing, nothing. Gaggle. Trying to see if he can sneak through the two here. Looks like he's going to get it done. And he looks to see if he can sneak down the inside here. Gets it done. I love how they make it look so easy, some of them. And then others are like... <laughs> Well, the car's working really good. The brakes are working really good. It's it's amazing. You could put that car anywhere you want. It's great. It's a great feeling. You, you can really do some amazing things with it. It's kind of like Doc said. The uh, it's uh, boredom mixed with uh, terror. Yeah, moments of sheer terror, <laughs> interspersed with moments of sheer terror. Yeah. <laughs> Which didn't really make much sense to me, but it was funny. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun to watch the TLM car wheel around this track. Wilson Daily Racing. They are currently in sixth place overall. Trying to chase down Fing Dog Racing. 42 seconds behind them. 
Lap times are a little bit slower. Get one of the Porsches in their sights. That looks like a pesky Miata to me. Okay, now maybe he has a portion of sight. Yeah, they kind of got away from him there at, at coming out of the bus stop. Climb back up to seventh. I think they had fallen what down to. Uh, let's see. I'll look back. Like fourteenth or something after that penalty and all. Oh, uh, well, twenty-first after their pit stop. But I think that was also the a drop, a one lap penalty or something maybe. Back to seventh. Yeah, just looking down through the standings here, I'm still just amazed at how many cars are out there racing right now. Just looking through the top, you have to get down to 52nd place before you find a car that's actually in the pits. Everybody else is out there. Gus. It's just called Gus is the name of the team in 52nd. They have a Miata. Then down to 56 is the crown Hictorious shown in That's the pits. Funny. Yeah. And then you jump down to 64th. You've got Top Garage. They're shown in the pits. And then 66, you got Alpine Auto Racing. And then you have to jump down to 71st to get to Prefect Racing. And then Rocket Ham behind them. Those two cars shown in the pits. KH Motorsports shown not turning laps. So is uh, Car Fab. Subpar racing and Valerian Steels. We go back to caution. It was, looks like we've got an impact somewhere near turn seven. Yeah, yeah we got a car turned around completely. Um, yep, that looks, looks like, like he mashed up the front of the car. And that's an Integra, I think. And got spun sure around there. Like so keep an eye on them, see how they're doing. and Right about in the same spot that the uh, car wrecked earlier today, the blue uh, Honda. Yeah. I mean, I don't think if we have anybody besides Kobe that's got an Integra, got an Accord, let's see. Now, all we had, let's look for cars that um, suddenly pop up that they're not turning laps, you know. The 214 is the number they're giving us. 214 is Kobe racing. Okay, there you go. Good job, Tiffany. Yeah. Um, that's the only Integra I saw on our list, so. <laughs> yep. That would eliminate a lot of cars in fact all of them except for one <laughs> the support crew on site checking on the car checking on the driver they're kind of well, approaching the car carefully because of the, the fluid issues They do this thing uh, when you've had an impact. Uh, they start, they come to the window and then they ask you if you're okay, and then they start asking you questions, <laughs> like, uh, "How many fingers am so I holding up? Where are you? <laughs> where are you? 
Yeah, what month like, is it? I'm in Daytona. Yeah. What month is it? Things like that. That's just relatively short term memory stuff. To see if you might have been concussed. Charles says, when you get it wrong and run out of talent, the wall comes up real fast. Yep. I know from experience. Been there. Never, never experience you won't. I've never did it in uh, real life, but I've done it plenty of times in Forza. It doesn't quite hurt as bad that time. Then. Yes. It is monumentally cheaper. Mm hmm. So, driver's out. It looks like, and uh, they're loading up the car. And from my vantage point, which isn't very good, as you can see, it's a pretty crummy vantage point, which is what I brought up at the beginning of the broadcast. You know why we try not to give out a lot of information because we just don't have it, Billy. Yeah. We don't have information. But from my vantage point, the driver was out standing. They, they got him out. He was standing up talking to the to one of the... Um, medical crew there for for a few seconds and then got into the back and then they'll bring him in. And this is, again, as Tiffany mentioned, typical standard procedure. They did it with with me. I got I got into an accident at Road America a number of years ago. And I, um, I drove the car in and switched drivers and all that. I'm sitting there and here comes the ambulance <laughs> down pit road. How you doing? <laughs> How do you feel? Well, I kind of banged up my hand. Well, why don't you uh, want to go down to the medical tent? Yeah. They want to check on you. I mean, it's just, it's just good to check yourself out, you know? Make sure you're okay. Yeah. Well, see, the help that those ambulances can provide are not the type of help I need most of the time. <laughs> you need someone more like Tiffany's help? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not the physical stuff. It's yeah. emotional, mental. <laughs> yeah, oh, brother. Well, they have professionals for that too, Billy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we have those. Why do you think I'm here? <laughs> is this was this part of your therapy? The Apparently. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, kid. I kid. So it looks like yeah, the Kobe machine speared the wall coming out of the bus stop there. It looks like the driver's out and okay from our vantage point, and they're loading up the car right now onto the rollback. And um, get us back to racing here shortly. We do have some cars uh, that are coming into the pits to take advantage of that caution. You really haven't had to wait a whole long time to be able to take advantage of a caution. Yeah, it's true. They've done plenty of circulating under him. Alright, so the latest calculation for Atlanta Speedworks. If you're following along with the the fundraiser is three hundred and sixty-eight laps so far for the uh Atlanta Speedworks racing team. A three car effort here this weekend at Daytona International Speedway. It is Eddie Vetter. In the pits now, but still shown as the leader of the race. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you shift directly to a mechanic. Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have, like, a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. 
Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance, exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Discovery Parts is a veteran owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. Seriously? Oh, no, no. 
You for real? <laughs> dale, dale. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just a cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. All right, welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. Still under caution here. Um, no, it's not midnight yet. <laughs> we still have light. We still have a lot of racing to do. Six hours and 25 minutes remain in this contest, as you've heard me call it many times before. Yeah. Don't worry, Polly. If you fall asleep, I won't duct tape you in your chair. <laughs> It might be necessary, though. Help me, uh, help me stay up. Yeah, you're watching the uh, Tyrac.com Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway live. Even if it's uh, pre-recorded, it's still live. <laughs> you're watching this three weeks from now. It's live. It was live. It's it was. live right now. It was always live at one point. Yeah. It, it it's like that scene in Spaceballs. When's this happening? Now, now. What about then? That was in the past. <laughs> and since we're on like a 20 second delay, it's really not Champ Car Live. It's Champ Car 20 seconds ago. <laughs> in the same vein, right? In that same yes. vein of truth. That is a great is close enough. movie. Excuse my French. Well, I hasten to say it, but we're back to green flag racing, Billy. Yeah, for here what? we go again. <laughs> yeah, Paulie's got seconds? the commentator whammy on us. <laughs> no whammies. No whammies. Uh, gaming guy says, "Shout out the car number three sixty three rolling." Roadblock and oh, their non turn block. signaled BMW. <laughs> no That's fine. turn signals for you. You come back in one year. Is that the one that had the turn signal on the whole day? I think so. Okay. There just was joking. one of them that did, yeah. Well, they just wanted to be polite. So after 145 laps of racing, Eddie Vedder in their Chevy Corvette leads the race over Team Salem Mustard by 36 seconds. Premium Dudes in third. Team Salem Ketchup is in fourth. Then it's Fing Dog Racing, Wilson Daily Racing, Team Infinity, Marathon Motorsports, and then it's Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, the top 10. So uh, leading A class would be Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Uh, to B class, it looks like it's uh, Blocks Racing in their Chevrolet. Uh, up to C class, it's going to be Team Salem Mustard D class, Eddie Vetter. EC is led by GMW currently. And then we go down to F class, and uh, I want to make sure I don't I don't skip somebody here because I'm seeing Kobe has slipped now since that accident. Mm -hmm. So now. M2R has uh, moved into the lead for F-Class there in 50th place overall. Uh, the EC team, uh, Team Bruce Innovations, actually holds the fastest lap time of the day with a 209.710. Wow. Holy smokes. <laughs> but it is easy, so. Yeah. So they're not completely legal for our rule set, and they're not eligible for the overall win, but that's still a quick little lap. Yes, it is. Let's 
So Eddie Vetter has a 2.12 as their fastest lap times. Team Salem Mustard a 2.14. Premium Dudes has a 2.14 under their belt. And so does the other sailing car, the ketchup car, has a 214 to their credit as well. Thing Dog up in fifth has a 216. Wilson Daily Racing has a 215. And uh see, I'm looking for somebody else that's running lap times like that. It's down in the ratings. There's, there's several. Um, Atlanta Speedworks has a 215. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot does as well. It's just been a matter of keeping the car on the racetrack, like we've said so many times, and staying out of the pits. To finish first, first you must finish. Staying out of the grass and the or, wall and... Or the sand, as it were. Or wherever. But just clicking off those laps, that's what gets it done in Champ Car. Or any endurance racing, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Staying out of trouble. Sometimes easier said than done, though. Yeah. For some of us. Trouble usually finds me. Yeah. I don't go looking for it. It just finds you without your consent, huh? Yeah, exactly. It wraps me up in its uh, embrace. It wraps you up in its embrace, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna have to remember that one. That that just came up with that one on the fly. I like it. You know the Trouble song by like Neon Jungle? Uh. It's something like I don't look for trouble, trouble looks for me or something. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's funny. I like that song. It's like a little drop in something. Let's see, we got some updates too. So, um. In the Mad Fast car, uh, Hunter Manley is currently in the car. And then Sam Collier is set to go back into the car around 545, 6 ish, that sort of thing. So, Hunter Manley in the Mad Fast car. Let's see what else we have. Harley Scuffle is in the Clark Motorsports 864. And. In the Momo Champ car, uh, Benson Young is getting ready to go back into that car. He's going to try to find the right pit stall when he comes in this next time, but no, you know, no promises. <laughs> God bless him. I right? It. It's so frustrating. It reminds me of the time at NCM where we are running the short course and we were having trouble with our brakes. They were just doing some random things. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes not so much. So I blew the last turn coming onto the front straightaway, which put me into the pit out. So oh, I had to drive through the pits. Um, past my team in the pit stall, they're looking at me and I just waved and kept going. Nice. It's like, oops. Well, you're polite about it. Yeah. Trying to keep like, this, what, trying to keep spirits the light. Car? And I was like, no, just the driver. <laughs> Did you ever see that setup at NCM when we ran the shorter course? I think it was like called the North Course or something. Somewhere right after Deception, a little ways down, you cut back over to the front straightaway. Yeah, that was actually, that was actually a lot of fun. But yeah, yeah. you told the story. This was the one where you couldn't, you were missing pit in, I think. No, I missed the turn to go back onto the front straightaway. Oh, you just I kept coming in the pits. In Got it. Yep. It's the other way around. But twice. Don't. 
Well, I mean, sometimes you hit the brakes and you'd slow down and you could make the turn. And sometimes you hit the brakes and it just locked up the wheels and didn't slow you down at all. And so you kind of kept going forward. There was no way to make the turn. The car wouldn't turn. So you had to take the uh, alternative route. <laughs> the scenic route? Mm -hmm. Okay, we might have another car. Let's see here. Is that... No. No, I don't think so. I think the car just died right there and the camera went down with it. Sorry, folks. I'm trying to pull some more camera footage out. Yeah, I think that car died a little while ago. Not long, but... Yeah, we got Floridians here. We got the whole... What I'm afraid of is that these guys are going to stop sending me links because I'm not putting their videos up. Because <laughs> this is like the first race in a very long time where... There you go. I haven't... Uh, I've had more cameras than I need and... Um, the cameras aren't really going down. They're holding up good. They're not trying like us? Right. Yeah, usually we have a lot of um, issues with the cameras at Daytona, but well, we have a lot of yeah, issues, have issues. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have issues. I report that the 996 of Atlanta Speedworks is smoking a lot. Oh, no. Heavy smoke going into the corner. That ain't good. You see a car number on Floridia, it's uh, Tiffany. Uh, yeah, I have that. It's 51. Thank you. most unique cars because they're running a turbocharger on this Porsche which everybody says you can't do and they, the thing is huge it sticks out of the hood it's so bizarre looking so it ends up being a B-class car and it's very reliable it is wild how they got that to work reliably most of the time 50% of the time, 100% of the time? Mm-hmm. 80% of the time, it works 100% of the time. the Floridian Motorsports machine. Getting there, we're getting there. There we go. Close this. 
Sorry, folks. Just working through some technical things here. Donations this week. Okay. Please shout out our gratitude for uh, anonymous benefactors. So, the follow on mission said they had some anonymous gifts and donations this week. So, the folks that follow on mission would just like to publicly thank those involved in that. That's awesome. Offer their appreciation for those gifts. Thank you. And they provide, um, you know, seats and race cars for veterans. And they um, uh, outfit the cars even for um, disabled veterans to be able to drive. I also tell them that they need a bigger hammer to scare the cars into submission into doing what the cars are supposed to do. I advocate for that a lot. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Hey, it works. Sometimes. So Sean is asking what time do the lights have to come on? That's 6 p.m. What time? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. There you have it. And I believe it's four light sources out of the front. Correct, Polly? That's the maximum. Yes. This is interesting. Marathon's trying to put a pass on mustard. Mustard's not having anything of it. As mustard's trying to pass the shark car in process. So yeah, the Florida team is uh, shown 16th overall. There's two EC cars ahead of them. So that puts them in 14th place overall in their Porsche 944. We're on board with them now here. And of course they are from Florida. So they have a lot of experience on this racetrack. They have a lot of experience at Sebring too. Hazard to guess. So. Atlanta Speedworks. Number 996 shown in the pits. Falling through the standings. That was a car that was reported smoking, so. Not good. Not looking good for that one. Smoking in the boys' room? Yes. So that leaves things really up to the 718 car up in 14th for them to have their best shot. They still have an opportunity to get into the top 10 because they're in 12th with the two EC cars that had pulled out. And Kyle's in the car, so, you know, you know he's going to give it all she's got. Yeah, just know, Sean, that, like, if you're, if you're piloting a team down there, you guys should have been informed at the driver's meeting getting it off of the media guys is not a great idea because we <laughs> are idiots. I think I speak for all of us when I say that. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> Do you want to be held up to the... Uh... No. Okay. I mean, that probably didn't read all the subs. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be held it up to be anything. Better, it would be better for you to check with an official, a race official, at the track down there and, and ask, you know, for a confirmation on that. All right. I'm an idiot about certain things. How about that? that sounds good. Matt and we're Green. back to caution. Matt Green fuel tech is stopped on track. 
974 car. Uh, six more hours to go. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you guys do a 24. <laughs> Uh, the same way, we just do it longer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's endurance broadcasting. I'm not saying I remember what in the heck we were you talking about at three in the morning, though. But it's both compelling and moving and meaningful. <laughs> and meaningless all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So. You mean Tiffany could have somebody on her couch and it would pass? <laughs> uh, trying to find where... Oh, okay. The car is in the kink where it stopped. As we are now officially down to purple 35. Yeah, no problem, Patron. Uh, I got you. So yeah, one more hour before you have to have, everybody has to have their headlights on. And it has to be before that hour. It's the, that's the official word? Yeah, 6 o'clock. Where'd you get that from? Sups. Oh, okay, good. Of course, they could have changed in the driver's meeting. That's, that's why that driver's meeting is so important. Sups are always dated. All right, so Floridian. Taking advantage of this uh, caution to bring their Porsche in for service. I think they got lost in the pit stop area because they had to go around somebody. Yeah, the other. Whoops, nope, not here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's better than it being behind you. Yeah. You gotta give them that. Or blowing past it. Completely. Stopped on track. Yep, they're right over. They were right over by the kink there. Is it my end or is this camera kind of having delayed frames? Um, it looks okay right here, but. This, the broadcast machine is heavily overloaded right now. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I'm really, I mean, it's, I got it doing all kinds of Funky stuff, stuff here. It's working hard. It's working hard. So I don't know. Um, okay. It looks clean on our on end. the capture. It could just be me. Um, I might be tired. All right, the car is behind the cut and headed back to the paddock so we should be going back green very very shortly so if you're entering the pits now I'm sorry <laughs> it's not going to be too advantageous no <laughs> hi puppers yeah my little mini monsters are ready for dinner they decide, then if you don't submit to their requests, they just aggravate you to death. <laughs> Told them what to wait to the next break, but they didn't like that. That's what duct tape's for. Like, right? <laughs> put their nose cone on, put the duct tape around the nose cone, they can't, and then you can't hear them. All right, we're under caution again here at Daytona International Speedway. We're going to take a quick break. 
For those of you following along with those lap counts for Atlanta Speedworks, they're up to 383 laps here at Daytona. So keep note. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I probably need new tires. You do. What if they sold tires online? We do. We're TireRack.com. They could offer lots of tires. We have so many tires. And help you find the right tire. It's called the Tire Decision Guide. Oh, and they could ship them to a nearby mechanic. We shipped over 7,000 independent recommended installers. This is an amazing idea. Sorry. TireRack.com. The way tire buying should be. frozen tundra, the grinding gravel, the cratered concrete, the rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Stress tested to meet or exceed original equipment performance. Exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 12 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. 
Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with two-layer shims and OE-style slots and chamfers to eliminate noise. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. Back to Green Flag Racing here at Daytona International Speedway. Go on board with our leader, Eddie Vetter, in their Corvette. All right, so it's Eddie Vetter leading over Team Salem Mustard now with Premium Dudes in third and the Ketchup Car in fourth. Getting another caution here being thrown. It's a local yellow. Starts out as a local yellow. And uh, car 133, which I actually don't have on my sheet, but it's a contact with the wall over in turn number one. And it looks like he nosed into the tire barrier over there. Yes, he did. You can see there, it looks like there are some tire lockups there, so. Yeah. And drivers moving around looks to be okay. He's just kind of waiting for somebody to come collect him. Either that or just give him a nice little tug out of the wall and tell him he's okay and go from there. Here comes the support crew to the rescue. They've had uh, they've been busy today. Yeah, <laughs> they've done a number of laps. Fast Autosport going through turn number one there. I can hear him talking to his crew. said that he hasn't gone through a half a tank of fuel yet. <laughs> so. The yellows continue. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, here he got him pulled out of the, of the tires. It doesn't look that bad. No. Just looks like he nosed into it. So he should be able to. Yeah, they're fired up and looks like they've said, you know, we don't want any more trouble out of you. We're leaving. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> you don't need our help. You need Tiffany. Maybe. I don't see him Maybe. moving though. It says one thirty three on the race control logs. I don't have that. I have a thirty four yeah, and thirty five. Be but... a mistype there. I'm not sure, Tiffany. Can't get it motivated. It looks like. Oh, he's he's got no gears. He said so. Looks like transmixer trouble. Yeah. There's somebody else out there too. Oh yeah. If we pull that pylon out of the way, we can see uh, we got another car that's in trouble over there. Paulie's got so much going. <laughs> <laughs> you can't swing a dead cat without hit seeing a car, you know, hitting a car off course here. There you go. So I don't know if these two cars were involved together on this, but uh the one has no gears, so I don't think he was Oh, it's one of the Rosmar cars. The number one twenty nine. That one shown stopped on track. So that would be the one in the distance, I'm betting, Billy. Yes. Because this one was reported as having impact with the wall. Oh, boy. Turn your wheel, dude. 
And keep the rope taut. 433. Uh, big difference. HMD. So one of my friends is driving with them. Uh, Jay St. Clair is driving with them this uh, weekend. Hopefully that wasn't him. Since he hasn't sent me any updates, I'm just going to say it was. I'm going to go harass him. So, yeah, um, MDR uh, changed drivers, and they're, so they changed drivers uh, to the team's elder statesman and newly retired Eb, Ed uh, Lubner. Hmm. I don't know, retirement sounds good, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? that <laughs> that's what you say when you're six hours into a broadcast or something. All right. Six hours, seven hours, eight hours. Yeah. And wait till we get nine hours in. Or ten. Yeah, still got mm -hmm. a ways to go, Holmes. That's not to even look at the clock. <laughs> Denial is your friend. Madfast guy. Looks like he's rocking the Senna headset. The Senna uh, livery on the helmet there. Hmm. Trying to see who's in the car. Hunter Manley is in the car, I think, right now. And then Sam's uh, set to go in later this hour. That should be Hunter Manley. Bent Over Racing says they think they got their feed back up if you want to yeah, let was, us embarrass ourselves again. Yeah, I was trying to. Um, they actually didn't leave me a link. So, and I tried searching for it. Um, yeah, I didn't get anywhere. Oh, okay. So cool. they said they uh, got it back up. Okay. Well, I'll take another swing at it. I'm just ding, ding. so cramped for time over here, Tiffany. I just don't know. Right. Back to caution. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So Matt is in the car now in the 985 of Bent Over Racing. And it's 511. And the sun is beginning to set. It's beginning to drop in the sky. Yes. Okay, the four idiots have done their driver change, and Charlie's back in the car. Charlie Brown. Does they had a vibration a... problem, but they think they may have fixed it. Does he have a dog named Soupy? I mean, if he doesn't, he should. <laughs> it's got to be a beagle. Black and white one. That could change his name to Joe Cool. Right. And fight the Red Baron. All of the things. They yes. renamed their stream 14 Hours of Daytona 2024 Attempt 2. <laughs> Attempt <laughs> 2 in parentheses. Try this again. Hey, we get that. Yeah, we're very trying here.
And Tiffany, do you have a number on bent over racing? Sure do. It's 985. Sweet. You're good at that. It's helpful. Oh. I don't have to. notes about all the teams that are sending me info that I'm communicating with so I always have their stuff front and center nice okay Bent over racing. It is a 99 BMW 323 IS. That should be Matt behind the wheel. Unless they've lied to me. Go, Matt, go. Go, Matt, go. Bent over racing scored in 28th place right now. It's a C class car. They're back 10 laps from the leader of the race. Not to be discouraging or anything. Team Infinity shown not turning laps right now. They've just come into the pits, in fact. Crossing the Salen's pit box now. Where the uh, loop is. Yep, now they cross the pit loop and they continue down the uh, pit lane. Clark Motorsports just said their fastest time of the day um, at a 218.5. And I think they might have accidentally bumped that camera because we just lost their feed. What? No. Yeah, Team Infinity. But they are at pit out, so uh, they're going to be heading out. I'll get them back on the game. Back in the race. Back somewhere. See, the, the sun's starting to get a little lower now. It's starting to get a little darker out there. Let's Guys are down the front straight. Some are he's starting to use their headlights. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to have them kicked on for the next... The guy that goes out in the stint where they have to be on, just have them turned on before you leave the pits. Make sure they're working. No reason not to just have them on. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, otherwise you got to bring them back in. It might be something you, the driver may have trouble figuring out how to turn them on, or it might be something wonky with the switch. I've had that happen before, and it, it can be a really quick fix when it's in the pits and impossible to fix when you're out on the racetrack. Right, so you want to check that when you've done your pit stop. Uh, the uh, One of the Atlanta Speedworks cars is in for their pit stop. I think there's only one running right now, so that'd be the 718. Um, uh, they are. I beg to differ with that because this one has a roof. Uh, I think it was. Which one was? Oh. They said they were doing a transmission swap on the 981. Oh, that was the one that had the shifter problems then? Yes. Oh, that's a yeah. shame. I would assume so. Yeah. And the 996 was smoking, so they said they were trying to get one of them fixed and back out, so maybe they did. Marathon, oh, Marathon just set their fastest time of yeah, the day. You caught that at the same time I did. <laughs> yeah. 216.9. Well done there, wheel man. That's got to be David behind the wheel. In his fancy orange suit. Well, of course, it's, if it's orange, it's got to be fast. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, looking for a way by here. Oh, the car moving much slower down the outside going towards three. Get inside of that pesky Mirada. Try to get the Camaro. Keyword try. So if you've been kind of hearing me talk a little bit about this fun drive, this charity drive that's going on right now, it's for the Children's Advocacy Center of Smith of Smith uh, County. And simply put, they say the CAC of Smith County uh, works with children who have either been abused or involved in violent crimes and walks them step by step through the judicial system from pre-trial to advocating for these victims during trial and then providing post-trial counseling and rehabilitation services as well as medical services. And the way this works right now is they're simply, we're accumulating the laps for all of the Atlanta Speedworks cars. And the uh, you, you would be pledging money towards those laps. And people can pledge a dollar amount at the CAC Spring Luncheon Powered by Give Smart web page. So for every lap Atlanta Speedworks team completes, we will be raising money to assist the Children's Advocacy Center in the race to end child abuse. Very here's, worthy call. Here's your SUPS for you, Polly. Well, the SUPS that were printed, yeah. Lights required on race cars at 6 o'clock. Max sound level 96 dB A at 50 feet, etc., etc., etc. I think we've take. I think by now we've gotten through the dB issues. Eddie Vetter leading the race by about a minute over Team Salem in the mustard car. Both turning kind of similar lap times, uh, 2.19 to Salem's 2.16 on the last lap. They're kind of cycling back and forth with all the traffic we have on the racetrack. Premium Dudes is in third place. Yes, that was my pick for the win of the race. Yeah. yeah. But Team Salem was his pick. So, you know, well, actually, my pick is sitting one, two, th and four. Thank you. <laughs> one, two, and four. So Eddie Vedder and Team Sandy. So you're just like <laughs> I got all the bases covered. You got your covered. fingers and all the pie, don't you? <laughs> and I'm gonna eat it too. <laughs> the ketchup car there in fourth place. Fing Dog behind him, followed by Marathon Motorsports. Uh, then it's Wilson Daly, Clark Motorsports, Whiskey Tango, Foxtrot, Madfest Motorsport, or Autosport rather, and Atlanta Speedway. Uh, that's, a, that's 11 right there. A class being led by Clark Motorsports now. Uh, B class by T Rex. The first time we've heard from them today. Uh, T Rex 7 Motorsports. Is uh, actually they're in second because the blocks racing Chevrolet is still leading the B class. So apologize for that. The blocks team, a C class being led by Team Salem Muster, D class by Eddie Vetter, EC being led by GMW, and uh, F class uh, just a little bit. It's open throttle, it looks like, in the specs car. I didn't, did I, yeah, I missed one. It's uh, the M2R team leading F class as the uh, open throttle car is actually second in F class. So the car that's crossed the pit loop for Atlanta Speedworks, it's the 996 car. The uh, 
the other machine is still on the racetrack turning laps. And that's the number 718 there in 13th place. We pull a couple EC cars out, put some in the line. Almost in that top 10. It's been a long day for the Speedworks team. They've had some niggling hardware issues they've been working through. Trying to get that uh, Porsche hoisted up to the front of the field. course now. They've done a transmission swap. Now we're nice. getting ready to send her back out. I haven't shown it cleared the pit loop yet though. The Betty White mobile is headed into the pits, I believe. Speed works. So you got two cars on course for them now. Here we go. Let's go back on board with their leader and just see how the race, see how that car is handling and how things are going for that car. Looking at the uh, timing and scoring, it looks like the lap times are very similar to second place Team Salen Mustard. In fact, they turned a 221 on that last lap and Mustard car turned into 217. They were a little quicker on the previous lap and slowed a little further. The last time through. So we'll see how they do with this lap. Going through the bus stop there. You get some kind of like a clock or something on the steering wheel. Not too many people put uh, something like that on the steering wheel. Hmm. Unless you're in Formula One. Then I guess you do. Or <laughs> Flavor Flav. That's usually around his neck. Yeah, the back of the putting clocks anywhere, right? It's got a lot of buttons on it. Must be more than just that. It's they not turn... like the, just the old egg timer. <laughs> yeah, they turn in a 2.17, so that matches the Salem's car lap time the last time through. Let's see what the Salem's car is able to do with this lap. And gaps are starting to get spread out now. There's a, a relatively close gap, though, for Whiskey Tango Foxtrot and Clark Motorsports. It's only about four seconds. Two A-class cars duking it out. Looking for that eighth spot. And uh, very close to the leader of A-Class right now. Clark is the lead A-Class car. So here comes Mustard right now. So and Turn another 217 in on that last lap. So no gain, no loss. A good battle going on right now for the A-Class cars. That reports that there are parts falling off of the number 350 of Salt Fox Racing on their Camaro, and then issues with their brake lights. Um, they were dragging something, and then their brake lights aren't functional, and now they're getting a black flag to check the brake lights. Driver, it says driver counseling. This means you should be down here. <laughs> I swear we should fly in the couch <laughs> and Tiffany and she should be at a pit in mm -hmm. and get the drivers out <laughs> and constantly. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Put yes, them on the couch. Yes. It would be. <laughs> Tiffany sits down with a legal pad and an ink pen and I have to put my glasses on. Yep. <laughs> put your glasses on and 
I mean, yes, it's Lemon's or Lemonzy, but still funny. All right, so uh, with that, we'll take another quick commercial break. Yes, if you're following the laps lap count for the Atlanta Speedworks teams, they're up to 395 laps so far this race. It's Eddie Vedder Racing leading the way. But stay with us. We'll be right back. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. TireRack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done. All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that, a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. 
www.sentinel.racing. Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with OE matched friction formulations and fitment for 97% of cars on the road. Backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. at AutoZone. That's the Duralast difference. Welcome back to Champ Car Live presented by AutoZone. The TireRack.com Daytona 14 at Daytona International Speedway. Oops, somebody clipped the grass there. Made yep. a little dust. Yep, the USS Enterprise coming out of the paddock area. Heading back down pit road to uh, rejoin the race. So far, so good. Oh, Dylan was saying, you guys, I still think you guys need a champ car blimp, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> I would go in the blimp. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, Mike actually bought a blimp. It was like an RC blimp for camera use, but we never used it. And now the rules are you can't yeah i think that was kind of what was coming up at the time and that's why we never used it which is lame but they don't want uh flying things going into the racetrack i get it So we've got a number of cars have been uh, flagged in for brake lights not working. Uh, oh, well, I guess it's the same, same car. car. It's the <laughs> same it's num numerous entries, but it's the same car. So Yeah, he, he got called in for counseling. But that's, that's brake lights. Though. Yeah. Those are slightly important. Telling people when you're stopping. Yes. Warp Hamper has an idea here, Billy. He says, make it look like a hot dog, the blimp, yeah. and call it the Salem's Blimp. Oh, he bro. says, take that, Wienermobile. Huh? No, brother. Uh, I like it. Oh, brother. Huh? Oh, brother. I like it. Yeah, man. It would be awesome. Which, if anybody here in the continental U.S., you know, the, the lower 48 want to order our products, just go to our website and we can ship them right to your door. All 48 it's states now, huh? Yeah, well, uh, that w that is, uh, we just do a shipping label and s give you the product and it goes to your right to your door. So that's how that one works. So if you don't have a grocery store serving our products near your house or place of residence problem solved I think these two guys have a fantastic idea for saying yeah, and the, I think <laughs> Tiffany's dogs are right growling at you <laughs> they want to see a big blimp size hot dog too no they fantastic. just they just want to eat hot dogs. That's all they want. Yes. <laughs> but that's isn't that the whole point, Billy? Is to get people to want to eat the hot dogs? Yeah, but a blimp won't do that. <laughs> of course it would. It's it's advertising. You just work it into the advertising budget. Yeah. Most large companies, even small businesses, have you know a, a budget, a sales budget, or, or a any uh, a budget for marketing and I know. I so know. there you go yeah that's a <laughs> what are we going to spend it on this year huh? a blimp why not <laughs> i think it's fantastic get yourself a pilot and a blimp 
Or you could just get a hot air balloon that have it it's shaped so like a hot dog. Fun having you guys circle the racetrack up above in that blimp. That'd be great. Yeah, oh, except the grilled for... hot dogs on the hot air balloon part. Except and it smell like hot dogs grilling on the grill everywhere. Except and then everybody for... have to have one. The problem is, at certain tracks like Daytona and Sebring, there's an airport right there. Then they can get clearance. Yeah. Now I suggest don't go over there. <laughs> I see too many plot holes with this idea. <laughs> Negative Nancy. You just need to have an open mind, Billy. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> my mind's open enough. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta tell your dad, and I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be just really open-minded and excited <laughs> about it. <laughs> tell him the guys at Champ Car have a fan. Fantastic idea. Unless he's already listening. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic idea. <laughs> Tiffany Flying said it's good. Mobile. Tiffany likes the idea. Her dogs like the idea. So we had uh, the 241 have a four off and continue. <laughs> Are you he's trying like, to change the topic? <laughs> 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 or am I just <laughs> successfully back onto the race? Yes. <laughs> All right. Eddie Vedder leads the race uh, over Team Salem Mustard, followed by uh, Premium Dudes, Team Salem Ketchup, and uh, Fing Dog Racing in their Porsche. That's the top five right there. A 20 second gap from Marathon Motorsports up to Fing Dog for that fifth spot. Another gap that's close Whiskey Tango Foxtrot to Clark Motorsports. They seem to be having trouble closing that gap for the lead A class position there in ninth. And then we've got uh, GMW leading that C class right now. EC, or excuse me, EC, yeah. 40 seconds, 40 seconds. Bent over racing. Uh, they have a, uh, oh, they're getting really close now over blocks racing. They were down two seconds. Now it's less than one second for Bent Over Racing to make this pass for position. And this would get them into the top 20. And Marathon just set their fastest time of the day again with a 216.7. Well, they Nicely are done. sitting right on uh, Mustard's heels, so. Marathon is right behind Fing yeah, Dog. I, I know, but I'm saying on the track, mm -hmm. physically. Physically, I got gotcha. you. They're right on our heels, and then Ketchup is right behind them. I see. So, it's rather interesting. Well, that might pull them along to yes. catch up mm -hmm. with Fing Dog, which is really what they want. Exactly which is how they're setting their laps. Right, with Marathon getting a 216.7 to Fing Dogs 227. If they keep turning laps like that, it won't take long. They're saying the gap is just 9.4 seconds. Nice. Madwag shown not turning laps. Let's see what's going on with them. Um, I don't have, I thought I had their camera, but I guess I do not. You have Mad Fast. Yeah. That might be a different team. It is. <laughs> uh, it's it, close, yeah. but it isn't the same team. <laughs> it's okay, Polly. You only got, what? Seven hours left, six hours left, something like that. Oh, yeah, it's going Don't fast. Don't scare us like that. <laughs> 516, it's going fast. Sorry, that camera's offline. Yeah, like I said. Here we go, there. Marathon, right on the heels of the mustard car. And looking for a way by. Swings to the outside.
Wow, it's so different the way that car pulled ahead there just in the last seconds before the brake zone. Yeah, all three uh, cars, they're right there. So, ah, ketchup has gotten by, uh, gotten by, uh, Marathon, so. Yep, see them both up there? Yep. So that must have been just after the pass. But Marathon has closed the gap on Fig Dog. Now it's just five and a half seconds. So they're continuing to close that gap. Whoa! -ho -ho -ho. Much slower car on the outside as yeah. they hit into the horseshoe here. Or was that five? That was the that horseshoe. Was five, yeah. Around the outside here, hoping to get a good run to keep up with the Salem's Porsches. And maybe they'll get a tow around the uh, oval. So it looks like David is in the uh, Marathon car and Chris Pashley is in the Fing Dog car. That Boxster. Yeah, just five and a half seconds Stupid separating wipers. those two. Go away, wipers. Don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah. I would have taken them off. It's a beautiful day out. Ooh, we got a slow car. Oh. We must be purple 35 or something. No. We got a slow car... A couple of slow cars going through. Uh, 847, they said the exhaust is falling off. That's team oversteer. And then we've, they're reporting contact between the 526, which is top garage racing by fuel tech, and the 472, which I don't have a 472. Maybe that's I have a 452. We'll see. That one's under review. The marathon uh, now just... Ooh. Oh, was that a big hit yeah. or what? Yeah. Really lifted the back end of that car off the ground. And uh, both of them just kind of kept going. Yeah. <laughs> no harm, no foul. <laughs> I guess, right? <laughs> the gap so was down to 1.9 seconds between them and Fing Dog, but this will, that would have slowed them down a little bit. Unless, you know, you get a flat tire out of it, but... Mm -hmm. Looks like the driver is talking to his crew here. Probably let them know what happened, but uh, looks like he backed off just a little bit. Yeah, I wonder if he thinks he's got some kind of issue. Don't look like the wheels lining up straight anymore. Yeah. Uh -oh. We got a car slow down on the uh, apron there as they're just leaving the bus stop. You can go back and look at that in instant replay and see what happened there looks like the two cars were just slicing through the field and uh i'm suspicious of what oh he just went in way hot yeah. yeah there was no way it looked like he was just trying to put a move on the other car 
Yeah, both at the and, same time. Uh, everybody broke. Might not have noticed that they were in the breaking zone. So the one car that uh, got hit is in the pits. I believe. Yeah, that, that car is in the pits. So they're looking it over now. They're right in front of me. What is that little blue car? Any ideas? Fiesta, uh, maybe? A Ford yes, Fiesta? I believe so. Got a 378. It's a Fiesta. Yep, they sent him on his way, so. Uh, four idiots are in again. Oh! Prefect Racing is going behind the wall, I believe. Mom, feed me. I know, right? They get so annoying when it's dinner time. So the number 363 of Rolling Roadblock Racing, if I can get that out of my mouth, they did that on purpose, right? Rolling Roadblock Racing uh, and having issues with their running lights. Um, that was a lot of R's. Uh, they did add additional brake lights and they're back out on track now. And uh, Jacob Fife is in the car now. Eight forty three had a spin continual. sun start to come down it's just so cool i love it <laughs> so when do the fireworks go off uh when the checkered flag comes out mm. that's when they shoot all the fireworks off So James says, this is an endurance for the commentators, too. What's y'all's fuel? Coffee? Pepsi. Mm -hmm. You know, coffee people? I drink, I drink a lot of water, and today yeah, I've got a special coffee. treat. I've got uh, Powerade. Oh. I like those V8 energy drinks. Do that back and forth with, like, water. First, I got the new one called Rain Storm, but it's R E I G N, rain. But it's supposed to be clean energy, no sugar, and like has vitamins and no artificial like colors or flavors or anything. So I don't know. It's probably still not good for you. Yeah, they say that. I try to stay away from the monsters and stuff like that. They make me a little jittery feeling. I don't like any energy drink. That's why I drink Pepsi. It's got caffeine in it. That's all I need. Just Two slow right along, cars Pepsi, huh? going, going into the uh, one slow car going into the horseshoe. My wife's now, see, now my wife's saying, wait a minute, there's going to be fireworks? You didn't tell me there's going to be fireworks after the race is over? <laughs> no, sweetie, there's not going to be any fireworks. 
the only time they do that she knew, is she knew we were kidding. Yeah, I know. The only time they do that is during the Rolex 24 when they want to uh, make sure all the drivers are awake. <laughs> all right, let's yeah, set like up the, the fireworks now on the back street. <laughs> yeah, they do it at the end of the broadcast for the network, right? Like at 10 o'clock or something when they switch over to the second shift crew. <laughs> Don't they, typically? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. They should do something special for you, and we, we always do that switch over at VIR where I, I leave and go to bed, and then you guys stay up all night or something. Yeah. Something to keep us awake, should be provide some light. Awesome. I don't think I'm going to get away with that this year, though, because this year I'll be at VIR. Well, oh, see, you're going to come to VIR, okay. Here, yeah. Here's what you do. You what? put an air horn underneath Tiffany's chair, so as soon as she sits down... <laughs> Why would I do that to Tiffany? Yeah, no, she's she's on our side, dude. <laughs> That'll wake her up. I don't go um, to sleep. She doesn't have a problem with staying oh, awake. Oh, oh, okay. So it's me that needs my beauty rest, and you know why? Because <laughs> I'm a diva. She's a delicate flower. I am, but a delicate flower. I'm a diva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found that I don't perform well. I'm well rested. The wife was just checking. Perform well even if she? I am rested, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's fireworks. My girl is there. She loves her fireworks. So we could set off a few sparklers like uh, they used to for uh, Gilbert and uh, WWE. <laughs> hey, we could arrange fireworks for VR. I mean, we might have to ask permission or forgiveness. One is, of those. Yeah, well. Sun is sinking mm -hmm. fast. VIR might go for that. I don't know. They probably would if we could get a blimp. Yeah. Maybe we could launch them from the blimp. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> mm. I think Billy's becoming swayed by this idea. I think he's starting to warm up to this. Just take the blimp to whatever track you're going to, you know, have it flying. And and according to, and one of our one of our viewers says, make sure that they're serving dogs at the track. Which, of course, you would if you're going to bring the blimp, you're going to be serving the dogs too. Makes sense. This is this is all coming together. I can oh, see geez. this. <laughs> I can visualize this. It's almost as if it's already happening. Well, I remember there for a while there used to be some teams that would like you know, smoke up some butts and all kinds of things for people breeding sides and we'd do a dinner at the track on Friday night for VIR. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, well, we you know, Salem's gonna hook us up with a couple hundred hot dogs. I'll bring the buns, whatever. We used to do that for the Glen, but uh, unfortunately things changed uh, during uh, the uh, virus years. Ah. So that unfortunately no longer happens. Because I do enjoy grilling for people. I think we should bring it back. Sounds like Sometime. fun. Unfortunately, it is an enorm enormously large pain in the. Oh, I believe that. So they got, they're reporting the 974 and the 996 smoking. Um, that's the Atlanta Motors uh, Works car, one of them. I didn't know they even got that one back out. And then the 974 is a map green fuel tech car. Uh, looks like Fing Dog is coming in. Yep, Fing Dog uh, Floridians is in, looks like, and they are still working on that machine. But uh, as we head off to 6 o'clock, five hours remain in this race. Eddie Vetter is our leader. Following along with those Atlanta Speedworks lap counts, now up to 408 miles, or laps, I should say, a whole lot more miles than that. Do the math. We'll be right back. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. 
Tire Rack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done! All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with OE matched friction formulations and fitment for 97% of cars on the road backed by a noise-free guarantee and professionally installed that's the Duralast difference only at AutoZone All right, welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. The sun is going down on Daytona, folks. 
That means the lights are coming on. And pretty soon we'll be uh, under the lights here at Daytona International Speedway. Pretty cool. Tiffany Alexander with Billy Salen and yourself calling the race today. So uh, both Salen's cars just made their pit stop and are slowly making their way down pit lane. Yep, being obedient to that 20 mile per hour maximum speed limit on pit lane. It's got to be painful. Yeah, I was thinking painfully slow after coming off this fast course. So this should be Tom um, again in the car. I think they did a driver's change and... Seeing how far they drop down. Yeah, they just come. In, they're just coming out of the pits. Um, swapped out Chris uh, Pashley for Tom again. And Fing Dog. Yeah, Fing Dog got Brew Crew racing up ahead of them here, looking for the pass. Line them up, get a little bit of a draft, and uh, shoot around the outside as that Boxster winds up. the USS Enterprise going by. Switch out. There's that sun coming down over the racetrack. It looks really ginormous in that picture. Looks like premium dudes now coming into the pits. So they'll get their service. Let's see when they were in last. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, their last pit stop, 134. Their gaps look good. You know, Nathan's team, I all of their pit stops look about the same distance. Um, the first two, 30 laps, the first one was 30 laps, then they were at almost 60. And then they put it out to 101. They pitted under a caution. Then they took it out to 134, they pitted under caution. And now they've stretched it out to our current lap here, 180. So they've been hitting those cautions pretty good. The problem is uh, we're not having cautions. We haven't had a caution in probably over an hour now. And so if there is one, it's Paulie's fault for bringing it up. Well, if I have that kind of power, that's what I want, baby. Because <laughs> that means I'm worth some money. <laughs> now, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, shown in the pits, is uh, starting to fall through the field. So we do have some cars coming into the pits. I think, you know, they were holding out for that caution because we had so many and it didn't come. So they're having to come in. Level 1 racing in the pits as well. So, well, go ahead, Billy. You can see lots of headlights on now. Yeah, this gives Team Infinity to get the pass on Whiskey Tango, and they do because Team Infinity is still, still out there on the racetrack. Let's take a look at Whiskey Tango. So they pit it at lap 100, then around the 140 area. No, excuse me, 132. And now they're in now. Looks like Mar Marathon's coming in too. Yeah, Team Infinity, they, they pitted back on 153. So they, they haven't been out there that long, 60, 70. They probably got another good 10 laps or so. Let's see how long they were before they pitted last. So 116. 
to 153. And they probably got a good 10 laps or so before they need to pit. Marathon in the pits right now, apparently. They're not turning laps. And they have been black flagged um, for contact with the 378. So this is likely a, uh, a penalty black flag penalty stop that they're uh, serving right now. Team Salem Mustard has just set their fastest lap time today at 2.14 for the Porsche. That's pretty strong. That's the 9.43. They're currently in second place. Shown back two laps from Ed Eddie Vetter, the leader, who just turned in a 2.20. Um, and uh, there is an attention notice, and it's yeah. Labeled as other, so I'm assuming that is the turn on your lights. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure it will be. I would imagine you are correct on that. So gaps, uh, RPM Model Works trying to overtake an EC car. Six seconds, not going to change their position in the standings down there for 26th place. So you got an eight-second gap from Team Infinity to Thing Dog, and they would en they would enjoy that pass. That would put them into let's see, that would put them into eighth overall for the previous winner of this race. <clears throat> Clark Motorsports pits from sixth place. Level one racing pits as well. Looks like a standard pit stop for Clark as far as the time is concerned. Wilson Daly also shown not turning laps right now. Level one also pitting out of 18th. Looks like standard procedure for them. Wilson Daly coming into the pits now. No, nope, looks like they're exiting the pits, yes. actually. Trying to stay on the track, so they're going to take it kind of easy here and not smack the wall. Yeah, it's kind of a narrow Do a spin pit like lane. Poor Doc did that one day. There's many people <laughs> that have smacked that wall. Jeff Gordon, the name one, in a Daytona prototype. Well, to Doc's credit, it was wet that day. He always reminds us of that. So, <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Floridia's last stop was a little lengthy. Um, that vibration that they were talking about earlier, Thank you, David. Uh, it didn't get it didn't get fixed. So uh, they had to swap the axle. Oh, okay. So, but they've done that now, and he's uh, they're telling me that the uh, car is much happier now, and so is the driver. Uh, uh, Charlie's in the car. He's making happier noises on the radio now. <laughs> <laughs> My wife texted me. She said, you sound happier now on the... You sound, you sound happy, so happy noises are good. Happy noises are good. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. I much prefer those to the unhappy noises. I think I'm just excited about the blimp. Here we I really go like again. This idea. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I'm really excited about this, and it wasn't even my idea. Yeah, it was. No, it was. No, it was Dylan's, I think, or somebody. Mm. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Make yeah, it look yes. like a hot dog. Salem's blip. And I saved. I saved all the chat. It's it's going to be in historical record on YouTube. Yeah, great. <laughs> All right, he said, Polly. take that Wienermobile. And I was like, they're flying Wienermobile. <laughs> yeah. Polly, yes, you could be the really? one that broaches the subject, my old man. <laughs> I want to be a fly on the wall of that one. <laughs> He'll love it. Uh, something tells me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Experience? Yes. 
I'm going to tell him as soon as he gets out of the car, he'll love the idea. Paul, like, that's the presentation. a fantastic idea. I've heard you on the show, and I've always thought your wisdom just carried forward. So I am, I am all about this blimp idea. <laughs> and I have to say, wait, wait. But it wasn't my idea. It was Dylan's. I have to give credit where credit is due. Oh, God. Yes, you're you're punch drunk. Yes, we know. <laughs> oh, this should be Sam Collier back in the Mad Fast Auto Sports car. All right, go Sam, go. Go Sam, go, my fellow ginger. I like the steering wheel. It's kind of a factory vibe, you know. It just. You got the, the factory steering wheel and it's got a nice it look to it, doesn't it? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I don't know why we always change the steering wheel. I guess for some of them, if it's going to be removable, I guess it kind of makes sense. But oh, hey, there's a caution. We haven't had that in a while. Full course caution. So, this is going to make... Now let's see who ducks in. Yeah. Place. Purple 35, the car that's uh, caused the caution is straight across from us. Over oh, yeah. in the... Uh, he has unmotivated himself over by the grand, uh, the smaller grandstands in the infield. So that says it's camera. 135, which is the HMD car. Pixel. It Wasn't that the one that was in the tire wall earlier in huh. turn one? Uh, no. no, that was 433. Yes. 433, okay. I thought it was 133, and then he corrected it because I asked him to oh. correct it on the radio. Yeah, because gotcha. we uh, got a good shot of it as it was getting pulled out. It's an HMD, and then there's a HMD. So I guess they have two cars. Oh, okay. Well, good job, guys, bringing two cars out to the track. Maybe uh, maybe this one's just out of gas or something. And needs the a other little, one. Need a, um, needs a little motivation back to the paddock before it can get back out there. The one that ended up in the tires earlier, the clutch blew up. Hmm. Oh. And he was unable to woe it down to make turn one. Hence the tires. Okay. Well, that, that was would the 433, yeah. That would explain why he couldn't find a gear. Mm-hmm. Sometimes all of a sudden it just starts making sense, the things that we see, huh? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. So AJ says, blimp ideas. At Gingerman, one of our drivers is an Air Force tactical air controller. I believe he is required to have a civilian air controller license. Surely we can put this together. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Man, this is gold here. Uh, how many more hours? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're just getting started. We got so much time, Billy. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> Get all the champ car resources together. Make it happen. I got a dollar twenty in my pocket. Okay. The bidding has started. <laughs> <laughs> we'll combine our resources. All five of them. All right, so there's crews over by the... Uh, actually, they're over by the bus stop for some reason, too. Probably just track clean up, get the rubber off there. Yeah, yeah. looks like they've already moved that uh, car that was there. Yep. So, I 
They're probably just checking the track real quick, getting debris off. It looks so weird there with no grass, no Daytona written in there or anything. Yeah, I don't really like that shot very much. I, I'm mm -hmm. not using it too much. It's coming off of, uh, I got a really nice webcam. It's coming off of that through a uh, window and it's... Yeah, it's like my backup. Won't be worth much once the <laughs> lights come on. I don't know if we can keep the lights off or not. Okay. Eddie Vedder leads the race here. I think we can. Okay. Team Salem Mustard in second. Premium Dudes third. That was my pick, by the way. Uh, Team Salem Ketchup in uh, fourth. Thing Dog Racing behind them. Team Infinity. Wilson Daily Racing. Marathon Motorsports. DVM Racing. And uh, Clark Motorsports would be the top ten. With Clark uh, still leading A-Class. But now it's uh, 0.3 seconds, the gap. Whiskey Tango closed up the gap with this caution. Might see a pass there for position once we go back to green. We're showing any better in the pits. Yeah, it'd be logical for them to duck in. Now, if the green flag would come out, that'd be great. Sorry, did I say that all out? <laughs> so they're pitting on lap 185. They were in at 143. Wow. Yeah, that's a big Cranking tank. 40 laps out of that deal. That's, that's nice. It's a big tank. Okay, so now there's another car being towed back, and it's not the same one that was over there. This one's black. Oh, that is Scrappy Doo, it looks like. Yeah, the 607. And he is letting the, the tow strap get untaught, and that's not cool. You should know better. So they've paused, and I think they're. I think the driver of the truck's waiting for a gap yes. in traffic so he can pull across the racetrack into the opening there that would take them into the infield. The uh, paddock area, I should say, not the end. In, they are in the infield. The other infield. Yeah, they're just coming off of six, so they're in between six and the paddock area. That sucks for them. They were yeah. doing pretty good okay. for... Okay, gun it. Oh. Okay. Gun it. No. Oh, okay. They were doing pretty good for themselves. <clears throat> they were in, like, 40th spot last I checked. Eddie Vetter, so we're in the pits with them right now. Getting the spit shine. Oh, they turned on the uh, lights on the uh, the cones dash the start finish stand, so maybe they will have the logo up there. Yes, they do. Nice. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it this time. Might Our camera might be a little bit... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to see it. Last year it was very, very obvious, very brilliant. I think the camera, we might have it placed a little further back. They changed the fencing since they had another accident out here. Yeah. And uh, there was some debris that got into the stands. So they changed the portals around a little bit that uh, used for cameras. And so this is the one we ended up picking and might be in a different spot from where the one was last year. Did something come through one of the camera portals? I think there was some stuff that cut underneath, yeah. 
the mm -hmm. fence and they so they lowered the fence line hmm. they've had a lot of issues with that well you know you think about it it really doesn't make a lot of sense to put fans on the outside of the racetrack because mm -hmm. that's where everything's going to go it's so it's going to get flung to under speed. All the momentum's carrying it to the outside. So it kind of makes sense. You're going to have cars pinwheeling across the fence line, and there's got to be debris that comes off the car. And the fence is just going to catch, you know, a lot of the big stuff, you hope. And it's going to make more little stuff. Yeah, it's like a cheese grater, you know? Mm-hmm. We've unfortunately learned that one from... Uh several fatalities of the uh, IRL guys. Oh, how are we doing over here with our... Okay, so our car that was retrieved has made it uh, yeah. back across the racetrack. Now we've gone back to caution, so... Yep. Looks like we're about ready, to, about ready to light this thing up. Just in time for commercial. About my luck. And just in time <laughs> for Eddie Vetter to uh, get all of his stop done. There's he. <laughs> yep, and there it goes. Back to green. Yep. Hey. It's Eddie Vetter out of the pits now. Probably. Yep, yep. He's on the racetrack. He's actually heading over to six, it looks like. Yep, he's just passing the mustard. <laughs> There's mustard shooting past him there. And the timing on that one was fabulous for them. Yes. It definitely looks like they figured something out with this car. You know, most of our D-Class cars that are really fast can't make two hours. So that's the kind of the thing that holds them back. Um, but this car seems to be able to make a full stint. Yeah. So you have the best of both worlds. You know what would be an interesting battle is uh, them versus GBU. Yeah. Love to see those two go at it. Well, if you've been following along with the... Uh... Atlanta Speedworks lap uh, challenge. Yeah, the lap challenge, exactly. Um, right now, the as we head off to commercial break again, 448 laps have been turned by Atlanta Speedworks combined. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff. But right now, it's uh, what's going on right now on the racetrack. It's Eddie Vedder leading this race after a convenient pit stop under caution. So much racing yet to come. Stay with us. We'll be right back. An important decision is afoot. This man is about to buy tires on TireRack.com. TireRack is the leading online retailer of tires in North America and a repository of advice and expert reviews. And it's done. All that's left is to arrange for safe, easy installation at one of our independent recommended installers. Well, I guess he did that too. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. 
Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship-winning drivers, teams, and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting-edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping, Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment www.sentinel.racing Duralast, designed to meet or exceed OE performance with OE matched friction formulations and fitment for 97% of cars on the road backed by a noise-free guarantee when professionally installed. That's the Duralast difference, only at AutoZone. While well, Duralast parts are manufactured to meet or exceed OE quality, durability, and performance. Whatever make of car you're driving, Duralast parts keep your car driving tough. Duralast's full range of auto parts makes it easy to get the right part at the right time. Whether you're changing your oil or rebuilding your engine, Duralast gets the job done right. Duralast parts include shocks, batteries, brakes, starters, and alternators.
Also, get specialty tools you need the easy way with AutoZone's loan of tools service and get your full deposit back after returning them within 90 days. If you decide you want a tool, you can keep it and buy it with the deposit. If you need a special gadget, we have what it takes to do the job right. We take care of people who take care of their cars, and our loan or tool program is no exception. Loan a tool is the best tool rental service for getting heavy duty automotive equipment when you need it. Just put down a deposit for the equipment and then take your gear back to the garage and get down to work. After you finish the job, return the tool to AutoZone within 90 days and get your deposit refunded. Or keep the tool and pay for it with the deposit. To get started, go to AutoZone.com or your local store and select the equipment you need. We can get the tools to your door tomorrow with next day delivery. Or you can pick up in store today. To find out more information, go to AutoZone.com. Also, you can find out what's wrong with your car using the AutoZone Troubleshooting Guide. All you need to know is what the problem feels like, looks like, smells like, or sounds like. Go to AutoZone.com and choose the troubleshooting sections on the main web page. Changing out your headlights is easy as well. It's never been easier to learn how to switch out your bulbs. Check out the AutoZone video step-by-step -step instructions at AutoZone.com. Working lap 190. Eddie Vetter now uh, leading the race by a couple of laps over Team Salem Mustard. Premium Dudes now in third place. Team Salem catch up in fourth. Finn Dog fifth. And we've got Team Infinity, Wilson Daily Racing, Marathon Motorsports, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, and Mad Fast Autosport. I think that's your top 10 right there. Um, Clark Motorsports has dropped a couple spots back. So, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot now leading A class. B class by uh, Blocks Racing, C class by Team Salem, D class Eddie Vetter, EC by, is being led by uh, GMW. And then uh, F class is uh, being led by M2R. The 1990 Mazda Miata. So we've got a number of cars uh, coming into the pits now under this green. We'll go back on board with the uh, leader. You can see it is getting darker out there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Eddie Vedder uh, still looks like they're uh, very close to the Salem's cars as they head down into turn one again here, starting uh, their 191st lap. That's a lot of laps. Mm -hmm. Especially around such a big course. I guess we've been going for almost 10 hours, though, so. Yeah. It's a lot of time. And if you folks would that are watching, just go ahead and hit that like button real quick for me. I know you're, uh, many of you are subscribers, not everybody, so. Could hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you want to be notified of the future shows that we would be doing. Yeah, and if you're a subscriber, you can chat on our live chat with us. You have yep. to have been subscribed for 24 hours, so you'll get notified the next time we go live, and you'd also be able to post questions or comments in, in the chat there. Yeah, this time I actually cut it back to three hours uh, because oh, we just okay. had the one day, but typically it's a 24-hour. And that's not because uh, we don't want to talk to you. It's because we, we get the spammers coming in, and it's yeah. a lot of it's bot-related. So just by having a limit like that, that uh, found out that stopped that from happening. Yeah, they just blow up the chat. Yeah, um... Never mind, I'm not even to say it. <laughs> so Fing Dog just up. set their fastest time of the day with a 216.1. Right, and they're holding down uh, fifth place right now. So it seems like the team's, as maybe the temperature's starting to fall a little bit. Uh, the sun's coming down. we uh, finding a little more speed here and there. Back on board with Marathon, Marathon Motorsports. They have done a driver change there. 
as um, they picked up that penalty recently for that contact, and then they went ahead and did a pit stop and got that driver change back on lap 176. Just as uh, we were heading to caution. So the 570, a family tradition racing, they had a four off and continue, and then they were called in uh, moving slowly. And Eddie Vetter just set their new fastest time of the day at a 2.12.2. Wow. Ludicrous speed. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a team called that. Oh, we got a slow car in the, uh, one of the, uh, um, NASCAR corners down on the apron. Mm -hmm. I saw it flash by as we went, we're going by. Did it look like a Corvette? <laughs> I'm not that mean to hope that. <laughs> Well, the Family Traditions car is also a vet, and it was reported going slowly, just shortly, just early, about two minutes ago, so. Mm. Okay, well then, that might be it. As the USS mm -hmm. Enterprise is deciding to dock in the pit lane, <laughs> with its full complement of crew and uh, F-16s, as a uh, car has come to a stop at one of the cuts... That should be relatively quick pull behind the wall there. Though he is kind of in a not so good spot. He did find the cut. He just didn't go far enough. The family tradition racing Chevrolet Corvette was the one that was noted as moving slowly as the USS Enterprise goes back behind the wall now. Taking that LTD behind the wall. So hopefully they'll be able to get get it fixed and get it back out. But they did drive it under its own power back there. As I'm watching the Salins, it's like the mustard car heading down the back stretch as here comes the ketchup car too. Well, I just realized that all these years I've gotten this wrong. The uh, USS Enterprise. You know, it was a big boat. But I was always thinking of, like, the Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> I thought they were, like, Trekkie fans. No, they are. It is an actual aircraft carrier in the U.S. Navy. Right now. Or will be. I forget which. There may be. No, it is nuclear. Yes. So there has been at least three aircraft carriers named that. I'm a bit of a size, history nerd. Nuclear powered supercarrier. <laughs> I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, of a history nerd. As the uh, family traditions Corvette has finally made it back to pit lane. Well done, guys. And they're going up under the hood right now. over racing uh, getting a new driver in the seat there I'm ready to head out and have some fun out here at Daytona with everybody else about as much fun as you can have with your clothes on to quote Doc yeah and they have an ambulance uh, covering that car that uh has stopped at the cut and they've pulled him behind the wall. And the ambulance follows in suit. And we continue on. Team Salem, the mustard car just set their fastest time of the day with a 214.1. Nice. The cars are getting quicker. Yeah, they definitely are. Get a little stop action there on the on the feed. <laughs> Looks like the data's getting a little bit choppy. I'm 
really surprised at how it's improved so much. It used to be so awful. And now we can actually do a show. It's it's good enough to do a show. Yeah, years back it was pretty terrible. <laughs> like all the cameras were like spinning, doing the spinny thing on the yeah. back straightaway. Yep. Oh, we remember those days. <laughs> painful. I'm glad I was never a part of those broadcasts. There was one where we couldn't get any camera to work other than like it, the broadcast. I was attached to the broadcast via my phone and I was on the pit lane. <laughs> and we used the phone camera for a little while until it stopped working as well. Was that the weekend I was racing then? When you were down there in the pits? I think so, yeah, because I was in the pits and I think Bill was up there, yeah. Doing Bill things. Yeah. I think I put 25,000 steps on my Fitbit that weekend. That's it? It was, it was a lot. That's like every day for you, right, yeah. Billy? Something like that. start trying to get around one of the open throttle cars. The 287 17-107 car is uh, being called on for passing the yellow. Yeah. He will have two minutes in the box and he will feel ashamed. Yes, I know I've used that one before. Actually, I think it's their first uh, penalty of the day, so they're getting a drive through. So we'll have to come to pit in, get a timer, and then go to pit out and get the timer back. They can choose to stop and do a pit stop if they want, but they don't have to. Wilson Daly team here. Currently uh, eighth, no, make that seventh spot for them in their C-Class BMW. Better turns in a 214 on that last lap. Second place team sale in a 215. A premium dudes behind them, a 220. See the lovely palm tree in the background. Yeah. Got some nice palm trees planted around the area here. Oh, like that was a infinite loop racing that they just passed. I believe there's somebody in counseling right now because they are pulled kind of off to the side from uh, Here we have the cars uh, coming towards the bus stop chicane slip into turn seven here all kind of jockeying for position for that turn in yeah when you really go through there fast it's kind of a single file thing uh, you can try to do a double there like that is but you're going to be a little compromised yeah it might be scary <laughs> just a little bit scary yeah somebody gets a little bit loose and taps somebody and just don't have a lot of margin for error sometimes 
Yeah, we've seen a couple cars that are coming out of there and they just get crossed up and for whatever reason and end up in the wall. The momentum takes them towards the wall instead of down the track. Which is unfortunate. Yep. Floridian there uh, bringing up the rear of that group. Comes one of the Salins cars. The other Mustang. One, the other one should be right back there too. They were pretty close to each other. And there they are, working their way to the high side. Yep. Going around the Crown Vic, I think that we have here this weekend. Looks like he's got a nice, gentle hold of that steering wheel. Yeah, so I was thinking the same thing. I said, I'd be really pushing on the steering wheel if that was me. It's not the right thing to do. Soft, hold it like a baby. slow hands. I always say hold it like a baby. You know, firm enough that you have it well within your grip. You're not going to drop it. But not so firm that you squish the baby. Don't squish the baby. <laughs> Oop, a little tire squeal there. Looks like parts are falling off the uh, number 350 of Swamp Fox Racing again. This, isn't, this is not their first uh, meatball of the day. They should duct tape those parts down. Duct tape solves everything. If not, get the sledgehammer. Whatever you say, Billy. <laughs> Buck tip is very useful, though. That and um, zip ties. And WD-40. <laughs> and a sledgehammer. And all else fails. You threaten something with a sledgehammer and it, it realizes it's about to get its life beaten out of it and suddenly it starts working again. Magic. See that I'm a big fan of the turn it off and turn it back on again thing. Yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't have the right attitude, unplug it for a little while and see if when it reboots if it has a better attitude. Hey, Marky the Farmer's back. Welcome, Marky. And Dylan says uh, percussive maintenance is a valid form of maintenance. <laughs> Thank you. Percussive maintenance. I agree. <clears throat> I haven't seen Mr. DeFarmer in a long time, so yeah. good to see you back. It is good to see him back. Yeah, he's usually full of sassy remarks. Entertaining. See, we're like 10 hours in, so we're running low on sass. <laughs> it looks like they're starting to run lower on daylight out there. Yep, Eddie Vedder coming through six up onto the high banks again. The sun quickly dropping behind the racetrack now. I 
since it's behind you here instead of driving towards it. Yeah, so um, if you're watching this in replay, the uh, last couple of hours of the race will get cut off by YouTube, but I will publish the final two hours in a part two of the recorded version, so uh, just give me some time and I'll get it published up there for you. Is any better pacified ketchup? Not much we can do there until break zone. The lead EC car has come into the pits that uh, GMW. We'll never start racing. Looks like they're in the pits right now. Looks like the rolling roadblock racing has stopped off track. Also, uh, RPM Auto Works uh, racing in the pits. <laughs> Mark, he said, my pickup broke down, so I couldn't get online. That's been a long uh, pickup breakdown. I like the excuse list from the Blues Brothers. <laughs> He's talking to Carrie Fisher. <laughs> Locusts. I didn't have enough money for cab fare. You know. Yeah. I was attacked by a dog or something. Comes with this stupid stuff. And she lets him it's go. It's not my fault. Yeah, when he gets to locusts, that one really does me in. <laughs> now I gotta rewatch that movie. Yeah, it's been too long for me too. Remember how long? It's a it's a good way to watch a lot of cop car crashes. Okay, we are going to full course caution here. Well, you see EBs are on the move. We are headed over to the turn six area. But I don't see anybody over there. It's been stricken. What said the 363 was stopped at turn three? 654. Oh, he's right there, right in the uh, first international horseshoe on the outside. Okay. And it's perfect time for a commercial. Yeah, we're coming down on top of it, aren't we? Yeah. For once, it's time to write. <laughs> Where's Bill? Bill is in the tower. Uh, he's in race control, working on the, uh, the race control logs. That's what he's doing today. Doing Bill Strong things. <clears throat> well, technically, no, Bill is on the broadcast. Bill Strong is doing Bill Strong things. Yeah, because we Billy got Billy is here. Sam. I mean, if you had a choice between the two Bills. I mean, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Although he is the one that sucked me into this little gig, so... <laughs> when all else fails, I blame him. It's not a bad plan. Uh, so it looks like they got the second, or maybe the third, uh, Atlanta Speedworks car back on pit lane. 
this might be the one they had to change the transmission on. So. Yep, and speaking of them, they've got 485 laps turned so far collectively as a team. So with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and be back in a few as emergency crews deal with this uh, stranded car. And we'll be right back, so stay with us. You're watching Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. And it's uh, Eddie Vetter who leads this race. We'll be right back. Welcome to TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979. With our unmatched selection of branded products, finding what fits your vehicle and is right for you and how and where you drive has never been easier. Through helpful online shopping tools that include our professional hands-on reviews done at the introduction of a tire and consumer reviews that give real-world feedback over the life of the tire, you can make the right tire choice and find exactly what you need. And if you prefer to talk to someone, our tire testers, our sales team, are available on the phone. And that's how we get you the right tire for you and your vehicle for where and how you drive. At AutoZone, you get what you need when you need it. Got a today job? Pick it up free same day at your local AutoZone. More of a tomorrow project? Order as late as 10 p.m. with free next day delivery. Getting the job done just got easier. Discovery Parts is a veteran-owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. RVA Graphics and Wraps is a full-service design, signage, digital graphics, and wraps company located in Richmond, Virginia. With over 20 years of experience, RVA Graphics and Wraps offers premium signage options for your business. We are dedicated to offering our clients best-in-class service in all aspects of graphic design and application. For more information, visit us on the web at rvagfx.com. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Located in Northeast Ohio, with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design, and rapid prototyping, 
Money Shift Racing. Performance done right. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors, and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing, and it's been a fantastic season, and man, that, a lot of that is due to the way our car can brake on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing Bring on the frozen tundra. The grinding gravel. The cratered concrete. The rain-soaked streets. Come on, road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Reliable performance in unreliable conditions. Designed to meet or exceed original equipment performance. That's why more auto technicians choose Duralast parts. Exclusively at AutoZone. Welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. Eddie Vedder coming into the pits, the leader of the race. This doesn't seem right. This one, this is way early for them. They just pitted on lap 185. Now they're pitting under green. I'm yeah. Hearing them talk about fluid. Maybe we can turn this up in here. The hood's coming up. Yep. This is the leader of the race. Pitting early. We're not sure exactly what's going on here. Driver got out. This would open up the opportunity, of course, for Team Salen. They don't look like they're in a much of a hurry, do they? No. I don't think the driver got out, but the net's up. But, yeah, oh, the driver is still in. <clears throat> There's dipstick. Oh, we got a viewer saying they've been checking their power steering fluid since Atlanta. It's next to the driver front wheel. They are definitely talking about oil, and they've got the dipstick out. And it's jacked up, too. You can tell it's kind of sloped that way. Okay, now the window net comes down. Wheel comes off. Driver's gloves come off. That's never a good sign. Because that means they're not putting fuel in the car. Well, they wouldn't need to do a driver change at this point because they uh, they just put him in. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. only been in there since lap 185. It's like 15 laps he's had out there. So if the car wasn't broke, they'd be sending him back out. Yes. And this, to me, is not the way we want to, you know, take the lead, but the racing gods giveth, the racing gods taketh away. It's the same for everybody, and they are pouring fluid into this engine. 
We're putting a lot of oil in it. Which tells me they're losing a lot too. All right, so we'll keep an eye on them and head out to look at Marathon Motorsports here. Well, their last lap was a three minute, but that's because they hit the pit loop probably. So Team Salem mustard now. Quickly closing the gap. They were only shown down one lap. So it won't take long for them to make that up. Looks like one of the Atlanta Speedworks Porsches going back out on the track too. Trickle impersonator, uh, Mike. Uh, and no, I can't say his last name. I'll say Mike D. Um, is going in the car. Um, so the 451 is getting uh, driver counseling. And 51 is car tab and his boots by Cobalt. Got a local. Yellow down in turn one for car 570, Tiffany. And that's the family traditions car. They keep uh, showing up in the news, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got contact with the wall. Mm -hmm. Never a good thing. Mm -mm. And I actually don't see that from my vantage point, but maybe they may be in an area where they're a little bit beyond my view, or they may have continued. Yeah. Any Bama teams today? I don't think we got one, don't we, Tiffany? Um, Bama is playing for, they're in the final four in uh, basketball today. I think, I think he's talking about oh, on the, racing um, teams that yeah. are from Alabama. Mad Fast is a Bama team, as well as Rocket Ham. I think they may have broke. is still in it, but I thought Rocket Ham has been out for a while, yeah. And Timothy typed in AJ, so I don't know if um, Follow on Mission is mm -hmm. Alabama, too. Team Salem Mustard has now taken the lead of the race away from Eddie Vetter. Now it's up to premium dudes to see if they too can overtake for second place. We have a slow car on the far apron in the back of the uh, museum. He's right by uh, that building right there. Let's see if we uh, can find him here. Bus stop, yeah, indeed. He's slowly picking up pace again. That maybe the 570 after they had contact with the wall that their bumper is hanging off. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, we saw it go by our camera. It's hanging on by the thread. That back bumper is actually, it's actually dragging on the ground. Yeah, that's not very aerodynamic. They just put the wheel back on, Mr. Vetter. But yeah, I see no rush to get that car back out on the track. So. Looks like the Floridian Motorsports team might be in the pits too, but Billy, is that, is that who that is down there? It's no. Oh, okay. So they're pulling out right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That might, yeah, that's them. Mm -hmm. So looks like the Shark Car might be in right now yeah, too. Sh Shark Car is in. That's not the uh, Floridians. That is the. No, I can't be right. That's a Dodge Stealth. Yeah, we just happen to have that gray and orange. Yep. Pink theme. scheme going on. And <laughs> I could have looked at my uh, live stream here to see if they were actually turning laps. Uh, they have taken off the bumper of said car and put it on the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Where it belongs? 
No, no, no. No, I just kind of stuck it up there so they can. On the rear deck lid. Yes, yeah, so they can carry it back to the pits. <laughs> <laughs> Their pit box, and you guys can deal with it. Yeah. Okay, the Vetter machine being pushed back. Yep. They are walking that thing back here. So they are taking that car behind the wall, it looks like, folks. That doesn't look good. Oh, that's uh, family traditions that, uh, yeah, that they've, they've shrunk that car a bit. <laughs> well, that's why it's like that. Yeah. Never good. There are former race leader being pushed behind the uh, wall. Yep. Uh, the 241 of um, Brick City Racing just came in and did their pit stop. Um, they did front brake pads, um, so they changed both the front pads, fuel, and a driver change in under 10 minutes. And they are back out and underway with Doc Martin behind the wheel. All right. Team Infinity drops to 12th now. Is there in the pits getting fuel? Sled Bull Racing also shown crossing the pit loop. Just waiting for Premium Dudes. And there they move into second place, does Premium Dudes, with an EC car separating them from first place. Barbecued engine. Driving. Had some trouble to push it back there. Now we're driving it. We're probably driving it back to the actual trailer. Either that or the testing facility. They won't let you drive the car backwards on pit lane. You can only push it if you want to go backwards. So they probably pushed it backwards to get the break in the wall. their garage here. The garage is in this place here. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going to break out the sledging. Uh, th what they've been doing is they were putting the trailers uh, right at the garages. Oh, this is where everything is for them. All right, so we'll go back on with Marathon uh, Motorsports. So in the number 230 of Momo uh, champ, uh, Vincent Young just finished his stint and he was able to find the right pits this time for the next driver change. Um, so Andre uh, Tostas is in the car now and he's their fastest driver. So they got their fingers crossed for that. Remember this is their backup car. Well, not really backup car, their borrowed car after their car was crashed at NCM. The Enterprise is back out there doing laps. That's good to see them back out. Keep working on it. Get it back out there. So massive change of events here with the Eddie Vedder team that dominated so much of this race. Certainly had the pace, Billy, mm -hmm. but this is more than a pace type of race, isn't it? You, you, you kind of have to be gentle with the car and then beat the ever-living daylights out of it at the end. It's, it's an endurance game. And yep. You kind of need to do everything right. There's not You can't get a whole lot wrong and with the, the competition level that we have in the sport now. Um, you can't make a lot of mistakes. You, you need to stay out of the pits, keep the car on the track. And keep your pace up. Mm -hmm. 
And the Eddie Vedder team has parked their car in the garage. And, you know, like I said, that's not the way we want to pass somebody, but the racing gods giveth, the right racing gods taketh away if. That's a lot of THs. Yes. <laughs> if. For the rolling roadblock racing car, we saw them go off track and stop earlier. And um, they said that they're having electrical issues kind of all day. They've had to push start the car off the pit road and it started losing power every lap after the driver changed. So they're just fighting a lot of um, electrical issues today. Gotcha. I know we had a viewer asking about them earlier, if she's still on with us. Yeah, thanks for uh, for logging in and watching and uh, listening along. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, I would like to hear from you, and it does uh, boost the channel a little bit. And it might actually, you know, some other people might find us, and you they could be the next Marky DeFarmer. That's right. <laughs> How exciting that would be. <laughs> All right. So the 831 of MDR Motorsports and their Boxster, they had a spin and continue around turn three. Got another attention logged into the log. The lights must be on or something, right? And then nothing. We'll see when he ever puts it up there. Okay, no attention then. No attention necessary. And Scrappy Doo Racing is back out on track, which is good. I'm oh, good. Trying to claw back all those positions they lost. Mad Fast up to seventh place overall. That's um, the out one of the Alabama teams. They turned off the uh, lights in the uh, top of the uh, tower, so they must only turn them on for uh, cautions. Or the, uh, not the tower, the uh, the start-finish stand. Oh, okay. Which would make sense. Not that the drivers can see them, and not that there's any spectators here. I think that uh, Marky the Farmer was sending that to you, uh, yeah, Billy. I saw yeah. it. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> what was that? If he wants to meet up, he can. I don't care. We'll go to Ted's or something. But his face will be plastered all over the internet. <laughs> No, there's actually quite a few of them actually racing. We actually have quite a few cars still. I mean, we've had we've, the attrition has been a little rough today. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have really thought it would be this bad, being that the weather has been really very nice. Um, but I mean, this car, you know, this track is just a little tough on cars and drivers. 
A little. <laughs> a little. Mm -hmm. But we still have quite a few cars on course, as you can see. I mean, there's not, uh, don't really see a lot of blank place, places on track that there's not, you know, three, four, five cars together. We got someone coming in on the apron here towards pit lane. I would not want to ever beat down on that apron when people are going full speed. Screw that noise. Yeah, that, yeah, doesn't sound like a safe thing. The 697 of Tech Motorsports. Um, okay, four off and continue in turn five. Still not turning laps there, Tiffany. Shown in 90th. They did yeah, turn 107 broke. laps today, but... Yeah, that's a shame. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, the uh, Fiesta that got tangled up earlier is now having a bumper decide to uh, slowly put peel away. So I would expect a meatball flag for them very shortly. Scott asked a transp transponder issue for Eddie or something else. Uh, they break. They are sitting in the garage, I believe. Yeah. Yep. And they don't exactly look to be too busy fixing it. No, it looks like they've uh, thrown in the towel. As it were. Which is unfortunate because we want to come here and challenge ourselves to be fast. So, you know, the greatest competition that we can get from you guys is what we want. No, there's no whining or winning. Except what the racing gods give you. Exactly. Be glad it's not you in the wall again like last time. Or... Didn't y'all destroy a car at Sebring? Yeah. yeah. Or, for that matter, being three hours into the race last year and blowing up both cars. Yeah, that's no fun. So Fing Dog just set their fastest time of the day at a 215.9. They really want to hold on to this fourth place position. Maybe try to challenge catch up. But that time, they, you know, they could put some pressure on catch up. It shows a, a lot difference between the two teams. But that would be for a, a podium. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to probably throw everything they got at it. All right, folks, so uh, Atlanta Speedworks, if you're following along with that pledge drive, 515 laps has been turned so far by the Porsche team. How many more can they turn before the end of this race? Stay tuned, we'll find out. Watching Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. Stay with us, we'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you shift directly to a mechanic. 
Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have like a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Come on, Road. Do your worst. We'll be at our best. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novik 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Discovery Parts is a veteran owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. 
Seriously? Oh, come on. No, no, no. You for real? <laughs> dale, dale. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just the cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. All right, welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. And it looks like we've got a car stop, so we've gone to uh, Purple 35 here, just coming out of the bus stop, pulled over into the grass there and parked for a little while. Probably not sightseeing, probably not looking for an ideal place to watch the rest of the race. Well, you never know. <laughs> they're going to pull over and they're going to go out and talk to him and see if that's the deal. Or if he'd like a tow back. Maybe he wants to watch movies there. It would be funny when he pulls that when they pull up to say if you say why'd you get why are you under caution what's wrong. Still, I would want to be the tow truck driver. Who says, dude, you can't park here. Everybody's got to be a wise ass sometime, right? Better than it I would. I wouldn't make it. I'd never make it. They get rid of me. Guy's a jerk. He's funny, but he's a jerk. So looking to what decide what they're gonna do here. Three, so is this car 974? That would be uh, Map Green Fuel Tech, one of their cars. Yeah, that looks huh. like a 2004. It says turn seven stopped on track, so that might be it. BMW? Yep. Yeah. Brew Crew is coming into the pits. This certainly doesn't look like an MX3. Looks like they're it pit out and just says other. Oh, black flag. Oh, yeah, that's oh, a different ride Safety there. equipment not properly secured. Yeah, I'm looking up the yeah. level there. So yeah, if you're just joining us, uh, maybe you've been away for a while. And coming back, the Eddie Vetter team, uh, they've parked their car in the garage. Might be engine related. They were talking about oil. They were checking oil. They put a lot of oil in the engine. And then they drove it uh, through the paddock into their garage and they parked it. So that allowed Team Salem Mustard to take over the lead of the race. You say that with the mustard car premium dudes, then moved into second with the Salem ketchup car moving into third. Then it's Fing Dog Race and Wilson Daly. That's the top five right there. A class being led by Clark Motorsports. Uh, B class by Blocks Racing. C class by Team Salem. Um, D class by Team Infinity. E C by G M W. Uh, F class by M2R still. Yeah, he's lucky this isn't Barber. No kidding. Get in the grass and yeah. <laughs> probably burn you at the stake. What have you done? There's the uh, Floridian Motorsports uh, car coming through as we go back to caution. And we can hear the engines spooling up. Yep. Marathon coach is in. And we're back to green. Yep.
that's better. about right for you know 480 that's about what you get Maybe I'm not sure where we got those cameras so there's a little skip so mad fast getting back after it I dig the oil and orange helmet I prefer my helmet though Buffalo Bills logo Okay. <laughs> you always got to remember where you're from. Oh, fing oh, okay. They're at Pit Out. I was like, oh, yeah. I was worried for a second. Weird. Yeah. You, I didn't see any <clears throat> driver's hands, and I'm like, uh oh. Yep. And like I said, we we come here with the intention of getting challenged by you guys, and uh, so. Today was definitely a challenge until it wasn't. Well, it's still a challenge till you get to the uh, yeah. till you get to the end because it's still an endurance race. Exactly, anything can happen. So the uh, 996 of uh, Atlanta Speedworks is um, off to the paddock. They think that one might be might be done. They think something's off with the exhaust or the headers or something else. I'm not really sure. So. I'm glad you like it, AJ. That's cool, man. That, um... This shot, actually, I think, comes... This is their camera. This is the one you're talking about. Unless you're like talking about the, uh... This one. This might be the one you're talking about. Looks like our camera's... Running a little trouble with the data, but... I think they're just about out of date. They're actually supposed to reset in two days, so... Might be a little choppy here for the end, unfortunately. It is what it is. But, yeah. We, 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 uh, we have to piece and sew this broadcast together sometimes. Yep, was it Taz and duct tape? And bubble gum. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never start racing. Good advice. That's not going to stop us, though. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it reminds me of the the good old saying: "How to make a million dollars in racing? Start, Start with, with five million. million. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest way. Florida back really out there, more. passing yeah. the uh, Crown Vic. One of the open throttle cars, I think, up ahead. He yep. brought like five cars this weekend. He, I must be exaggerating, but I know that's hard to believe. He had a lot of green cars on the pace lap, all stacked together. So, well, I think um, uh, Burning or uh, sorry, Rocket Ham happened to be right in the same vicinity of where they were pitting, also. So, yeah, that could that could be part of it there because it's the same color. You know, all those green cars got to stick together. They do that, don't they? Yeah. Then you can blame it on the other guy when somebody gets in trouble. It was the other green car. <laughs> Honest, it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, so the Fiesta is in pit lane. They are adding fuel. And, uh... Probably fixing that minor bumper issue that they were having. Because if I saw it correctly, it was not attached properly. And I'll look as the cars come through six there. So I'll show you just for sure fun the track cameras that uh, I currently have. And actually, it hasn't changed all day. These cameras have been working just fine. Front straight away. And then we go down into turn number one here. So this is a shot from the outside of turn one, looking towards the cars as they come in. And then as you go through one and two, around three, 
you come up to four, and this is the shot of the cars coming towards you for that, what's called the kink, that left-hander, that fast left-hander that we talk about. Yeah, One to yellow. Yeah, yep. And the next, the next camera is six, so after they've gone through the International Horseshoe and come down to six to make the turn back onto the oval, and then this one is, um, I believe this is heading down to the bus stop. Yes. And then we've got one, this one is actually in the bus stop chicane. And then the final one is back to the uh, front straight away. And surprisingly, our cameras have not uh, given up all day. Yeah, well, I kind of found something. Um, I set these up today, and I kind of noticed something that was... Probably the reason they were doing that. <laughs> so. Oh. At least you figured it out. That's good. I think so. I noticed something. Yeah. So the word on the Eddie Vedder car is that they um, felt like the engine was about to let go. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So parked it before Better. it took itself apart. Yeah. Mm. Is that it was fun while it lasted? It looked <laughs> like it was a lot of fun to drive. And yeah, and uh, tell them that uh, we're sad that they. Uh, Gave it up on us. <clears throat> well, I'm sure that wasn't their t intention. Oh, I know. <clears throat> so still showing caution. Bring oh, him, dude. Yep, still sitting back in to second throttle. place. Yeah, premium dudes look good out there. I'm yeah. still I'm still hoping Ketchup passes them, but you know. Yeah, AJ and they're getting ready to repave too, so it's gonna be smooth and pretty amazing, I'm sure, when they get done. So are they repaving the whole circuit or Um, I don't know. It's a good question. Or just the oval. Whew. An outside pass going into one. Man. <laughs> Yep, pit lane's getting busy. A little early for uh, stops, but... But with all the purple 35s all day, everybody's strategy is all over the place. So. Mm-hmm. So it's showing the catch-up car 42.2 seconds behind the premium dudes. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty good gap there. Mm -hmm. Clark Motorsports about 10 seconds back from India, uh, Atlanta Speedworks in, in fifth. So they've really done well with that number 718 Atlanta Speedworks car. The 118 had a spin and continue. Wilson Daly uh, about nine seconds ahead of Whiskey Tango Foxtrot there in eighth place. And got about a two second gap uh, between uh, level one and headquarter automotive in 15th. It's just jumped to 6.8 seconds now. Five seconds the gap from K2 Autosport up to Benover Racing. 
been following them today too. Well, there's still some close contests out there. RPM Auto Works just six seconds behind Blocks Racing and their Chevy. So uh, yeah, still some pretty close racing out there. We've just got a little over three hours to go. We've almost finished 11 hours. A three hour tour. A three hour tour. Premium dudes covered with ketchup and mustard. <laughs> hey, they, Brian. They are in a uh, sandwich, yes. supposed to send Brian a invitation to come in, so let me on that. It's definitely a German sandwich at the uh, pointy end of the field, yes. being that everything at the top of the field is Porsche or BMW, your whole top five. Then we get a Miata and a Mustang, and then back to a BMW and then a Miata, and the Infinity. The top five all German. Uh, Walker is getting ready to get back in the car for the. Uh, Atlanta Speedworks team, the 718, he's supposed to be going back in soon. So good luck to him. Okay, Brian, I sent you that invite if you want to jump in with us. Or if you don't want to, I understand. That's fine, too. It's not like you've been working all day. Oh, wait a minute. I guess you have. I mean, I you could join the house. Race. Oops, I did it again. There we go. I couldn't carry it in the bucket, so I apologize ahead of time. Or after, or both. I blame Polly for that one. Might as well. You started it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, is ketchup, or... Er, that ketchup or mustard? I think that mustard is in the pits. No, that's ketchup. Mm. So, yeah, that's ketchup. Interesting. Very interesting. And why would they be in the pits? They pitted last on lap 175. And they're so... putting in fuel. Around 2.16 for them. So. So 35, 36 laps. Maybe they need a cast, yeah. Uh, my father is getting in the car. Oh. Back on board with Wilson Daily Racing. Uh, we've had a pretty good race of it, too. Sitting uh, seventh place in their BMW. Yeah, everybody's... Uh, it's been a very competitive day up at front. Yeah, 350 Swamp Fox Racing had a three, um, three off, <laughs> a four off, and continue. Here comes Mustard into the pits. 
and they make it e very easy for us to tell which one's which because they have the color-coded LEDs on top of the car. So mustard is yellow and ketchup is red. That does make it easier. And Kyle Walkrow reached out to me and just let me know he's not going to make it back up here. Um, Kyle is actually back in the car at 8 o'clock, so he's heading back out for uh, another couple of hours. Well, it is what it is. You're stuck with me. <laughs> <sighs> it's tough. It's tough. It's tough at the top, you know. Yeah. That's what they say. Both Salen's cars in the pits being serviced. See them just below the bar there in high definition video. Oh, wait. <laughs> Maybe it's not so. Well, it would be if it were really close. I mean, it's high definition of the bar. Right. <laughs> it's amazing how clear that is. Oh. <laughs> uh... So if you're keeping an eye on Atlanta Speedworks, they're currently scored in fifth place overall in the number 17 Porsche Boxster. And they're looking to make a driver change at the top of the hour. So what they might be doing is sending Will out there, or sending my father out there for probably a full stint and then doing an hour stint for Will at the end, or maybe doing a short stint for my father for an hour just to clear the uh, driving requirement and then sending Will out there for the end. Gotcha. That's what it, those are the two assumptions I have. Most logical scenarios. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, Brian. Hi. How are you, sir? I am fine. How is my volume? That's oh. good. That's good. Uh, how was your day? You guys are. Oh, is to he? To me. To me. Huh. He sounds like he's on the well, same. Tiffany's much louder than you guys, also. Yeah. See, there's oh. that. Maybe I've it's... got mine cranked all the way up to hear them. The remotes are loud. Maybe. So, how's your day? Sun setting at Daytona. Yeah. It's um, getting quite dusky out there. Yes. The Earth's shadow has been started to cast upon itself. That's what that green sky is as uh, the sun goes down. Quite bright, except all that dirt and sand. Some I don't think you ever see prettier sunsets than in Florida. <laughs> Just some well, great shots of it showing over the racetrack, you know. The sunrise over turn three is pretty spectacular, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when you've been at it for, what, 20 hours at that point right. or something? Mm-hmm. You're like, when you see the sunrise, you're like, oh my gosh, we may survive this. <laughs> yeah, been there, done that. I'm not sure yet, but just baby. Uh, Brian, were you calling the SECA race today? I was. We did eight races at VIR. Okay. And eight more tomorrow, and 
and I'm only going to hang out with a little bit with you folks because I need to have a voice at the end of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no, gotcha. I get it. I get it. Eh, voices are overrated. I've been told that my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably kind of sick of hearing that, aren't you? Yeah, it's all right. <clears throat> I'm used to it by now. I've I've been told that myself. So. I just usually get told to hush, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I've learned not to tell a lady to hush. That's smart. <laughs> that that ends poorly for me. <laughs> oh, big lock up oh. there. Try not to smack the Camaro. Yeah, he and, got uh, lucky. He didn't go put it almost put it off in the grass there. Yeah. And then he would have gone for a ride. Well, it could have been two cars in the grass. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, Camaro got out of the way. I don't know that the Mustang or that the BMW really did a whole lot to keep that from happening. Give me another chance. I'll try it again. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. I went by. And full course, full course yell. Yeah. I bet we're watching the full course caution about to play out. <laughs> the grand possibility. So full course yellow is the call. Uh, man, you know, it's almost a little bit easier to see everything with the track dark like it is. Here I scan across looking for what the major malfunction is. I don't know if that's a car down there. Coming out of four, that's no, that's stuck a stuck, or it's just a pole light or something. Yeah, it's almost easier to see, but I can't tell. <laughs> okay, this is where most of the activity has been. Yeah, this is always a good camera to go to to check. Uh, I don't see anything just yet. So code 35 is the call, and uh, maybe they're just handing out dinner. Time for Chick-fil-A. What would you like? <laughs> Taking orders first, you know. Yeah. No, it doesn't really That's work okay. that way. They pretty much bring you food, and if you're hungry and you don't want to go hungry, you eat what they bring you. I think Premium Dudes is in the pits. Let's see. Yeah, it does look like a red uh, BMW over there. Take advantage of those cautions when you can get them. Yep. It didn't trigger the pit thing on uh, race here, but... Yeah, because they're before the pit loop. Gotcha. Yeah, he's, he's real early in the pit lane there. We, uh, team sailing is pit on the loop itself. Well, the start finish line, so. Yeah, Premium Dude's pitted on lap 77. So they're due for sure. 177. Did you miss anything? Yeah, been quite a bit. I don't know where you tuned out. But Eddie Vetter was doing really well, and then they broke. And he was doing really well, and then he wasn't. So, unfortunately, like I said, we want the best competition we can get. Because we want to elevate your games, because if you elevate your games, you elevate ours. Car pulling into the pits. Interesting there. to see the different uh, camera iris levels. Some make it look really dark, others not so much. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, you know, I'm trying to find a camera that really shows how dark it is. There. This one's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. And it is dark out there. But they So have, have they not uh, cleaned up the grass there after the motorcycle week? Yeah, there's. There's like sand. There's a lot of sand down there. It's yeah. A, it's the world's biggest bunker. <laughs> or. Exactly. So if you'd like to play through. That's right. <laughs> Don't put it through there. It's the beach in Daytona Beach. Yeah. We bring the beach to you here at there you Daytona go. International. 
We even have a lake for you to swim in. That's true. That is true. On this part of the track, it's nice and bright. Well, that's because they got the <laughs> high-intensity lights out there. Ah, here comes our victim uh, in four here. Oh, uh, yeah. So, stopped on track. Uh, it was car 969. The accused. Oh, fat crack racing. It's a B-class Honda Accord. Yeah. So, Team Infinity letting us know that uh, Lewis is in the car now, and then Ed's going to finish up their the next uh, stint. Under three hours now. There you go. A three-hour tour. It's still a pretty tight battle. Even your top five is only separated by four laps. That's one good pit stop, one bad pit stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. From tightening things up for a lot of drivers. After 11 hours, that's not so. That's not so bad. And the, uh, as uh, Sherlock Holmes would say, the game is afoot because now Salins is on the same lap as uh, Premium Dudes, I believe. And some of these cars are really close together. Whiskey Tango is just 11 seconds behind Wilson Daly. Their, their fastest lap times are really matched up. Then you've got... Uh, there were some other teams that were pretty close together. I'm just kind of scanning down. 18 seconds, 26 seconds. Another 18 seconds for uh, T-Rex. So there's there's still some battles that are relatively close together. I think prior to the yellow um, and the purple 35, I think Ketchup and Premium Dudes were just 45 min uh, seconds separating them. Might be quite different now that uh, they pitted and all that. So I guess we'll see. All right. When we go back to green. I always think it's fascinating to see how lap times do change or don't change um, as you go into the night. And not just from the fact that the cars tend to go a little bit faster, but see how the drivers handle racing at night. Some people thrive in it. It's some people are scared landing. to death of it. And then huh. there's racing at night and in the rain. Well, and here racing at night is not like racing at night at a lot of other places with all of the the big lights and stuff. There's a little bit of the infield that gets a little bit dark. But, but um definitely not as Doc would say country dark. No, gosh no. As we're back to yellow. It's not V I R dark. No. <laughs> Very few things are. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Although, Watkins Glen, back in the day when they did have the 24 hours, now that was dark. And we're back to green. So back on board with the marathon team. Other than that, um, I think they had contact with somebody. We were on board with them at one point. Other than that, it seems like they've done a pretty solid uh, job today. Yeah, they had contact with the uh, Fiesta, remember? Mm hmm But then, other than that, they... Yeah. And we have place here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, let's just wait for the cars to come around and 
trip those pit loops, maybe get their outlaps finished up, you know, that first couple laps, and then should be able to get a pretty good measurement on what the gaps look like. See how everybody sorts out. Atlantic Speedworks shown not turning laps, and um, They're the in others the pits. have cleared. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, they are. Yeah, the, the other thing that's interesting is when you're when you transition from day into night and you're in the car, it's a little bit different than when you get in the car and it's dark and the last time you were in the car it was bright sunlight. As, the, as you're in the car while it's getting dark, you actually, you, you, your pickup points don't change so drastically. When you were last in the car in broad daylight, now you're, it's dark out. Mm -hmm. Finding your pickup points, your turning points, your braking points, sometimes a little bit harder those first couple of laps for you. Looks so different as opposed to it kind of gradually right, right. ascending and you get a chance to see it happening and everything. Yeah, it makes sense. That or you'd be like me challenge. and just don't pay attention to turning points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, some guys are like that. I'm like, yeah, this looks about right and just turn in. You know? What's a brake marker? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, looks like Kyle's getting back into the uh, Speedworks Porsche. He's in the car now, and it's rolling out. Oh, side by side, almost three wide action here. Oh, look out! Yeah, getting a little yeah. busy out there. Yeah. Well, now it's time to get the uh, hammer and tongs out, as it were, in the scalpel. Yeah. He's got somebody like right on his haunches here, coming, trying to come down the inside. Ooh, big Whoa. smoke up ahead. There's car slid off the racetrack on the left. Yeah, two, two of them off uh, in the international horseshoe here. So heading into three, we had some cars probably get together and end up off in the grass there. And that is not a good spot. No. They've given them a chance to get out of there, but I don't think they will. One is still sitting by that wall. It looks like there's two cars there, and actually one of them's killed the power. Yep. Well, and that International Horseshoe looks really, really wide early in the race, but now there's so much rubber on the outside, little marbles, that you, you lose three quarters of the racetrack there of usefulness. And if you go out there, you're going for a ride. Yep, absolutely. And there's so. the yellow. They're calling it that it was uh, the 350 of Swamp Fox Racing. We've said their name several times today. Yep. And the 287 of 17 107, whatever the name that is, um, the car to car contact. bridge that we're using uh, to bring everybody together, Brian, was uh, almost literally last minute. The one that I typically use suddenly just said, no, I'm not <laughs> doing this. And there you go. And so uh, I had to call, you know, it's like, well, call an audible. Sure what we're going to do. And then, yeah, I think Tiffany actually made a suggestion. I just jumped on that. It's like, well, I got like four or five, six minutes left. I pretty much have to try this. And so no testing, just here we go. So it's worked all day, at least. Yeah, I don't know what it sounds like, but... Um, and one of the breaks, I went and picked it up for just a second, and it sounded... I mean, yeah. all of our sound was okay. Right. Nobody was way louder than anybody else. So even though it sounds a little funny to us... I to figured other, that it would but... be okay based on the other testing that I've done, but uh, yeah. it never occurred to me. I'd probably just go check it, too. But um, cool. Yeah, I was listening for a little bit before I jumped on and everything sounded great. Wouldn't wouldn't have known there was anything different. 
until you got on and hear you can hear it. <laughs> a little bit. Yep. Yeah, VIR Nelson's in the dark. That is some country dark out there, I'm sure. Well, now that everything has cycled through after that last yellow, Team Salen and Premium Dudes on the same lap now. Mm -hmm. And two laps back from them is, you know, is catch up and, and Finn Dog. Kind of apropos that Finn Dog and catch up are right there together. All these, all these dogs involved in Champ Car. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> What's with all <laughs> the dogs, anyway? <laughs> well, I, I like dogs. I, like I love dogs. dogs. I, I love dogs too. I'm a dog kind of person. Um, there's not a lot of cats going on in Champ Car. It's all no, dog. No, dog is the thing. Or ham. Or ham. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Not a ham. But just make sure you're not doing. The team that shall not be named. Mm. <laughs> it really bothers him. Yes, it does. You know, it's the ham from Birmingham. Yes, right? uh, I know. Just that's the ham. I know. Call that the city. The, the city is called the ham. I know. I get it. But <laughs> burning ham is very bad in my book. <laughs> Then Rocket Ham was a sister team. Yep. Because they're in the Rocket City of Huntsville. Oh, there you go. And they have a cute logo. Well, maybe he didn't want to call it cute. A very nice logo of like the the pig. Like, our, rocket, like yes. our pig, right? But he's riding a rocket. Yep. It's fantastic. But still. We have a restaurant here called the Oinkster. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's, it's it's California good barbecue. How's that? All right. Speaking of California, those of you who are watching from said state can order our product again now via uh, salen.com or if you want to drive to Arizona or Nevada, go gamble some money. Not recommending that, but <laughs> they sell them over there, too. Will you deliver to California? Yes, sir. Salem.com. Oh, all right. I may have to check that out. Yeah, I'm yet to try a Salem dog. Well, I grew up in Chicago, so I am a hot dog aficionado. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Although we make ours with a salad on top, so they call yeah. us weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> my father says a good hot dog should not have to have anything put on it. Okay. Well, he would know. <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> Another person I shouldn't argue with. <laughs> so the pit, there's a pit lane warning for Team Bruce Innovations. Tiffany, I don't know if you brought that up. I have not. Um sure what the story is here Let's see if i can something sparking under their car oh i see uh, that's never good mm -hmm. a little easier to see at night uh comes quite exciting when you yes <laughs> see it at night when when you're trying to fuel and something, stuff is sparking something shouldn't be sparking under your car bro <laughs> yeah so if a good hot dog should never have anything on it, why is one team called mustard and the other one called ketchup? Um, because that was <laughs> Will's uh, uh, idea. We okay. had to keep the we had to keep the cars separate. So instead of just calling them nine forty one uh, forty two and nine forty three, Will came up with nicknames for them. Got it. So. And, and is one made the fancy red and yellow suits. Yes. Okay. I was going to say, is one red and one yellow? Yes. Okay. I'm with Money Chef. He says hot dogs are a delivery system from the condiments and toppings. Much like French fries, you know, the delivery system for ketchup. Oh, I've said for years that food is nothing but a delivery device for butter and salt. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> 
one of those weird people though. I like mayonnaise on my hot dog. Ooh. Ooh. It's really good. <laughs> the ketchup and mayonnaise on. There's little wrong in this world. That's wrong. Yes. <laughs> wrong. I, I am twitching because of that <laughs> statement. I thought that might upset you. I've been waiting on that all day. Yeah, I figures. <laughs> I'm good with all kinds of stuff thrown into that dog. I don't mind it all. On top, chili, coney, mustard, um, sauerkraut, you name it. I'm I, mean, game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mind ketchup on my hot dog. It's just. He's just saying a good hot dog, you wouldn't need to put anything yes, on it. Exactly. Sure. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Still kind of delicious. Yeah. That's why I always try my barbecue with no sauce on it. Okay. Before I put any sauce on, because a good barbecue shouldn't need a good sauce. Shouldn't need a sauce. Right. Back to caution. It should just yeah. elevate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like there's people, but that won't, you know, like the people who put steak sauce on their steak, like that's just sacrilege. Like if it needs that, like, I mean, that's not much better than, than ketchup on it. We went to... Going green. He says, gosh, now I'm hungry. <laughs> we went Smith and Olinsky in New York City, and the person I was with asked for steak sauce, and like, we don't have that here. <laughs> right, that's only if the steak is inedible. That's right. That's when the cook comes out, and he's all mad at you. <laughs> Starts throwing <laughs> They throw you out at the restaurant. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> they also don't have steak nuts. Offended. What? Uh, really? Yep, their steaks are good enough that you can cut it with a butter knife. Oh, wow. Man, he'd still throw a, a butcher's knife at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take the sharpest butter knife you got yeah. in the drawer. After that tender, then that's great. Yeah. All right, back to racing. This yeah. is good conversation, though. <laughs> I like it. Marky says Pardon Canadians me, eat hungry. French fries with mayonnaise. I knew a guy that um, ate French fries with vinegar on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know I like plenty of people. Tartar do sauce that. on my French fries. Mm. Yeah. Like malted vinegar, right? <laughs> yeah. This is good. Sounds this very is, British. This is good TV at right here. This is where it's at. Let's start talking. <laughs> well, if you about have like food, the fish maybe. and chips, yes, the malt vinegar goes on the fries as well. You put it on the fish and the chips. That's exactly what we were doing. We we were at Long John Silver's. We were hitting the vinegar, which I love, on mm -hmm. fish. And he's putting it on the fries. He said, oh, you got to try it on the fries. Yeah, that's good. The next Champ Car race is going to air on the Food Network. <laughs> <laughs> and no one will be disappointed because it's going to be fun. <laughs> Nobody at all. It's Floridian. Now we got bent over bent racing. Over racing. Well, yeah. actually, that would be fitting if it f f featured on the uh, Food Network because that would be <clears> the <throat> Champion dog at the Glen. There you go. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Another dog reference. And back to caution. Now what's going on, guys? What's going on here? It's that time. Yep. It's uh, we've Cart been we've done so well the last few hours, and then. Uh, it, it was a there was a, a litany of cautions Earlier. throughout the morning and into the early afternoon. And we just couldn't seem to get away from them. And then uh, things finally started to calm down. And now we're back. Yeah, maybe. So it says it's the 981, and that's the car they did the uh, transmission swap on earlier. It's mm. another uh, Lima Speedworks car. Oh, yep. Uh, blocks racing shown in the pits down in 24th. Whew. Mm. Lemon juice and salt. Mm. I, can, I, can, I, can, I can try that. Yeah. There's a theme going on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get that, this, that acid. It's just. Champ Car Chicken Cooking Show. Mm hmm. I think we like the mayo with the lemon juice and a little garlic. Mm hmm. I also put bacon in my um, deviled eggs. Oh, that's nothing, nothing yeah. wrong with bacon on anything, anything. They're pretty delicious. <laughs> and a jalapeno there. on the top. Yeah, I'm not Ooh, a fan of deviled jalapeno. eggs. Mm. What? 
I love deviled, deviled eggs, and I and I really like jalapenos too. Oh, then you would like these. Yeah, instead of the dill pickles, I don't use sweet relish any ever because it's gross. But so I'll put I'll make some for the family who doesn't like spicy with the little pickles in them. But then I take uh, the diced jalapenos and we, okay. and use that instead of pickles, and then put the bacon in it, and then mix it all up. Bacon. I'm okay and, with Papa John's pizza, but that that jalapeno they throw in there is the best part for me. No, 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 oh, no. Yeah, the garlic good. spice is the best part. Yeah. I'm getting <laughs> fat just listening to this conversation. <laughs> good God. <laughs> well, Apparently, we haven't been fed very well because that seems to be what's in our place. Maybe mind. I should say fatter, by the way. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. It's okay. I, I, I am what I am, man. So now the 996 of Atlanta Speedworks is back on track, but the 981 is headed back to the garage. Mm. And Kyle Walker is in the 718 of Atlanta well, Speedworks. Yeah, there it is right off there. to the side there. Yeah. And we're at it the uh, two hour and 34 minute mark. So we're almost done, people. Almost done. But it ain't over well, until. The fat lady yeah. sings. People are getting into their last stint, so they want to make the last stint count. And, and you're also getting to the point where you've got cars who've been on the racetrack for 11 and a half hours starting to wear out here and there. So, Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of cautions coming up. So it'll be interesting. Very interesting. As Paulie's doing math. <laughs> Marquis the pharmacist garlic. Don't water the plants afterwards, they may wilt. Garlic is very good for you. The anti inflammatory. All kinds I of like good stuff. Garlic. It's good. Especially garlic bread. Mm -hmm. My wife really likes garlic. I, I could take it or leave it. I. You know, I think probably the one thing I, that really attracts me to using garlic is when people make garlic mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that yeah. I like. Oh, no, no, no. You guys need to try my mother's cheese potatoes. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Let your mother know how many of us there will be at the next <laughs> gathering. <laughs> there is. Those are evil. Oh, we're back to green. Yeah, go back to great. green, which which is a perfect. I cannot think of a better time to go to commercial. Let's <laughs> let's broadcast the yellows. I got it. We're gonna broadcast the yellows, and then we're gonna break during the green flag racing. Let's do that. Well done. All right, perfect. I've got the formula, folks. Stay with us. You're watching Champ Car Live. Atlantic Speedworks have collectively turned 553 laps. We'll be right back. You know, I'd buy tires online, but then what? We've thought about it. We're TireRack.com. They should let you ship directly to a mechanic. Actually, we call them independent recommended installers. They should have like a thousand mechanics. Try over 7,000 installers. Then you just make an appointment. At a time that's convenient for you. This could change tire buying forever. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Used by the majority of the world's motorsport championship winning drivers, teams and constructors, Lifeline has a stringent and proven history of success. Lifeline's continuous commitment to research and development ensures that we supply the most innovative and cutting edge products available. Lifeline's 0360 systems are the result of over seven years of intensive research and development using 3M's Novic 1230 environmentally safe gas extinguishant. 
Lifeline uses only the finest quality components. For more information regarding our fire safety equipment and fire safety systems, please contact us at info at lifeline-fire.com. Frozen rotors from Diversified Cryogenics deliver increased performance and a higher level of safety while significantly reducing braking system costs. So I'll tell you a little bit about the durability of this product. So we have seen an incredible extension of the life of our brake rotors using frozen rotors. We've gone from brake rotors every other weekend to six weekends on one set of brake rotors, and I think they can go farther. The durability has been amazing. And it's been a fantastic season, and man, that a lot of that is due to the way our car can break on those frozen rotors. For more information, go to frozenrotors.com. Located in Northeast Ohio with 40 years of combined experience, Money Shift Racing knows how to deliver performance and safety, offering everything you need to get your vehicle and drivers ready for race day. From safety equipment, to full engine assembly and repair, in-house fabrication, 3D design and rapid prototyping. Money Shift Racing, performance done right. Discovery Parts is a veteran owned racing and safety equipment company. While we're located inside Atlanta Motorsports Park in Dawsonville, Georgia, Discovery Parts can also be found at the tracks, supporting a number of Champ Car Series events. We take pride in being a reseller of the best of the industry to Champ Car teams and drivers. We know racing, love racing, and look forward to tomorrow to even more racing. Visit us at discoveryparts.com. Sentinel is a comprehensive motorsports video solution incorporating live streaming, local recording, three cameras with picture-in-picture, -picture, flag status, and much, much more. Stop playing with multiple solutions. Sentinel handles it all, including timing and scoring, vehicle data, graphic overlays, adaptive bitrate encoding, network bonding, and more. Sentinel is the solution to sharing your motorsports experience with your friends, family, sponsors, and the world. What are you waiting for? Get your Sentinel today and never miss an on-track moment. www.sentinel.racing No. Seriously? You for real? <laughs> dolly, dolly. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ah! So maybe just a cable? We can help you. Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. All right. Welcome back to Champ Car Live, presented by AutoZone. It is the TireRack.com Daytona 14. Eddie Vedder, the blown engine after all that progress they had made. But uh, joining me on the broadcast, we got a new guy up here. And uh, I think, was it Bill? Do, do I talk into this thing here? Yeah. Is that what you do? Yeah, try not to, try not to lick it. Slobber on it? Yeah, try not to do that. Bill Strong, of course. Um, with us on the broadcast uh, of Inside Champ car. Champ car fame. And Brian, are you still with us? I am. Okay. 
I think you know this guy. Yeah. 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 Sadly, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's yeah. He muscled it's, his it's way up here, and, and I said, "Let me on the show. My fans want to hear me." Yes. Said you're nobody the ever. People. Yeah. So, been an exciting day up here this weekend. A um, lot going on. Uh, heard some uh, rumors about uh, lots of lots of code thirty fives and people want to race and stuff, but. Uh, talking to the track, they said uh, over and over again that this gets us back to racing so much quicker. They can get to things quicker without having to pull a full pace car out, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's an exciting race with uh, Team Salem Mustard, Premium Dudes, Premium Dudes hot on their tail. So they about a lap back, three laps, or no, 44 seconds back, right? Yeah, they're pretty close. Yeah. So, so it's still it's still a big race. Really, yep. it's really a good race here. Yeah, we uh, called down to the Eddie Vetter guys, find out what's up, and uh, Ray Frank called back up and said uh, they had some really bad compression in, in the engine, wasn't operating properly, and so they decided to take it off the track, and uh, which is a lot better than uh, boiling it down and boiling it up. Yeah, yeah champ car and the track greatly appreciates that kind of. Yep. 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 Consideration. Yeah, pretty cool. We really haven't used all that much. Uh, what do you call Don't that say stuff? it. Yeah, Don't oh, say yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah. say never it. Never mind, never mind, never mind. We'll talk about <laughs> that. Four we'll drive, about that mean, oil pickup. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's right. There's just things you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I do it all the time. It doesn't seem to matter. But. Well, yeah. I told I told all the teams I put cameras in their cars that give them ten mile an hour on the straights. <laughs> Good. They got pretty excited about that. Yeah. So I, th uh, I think two of them believed me too. Working with frozen rotors this weekend. Well, actually, all the time. Um, they have sent out about sixteen. I think sixteen hundred dollars worth of uh, one hundred dollar gift certificates. We're giving a uh, hundred dollar gift certificates to all of the uh, class winners. Um, the winner will get four one hundred dollar gift certificates. Unfortunately, they can't use them all at once. They got to use them one at a time. <laughs> and uh, second place gets uh, three, and third place gets two one hundred dollar gift certificates. So, um, big race here at Daytona International Speedway, and uh, it's getting dark out there, man. Well, it looks pretty dark. Yeah, it's not country dark though. They like this place. <laughs> Twenty percent lighting had that is discussion. used. Yeah, I mean it's you know. That's 100% lighting there. But you go outside uh, the oval, outside the tri-oval here, and it's 20% lighting along with the inside part of the road course. Marathon coach, TLM, on one of their home tracks. They're out of Miami. Yeah, but Miami's still like 12 hours away, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> It's forever away. Yep. They got penalized earlier tonight for contact, I think. Yep. Yep. I should know. I, I wrote it down. We covered it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had a little contact with us. Yeah. Yesterday. It happens. You don't want it, but sometimes it happens. Yep. Has uh, Salins won here at Daytona before? Talking yes. to Billy Salen, so I believe they won an IMSA. Grand Am. Grand Am. Yeah. Well, just, well, now they're, they're in line for the biggest one of them all. Yeah. I did ask the track if we could do a 24, 25, or 24 hour, 24 minute, 24 second, and I got the mom look and said, no, <laughs> we do the HSC, some of the old fashioned historic. historic cars, and then the Rolex, and they said no. Did so, you ask them if you could do a 23-hour and 58-minute race? Uh, I tried. They said no more. I, I tried everything, and, but I kept getting the mom look, and I know you know you <laughs> you, you, you kind of figured out how how much you can push it, you know, before they throw you out. Did they wag the finger at you? Kinda. She gave the okay. mom look. Not not our boss, but uh, you know the our our event director here at the track. Yeah, we tried. We're right. very trying. I even tried to give hear. her my little eyes, you know, the, the, the sweet eyes. Really? That didn't you work, threw man. The charm I threw the charm, but it didn't work. Blue steel? No, yeah. <laughs> what a 14 and a 10. Blue steel. Park for May. Uh, blue that steel. always works. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Park for May would be kind of cool. She's tough. 
That would be kind of cool. Go for 24 hours through over three days, eight-hour shifts. I got yeah. nothing going on. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> what are you all doing tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing tomorrow? That's what you should do is spring 